is touching the truth. My name is Yizai, my dream is to conquer the Grand Line and defeat the fleets of the other four great ninja villages, then find the legendary secret treasure and become the man of the Hokage Emperor. Not in the first person, purely for fun, well, I'll lay my cards on the table, the above is pure nonsense. My name is Yizai, I was originally an outstanding youth of the new century. How outstanding! I was so outstanding that no female friend dared to like me. Well, I admit it again, I'm actually a single dog, for more than 20 years, I didn't even hold the hand of any woman other than my mother. But that's not important, what's important is that I transmigrated. And I transmigrated to an extremely dangerous world, the peaceful life of a salted fish, eating and waiting for death is gone forever. First of all, when Yizai came to this world, he didn't replace someone in this world, but directly became a native of this world and was born in this world. Originally, this wasn't a big deal, for Yizai, at most, he just changed to a salted fish life in another world. He also gained more than 20 years of life for nothing, this wave was not a loss. But all of this was ruined, just half an hour ago, Yi Zai knew which world he came to. Yi Zai, you have to grow up quickly, then sister can take you to beat the bad guys. Next to Yi Zai's crib, a young girl with green wavy hair kept pinching Yi Zai's little face and said. Next to the green haired girl, there was a girl who looked younger than her. The girl had dark green hair, and a delicate little face like the green haired girl, at this time, she was teasing Yi Zai's little face with her hands. Sister, why is brother different from us? The green-haired girl looked at her green-haired sister puzzledly. Idiot Fubuki, brother is a boy, of course he's different. The green-haired girl looked at her idiot sister with a look of amazement. So all boys look like this, sister is so amazing, you know everything. Fubuki looked at her sister with admiration, and then teased Yaya again. Don't touch me again, or I'll get angry. Yizai wanted to loudly complain about the bad behavior of the two young girls, but he didn't know how to speak, as soon as he spoke, it turned into a cry. However, it seemed that Yizai's shouts were too loud, and it finally attracted the attention of the other people in the family, welcoming his savior. Tatsumaki, Fubuki, are you guys bullying little brother again? An angry female voice entered the room, scaring the two little girls who were fiddling with Yizai. In order to avoid being scolded, the two of them could only reluctantly give up on continuing to play with their younger brother. They left the room while looking back repeatedly with every step they took. Yizai also gained a moment of peace because of this. However, when he realized what the names of his two sisters were and combined it with their appearances, Yizai immediately felt uncomfortable. Tatsumaki? Fubuki? Weren't they a character from One Punch Man? Moreover, they were two of the most popular female characters. Did he transmigrate to the One Punch world? Should he be happy? No, Yizai was panicking because this world was extremely dangerous. If he didn't have Saitama Sensei's strength, he could die at any time in this world. If it wasn't a meteorite, it would be an alien attack. There was no guarantee for their lives. Yizai was a salted fish. He didn't have any dreams of being a hero. He didn't care even if he had to be a single dog. He just wanted to live out the rest of his life. But now that he had come to this world, this wish was nothing more than an extravagant hope. Because in this world where monsters ran rampant, normal people would only die faster. In the blink of an eye, Yi Zai had also grown into a handsome man in these ten years. It had to be said that the genes of the Tatsumaki family were indeed powerful. Both Tatsumaki and Fubuki were great beauties, and as their younger brother, Yi Zai, naturally did not have the face of a passerby. Yi Zai's hair color was similar to Fubuki's hair. He was about the age of a high school student and was nearly one. Meters tall. Only the heavens knew that a few years ago, Yi Zai was still worried to death. He was afraid that he would turn into a green tornado-like head, as well as a Shota's body and face. Right now, it seemed like it was still okay. His genes were still more inclined towards Fubuki. She had both looks and height. But God seemed to be fair. After giving Yizai perfect looks and height, Yizai's superpower was also the weakest among the three siblings. That's right, as the younger brother of, Trembling Tornado, and, Blowing Snow from Hell, Yizai naturally also had superpowers. 
If this was the strength, it was simply too difficult for Yi Zai to say. The strength of their family's superpowers seemed to be decreasing in this way. If the strength of Tatsumaki's superpower was an apocalyptic tornado, then the strength of Fubuki's superpower was a small typhoon. As for Yi Zai, it was probably the strength of an electric fan. Moreover, the strength of this fan was not even at the fifth gear. After learning this painful truth, Yi Zai really wanted to say, let me be a Shota. I also want to have a dragon level superpower. But the reality was cruel. It was impossible to be reborn. He could only accept the painful reality that he was the weakest among the three siblings. Yi Zai once tried to be like teacher Saitama. He persisted in doing push-ups and long-distance running every day. Moreover, he did double the amount, hoping to break the limiter in his body. Although he knew that the possibility was very small, what if he saw a ghost? However, after persisting for a few years, other than an increase in physical strength, there was no change in other aspects. Yi Zai gave up. Forget it. As the second, S, level hero, Tatsumaki's strength was considered strong among all the heroes. As long as he hugged his sister's thigh, cough, hugged her slender thigh, it shouldn't be difficult for him to survive. But things didn't go as he wished. In the original work, Tornado was a Siskon. Yi Zai knew this. But ever since he had a younger brother, Tornado became even more obsessed with his younger brother. Yi Zai swore that it wasn't that he was afraid of the orthopedic department. It was just that every time Tatsumaki went out to deal with the monsters, she would bring him along, claiming that she would be happier defeating the little monsters with her younger brother. But was this a matter of happiness? He didn't have Tatsumaki's dragon level strength. During a battle, a random boulder that fell from the sky could crush him to death. He couldn't stay in this house anymore. Yes, Yi Zai decided to run away from home. Otherwise, if he continued to accompany Tornado like this, he would die without a complete corpse sooner or later. Picking up the samurai sword that Fubuki had specially customized for him, Yi Zai sneaked out of the house while his two sisters were busy. Sai, where should I go? This world is so dangerous. I have to find someone to hug. Walking aimlessly on the street, faces appeared in his mind. From among them, he selected targets that he could hug. There's a monster over there. Everyone, run. Yi Zai's brain, which was still thinking, was instantly awakened by the shouts around him. Then, what entered his eyes was a strange species with a crab upper body and a human lower body. Looking at its two to three meters tall height and its strange appearance, there was no doubt that it was a monster. In front of the crab monster, there were two figures. One of them was holding a marker pen, and the other looked like a child who deserved a beating. There was also a man with short black hair and wearing a suit. Before Yi Zai could think further, what should he do? A voice suddenly appeared in his mind. Ding! Encountered, child of the world. The hero system is activating. What? Child of the world. Hero system. The voice that suddenly appeared in Yi Zai's mind stunned him. However, when he came back to his senses, he was pleasantly surprised. Although Yazai's superpower was too weak, he had learned some swordsmanship. However, his skill level was average and it was not enough for him to survive in this world where monsters ran rampant. Now that he had obtained his cheat, with the help of the system, there should be no problem for him to live the rest of his life in seclusion. However, when Yazai was waiting happily for the next part, the so-called hero system did not respond. This made Yazai want to curse out loud. What kind of inferior product was this? There were no hints or instructions. How was he supposed to play with it? Ding! The hero system has been activated. Please complete the initial mission to officially activate the system. Initial mission, help, child of the world, Saatama defeat the crab monster and help him lay the foundation for his future path as a hero. After waiting for a long time, the system finally responded again. Even the loading speed was so slow that Yazai began to doubt this high-tech product. However, no matter what, Yazai still decided to carry out the mission given by the system. No matter how trashy a computer was, it was still better than a calculator. Help Saitama defeat the crab monster. Yazai looked at the mission details and then looked at the man in a suit who was being beaten up by the crab monster. Right, I mentioned, child of the world, just now. The child of the world, 
of the One Punch World could only be Sensei Saitama. However, the man in front of him had such thick hair and was being beaten up. As expected, Sensei Saitama is only strong when he is bald. Big bald heads are the nemesis of monsters. Sensei Saitama with long hair is a noob. Crab monster, tiger level monster but only at the peak of wolf level. It is a monster that mutated due to excessive consumption of crabs. The monster's level was determined by the Hero Association that was recently established to deal with monsters. There were a total of five levels. Wolf, a dangerous element that poses a certain threat to human life and has a certain degree of lethality, Tiger, a crisis that causes large-scale casualties. It is not something unarmed ordinary people can handle. It can destroy hard objects such as cement, Demon, a crisis that may cause a city to stop functioning or be destroyed, Dragon, a crisis that may cause the destruction of several cities, God, a crisis that may lead to the extinction of mankind, the crab monster in front of Yi Zai was a tiger-level monster, but it only had a tiger-level defense, and its destructive power was only wolf-level. However, it was still not something that ordinary people could deal with. For example, Saitama, who was still an ordinary person, had been beaten to the point of spitting blood. Yizai no longer hesitated and drew his sword to block the crab pincers that were about to be swung at Saitama. Because his superpower was probably only capable of blowing a small windmill, Yizai had learned some saber techniques in various dojos in his early years. The long saber in his hand was also made of a special alloy and was worth a lot of money to blow Fubuki. Originally, Yizai thought that with his strength, he would have no problem dealing with three to five burly men. It shouldn't be difficult for him to kill the crab monsters that only had the destructive power of wolf level. But when he caught the crab monster's pincers with his knife, he realized how wrong he was. The immense force pressed the back of Yi's eyes saber to his shoulder, and his knees were almost bent. Although he had trained before, the physique of an ordinary person could not be compared to that of a monster. Here comes another guy who wants to die. You don't look like an ordinary person. Do you want to be a hero like others? Why don't you take a look at your skinny arms and legs? Yi Zai seemed to recall that the Hero Association was actually established by a brat with a buttocks chin who had been saved by Saitama. This unprepossessing brat with a buttocks chin was also the son of a director of the Hero Association. However, it was unknown if it was because of a tiny butterfly like Yi Zai, or if it was because of this world, the monsters had appeared earlier to wreak havoc. Therefore, this world's hero association was established earlier than the original work. Yi Zai had learned that although the hero association had appeared earlier, it seemed to lack the injection of funds. Therefore, it was in dire straits and did not have much fame. The hero association here was established earlier than the original work. Please don't repeat that the timeline is wrong. I've already said that the hero association here appeared earlier than the original work. The crab monster scoffed as he looked at Yizai. Clearly, he thought nothing of him. There were differences in strength between monsters, and similarly, there were differences in heroes. As long as a hero was registered with the Hero Association, the headquarters would send a corresponding hero based on the energy intensity produced when a monster appeared. The hero's levels were ranked from high to low. They were S, A, B, and C levels. However, as the Hero Association had just been established, the S-level heroes had yet to appear. The hero's level was determined by the relevant personnel. They could also be leveled up by fighting monsters. As for the crab monster, it was at the tiger level. In theory, a B-level hero was needed to deal with a monster of such a level, or a low-ranking A-level hero. As for C-level heroes, most of them were just ordinary people who were slightly stronger. Yi Zai did not answer the crab monster's question. All he did was constantly fend off the crab monster's attacks. Although the crab weirdo looked odd, his crab fist was fast and powerful. He was not a so-called hero. If not for the lowly mission issued by the system, he would have turned his head and left as though he did not see it. Wasn't it good to live well? Why did he have to be a hero with such a high mortality rate? After fighting with the crab monster for a while, Yi Zai finally found a flaw in the crab monster's defense. He left a wound on his upper body that went from top to bottom. As Yi Zai's weapon was made of an expensive alloy, it did not take him much effort to break through the crab monster's defense. It hurts so much, you bastard. I've decided. 
I'll kill you first before killing that punk with a buttocks and chin who is drawing on my body with a grease paint. Seemingly due to his heavy injuries, the crab monster's hatred for Yi Zai instantly soared. It even made him change the killing order he had previously decided on. Previously, the crab monster had been toying with Yi Zai like a cat toying with a mouse. Now that he was heavily injured, he gave up on the idea of toying with Yi Zai. His two crab fists also produced overlapping shadows, greatly increasing the pressure on Yi Zai. Saitama, who had been lying down like a corpse, struggled to get up when he saw Yi Zai in a tough battle. He even took off his tie and secretly circled behind the crab monster. Now, the crab monster was so angry that he only wanted to smash Yi Zai in front of him. Naturally, he did not notice Saitama sneaking behind him. Saitama was also quite impressive. After successfully sneaking behind the crab monster, he used his tie to wrap around the crab monster's eyes and pulled back with all his strength. Yi Zai also took advantage of the opportunity created by Saitama to cut off the crab monster's head in one clean stroke. Ding! Mission completed. Hero system activated. Initial mission reward, three chances to draw cards. After killing the crab monster, Yi Zai sat on the ground, panting. But when he heard the voice in his head, he felt that everything was worth it. This strange creature is finally dead. Hey, my name is Saitama. What's your name? However, Yazai obviously didn't have the time to deal with Saitama. Instead, he calmed his mind and checked the specific functions of his system. After all, it was his capital to settle down in the future. A moment later. Hey, are you listening to me or not? You're being rude. Saitama looked at Yeba, who seemed to have fallen into a dead mode. Did the big crab just now break his head? Otherwise, why was there no movement at all? Saitama was wondering if he should carry Yeba to the hospital, but the medical fees. He's wearing branded clothes and has such a flashy weapon. He should be rich. After hesitating for a while, Saitama decided to take him to the hospital. After all, he had just saved him. However, just as Saitama touched Yazai, the latter suddenly hugged Saitama and slapped him on the back. His strength was so strong that Saitama almost suffered internal injuries. That's enough. This brother has really been beaten silly. He actually hugged me and started hitting me. Does he think I'm the crab just now? Would he be held responsible for this? Do I have to pay for the medical fees? Such thoughts were like weeds that kept rising in Saitama's heart. What kind of rubbish system is this? It's better not to f asterisk king activate it. Isn't this sending me to my death? Yazai's heart could only be described with the word f asterisk ck. He had just studied his so-called hero system in detail, and it turned out to be a f asterisk ck. The system's philosophy was completely different from his goal. He clearly wanted to be an otaku who just wanted to eat and wait for death. Why did he have to be a hero? Friend, I understand. Although you've been beaten silly by the big crab just now, you can't give up on yourself. You can't give up on treatment. Saitama patted Yazai's back and kept comforting him. However, his comforting words made Yazai feel even more heartbroken. He wanted to cry even more, but no tears came out. Don't worry. I, will take responsibility for this matter. Saitama gritted his teeth and finally said those words. Yazai was indeed a poor man. However, Yazai was beaten silly because he saved him. Even if he had to pay for one more person's food, Saitama would endure it. At most, he would just eat bean sprouts for a few more days. Of course you have to take responsibility. I activated this F asterisk king system because I saved you. Yazai's words made Saitama feel even more guilty. And he became even more determined to take him in. As for why Yazai was so upset after he saw the system's functions with the system, it was because the system was indeed a F asterisk CK. The function of the hero system was very simple. Yizai had only taken a brief look at it and understood it. First of all, the hero system had the ability to draw cards, and the chance to draw cards was obtained by completing missions issued by the system. There were a total of three types of cards, the first type was the item card. As the name implied, it allowed one to draw any item in the world of the universe. This item could be a weapon, or it could be clothing, 
or it could even be a stone by the roadside. It was possible that he would get a supreme machete that could cut through stone and divide gold, or it could also be a useless inflatable toy knife. In short, it all depended on luck. The second type was the skill card. Like the first type, the target of the draw was the universe, but one would obtain a certain skill. The skills obtained were also divided into two types. One was permanent, and the other was one time. The third type was the character card. It was also the best of the three cards. One could obtain the bloodline of a character in the universe, including all the skills that person had learned. In short, everything depended on one's luck. Up until now, the functions that appeared in the system were all things that Yi Zai was happy to see. However, when he saw the second function of the system, he instantly lost his calm and began to regret activating this troublesome system. The system's second function was, simply put, the transmigration function. In order for the host to become a great hero earlier, the system would let him transmigrate to other planes from time to time and issue corresponding missions. Most of the planes chosen by the system were dangerous planes where a certain race or an entire planet was in danger. And the host has to be a hero and shoulder the responsibility of a savior. However, that was not the most important thing. The most important thing was that as the host, he had no right to reject the transmigration. If he resisted forcefully, the price would be that the system would send the host's soul away. The place to be sent would naturally be the body of his predecessor that had become something unknown. Two this was simply a scam. The One Punch world was already super dangerous, and he was actually asked to go to other worlds. If it was a normal world, it would be fine. Going outside to lie low for a while was not a bad choice. But now, he was going to a world where his race or planet was in danger. This was simply courting death. If his eye didn't remember wrongly, that Dragon Ball was one of these worlds. After all, a planet's people would die for no reason. Moreover, with Yi Zai's strength, if he were to transmigrate to that plane, he wouldn't even be considered a shrimp, let alone a hero. After all, every time a planet's people died, Son Goku and the others would use the Dragon Balls to revive them. However, Yi Zai really wanted to know if that Dragon Ball could revive him, transmigrator, as well. There was no guarantee of safety at all. That was why this system was not a good thing to settle down in. It was simply a talisman of death. It's over, it's all over. If he had known earlier, he would have obediently stayed at home and been taken care of by the two, devourer, sisters. Why did he have to go out on the streets? Now, he would have to face all kinds of dangers in this world in the future. He would have to go to other planes to save the world. He only wanted to be a salted fish. Why did they think so highly of him and let him save the world? One however, now that it had become a reality, Yi Zai also knew that there was no possibility of turning things around. He could only helplessly accept the fact. Looking at Saitama in front of him, Yi Zai felt that at least his life should be guaranteed in this plane. You just said that you would take me in, right? Alright, where is your home? Yi Zai calmed down his inner emotions. He felt that he was hugging Saitama's thigh to death. In this plane, Saitama sensei was invincible. At least his safety would be guaranteed if he followed him. At the very least, Yi Zai decided to stay with Saitama until he was strong enough to protect himself. Saitama looked at Yi Zai, who had calmed down. His mind was clear and his limbs were intact. When he heard what he said just now, there was nothing wrong with it at all. Damn it, did he encounter a scammer? Nowadays, freeloading for free food and drinks was such a high-end operation. Did I say anything just now? Why don't I remember? Saitama tried to use intermittent memory loss to bluff his way out. Yi Zai calmly used his phone to play the recording from before. Plot requirement, please don't lie. Saitama heard his clear voice from the phone and thought to himself, it's over. I really did encounter a scammer. Look at this operation. I can only describe it with one word, professional. Along the way, Saitama looked at Yazai who was following closely behind him. He couldn't help but feel tired. It seemed that this scammer had decided to stick to him. I say, I'm really poor, and I live in Z City, which is super dangerous. Are you sure you want to live with me? Saitama scratched his hair frantically, trying to scare Yazai away. But he was overthinking. 
Z City was full of monsters, but as long as Saitama, the monster's nemesis, lived there, it would undoubtedly be the safest place in the world. Speaking of which, with your current condition, do you really not need to go to the hospital? Yazai looked at Saitama whose clothes were tattered and who was still limping. If he remembered correctly, this guy had just been beaten up by the crab monster to the point of vomiting blood several times. But now, he was planning to go home as if nothing had happened. Hospital. I don't have the money to go to such a high-end place. It's just a small injury, I can just go home and bandage it up. Saitama scratched his hair again as he spoke. Yazai felt that he would have to wait until he went bald before he realized that this action that ordinary people could do was simply a luxury to him. You see, I'm super poor. If you live with me, you might only be able to eat bean sprouts every day. Saitama looked at Yazai and tried his best to persuade him. In his opinion, Yazai was wearing branded goods and definitely wouldn't be able to endure hardships. He might be able to persuade him to leave. It's okay, I have money. These five simple words were like gospel to Saitama's ears. It made his attitude change 180 degrees in an instant. You have money. How much money? Saitama ran to Yazai's side in an instant. His limping from before was completely gone. He was afraid that even his serious injury was just an act for Yazai. Not much, but it shouldn't be a problem for the two of us to eat good fish and meat for a year and a half. Yazai had long planned this escape from home, so he naturally had to prepare sufficient funds. As the most favored younger brother in the family, Tatsumaki and Fubuki had given him a lot of pocket money. Boss, please come to my humble abode. If they could eat good fish and meat for a year and a half, wouldn't they be able to eat for three to five years if they were frugal? It turned out that he hadn't met a scammer but had hooked up with a rich man. Ever since Saitama found out that Yazai was very rich, his attitude was completely different from before. He even led the way from time to time, not mentioning the matter of letting Yazai leave. Even if Yazai wanted to leave now, Saitama would probably cling onto his thigh and ask the tycoon to stay. It couldn't be helped. Saitama, who had just been laid off, was at the end of his rope. If this continued, he might not even be able to pay the rent. He followed Saitama all the way to his rented house. Due to the frequent appearance of monsters, the place had become an unfinished building, and most of the tenants had moved out. Saitama chose this place not because he was brave, but because it was cheap. They went all the way upstairs to Saitama's rented apartment. Yazai looked around and found that it was the same as the scene in the anime. Although it wasn't too big, it should be more than enough for two people to live in. Boss, how is it? This is the room I rented. Although it's not big, it's well equipped. Because Saitama wasn't bald yet, he wasn't completely expressionless. At the moment, he was looking at Yazai with a slightly nervous expression. If the tycoon didn't like him rented apartment and ran away, what should he do? However, to Saitama's relief, Yazai didn't have many requirements for the room. He just said, not bad. Boss, then the accommodation fee and the food fee, shouldn't we pay first? Saitama looked at Yaya and rubbed his hands. His meaning was self-evident. It had to be said that when he thought of the bald and expressionless Saitama doing this in the future, it didn't feel out of place compared to now. Just call me Yazai. This is our living expenses from now on. Yazai took out a large amount of cash. Yazai felt that it was quite a good deal to have a super bodyguard like Saitama. After Saitama got the money, he immediately went out. He said that he would spend a lot of money and eat hot pot tonight to celebrate Yaya moving in. After Saitama left, Yazai finally had time to use the system. Because he didn't know if there would be any changes outside his body when he used the system, Yazai didn't dare to draw cards outside. Now that Saitama had gone out, he was the only one left in the room. Yazai entered the system again and planned to use the three card draw chances. Since the truth couldn't be changed, he could only accept it silently. Now that he had more cards, it would increase his chances of survival. After entering the system, the first thing Yazai saw was his character information. Name, Yazai level, 0 hero 3 character card slot, 1, empty, skill card slot, 1, empty, equipment card slot, none hero points, none Yazai's character information was very simple. It was just a few lines of text, but there was no explanation at all. 
However, Yazai wasn't surprised. He knew that his system was broken and didn't have any humane settings. Combined with the information given by the system, it was obvious that these so-called card slots were used to equip the cards that were drawn. Moreover, there was a number of card slots, which meant that the number could be increased. As for how to increase it, Yazai guessed that it had something to do with his level. He was now a zero hero, so there was a high chance that he would be a one star, two star, or something like that in the future. As for how to increase his level, Yazai had no idea. Moreover, Yazai had no clue about the final hero points. After thinking for a long time, Yazai finally decided to draw cards first. The operation of drawing cards was very simple. After entering the card opening interface, Yazai saw three three dimensional floating black cards. At this time, the three cards were covered and it seemed that Yazai had to open them manually. Because of this lousy system, there were no instructions at all. Therefore, Yazai could only try everything. Fortunately, his guess was right. Yazai opened the first card easily. With a burst of white light, the first card was opened easily. The picture of this card was a character. It was obviously a character card. This made Yazai overjoyed because among the three cards, the character card was the best. A character could have several skills at the same time and even have a bloodline. The increase in strength was also the strongest. However, when Yazai saw the character on the card clearly, his smile froze on his face. The character on the card was a little fatty wearing khaki wool. Moreover, he was showing off his biceps. Character card, Fat Tiger, from Doryman, skill, Child King, increased deterrence to children by 50%. P.S., I, Fat Tiger, have always convinced people with virtue. What the F asterisk CK is this? Isn't, Character Summon card, the strongest? Then what the hell is this, Fat Tiger? And this hilarious skill? Will it increase my strength if I equip this card? Am I supposed to let Yizai be the king of children and snatch the Lolita's lollipop? No, I have to stay calm. It's normal to be unlucky on the first draw. I still have two more chances. As long as I can draw a stronger, character summon card, my ability to protect myself will increase greatly. Yizai desperately told himself to stay calm. The main event was yet to come. Then, he stretched out his trembling hand and flipped open the second card. The second card depicted a straw hat. It was obviously an item card. Yizai couldn't wait to read the introduction. Item card, Luffy's straw hat effect, increase in charisma, from the world of One Piece, Roger gave this straw hat to Shanks and then gave it to Luffy. P.S. With this straw hat, you might be able to capture the heart of the Pirate King and become his man. Looking at the introduction and effect of this straw hat, Yi Zai almost wanted to flip the coffee table in his mind because it was filled with tragic items. Are you kidding me? What, man, of the Pirate King? Even if I want to be, I want to be the Pirate King's woman. Bah, I want to be the Pirate King. No, there's no hope. This system doesn't just look lame, it's also quite a scam. After two consecutive draws, the items that came out were all useless. Yizai also started to lose hope for this third card. When Yizai walked over and flipped open the last card, a bright light almost blinded his eyes. With this special effect, this card was definitely a good one. Yizai quickly looked at what he had drawn this time excitedly. This time, the card depicted a man with tied hair and a long sword sitting on the ground. Character Summon Card, Gale Swordsman, Yasuo, Zero Star the only swordsman in Ionia who learned the Imperial Wind Swordsmanship. However, he was banished because he was mistaken for killing an elder. Skill, Imperial Wind Swordsmanship P.S., death is like the wind, always by my side. Oh my, it's really a good one. It's actually Yasuo. Yizai naturally recognized Yasuo. After all, he was considered an otaku in his previous life and played many games. Although Yasuo's Way of the Ronin and his Way of the Coward didn't have the same philosophy. However, the system didn't mention that the character summon card would affect one's personality, so Yizai quickly pulled Yasuo into the card slot. As Yasuo's card was embedded in the card slot, Yizai could also feel the changes in his body. For example, he seemed to be able to feel the flow of the wind around him. 
His five senses had become sharper, and the various qualities of his body had also improved. Other than that, the various moves of the Imperial Wind Swordsmanship appeared in Yi Zai's mind as if they were originally his. Steel Slash, Wind Wall, Forward Step Slash, Gale Breath Slash, and various other moves flashed through Yi Zai's mind. It was as if he could use these moves as if they were his own arms. Moreover, Yi Zai's superpower wasn't considered strong to begin with. Now, it complemented Yasuo's Wind Rider ability. Previously, Yi Zai relied on his second or third rate swordsmanship and weak superpower. He was probably at the upper middle level of the wolf tier. However, now that Yi Zai was equipped with the Gale Sword Hero card, he was at least at the upper middle level of the tiger tier. He had improved by one whole level. Moreover, Yi Zai noticed that unlike the Fat Tiger card, the Scattered Star symbol was displayed at the back of the Gale Sword Hero card. It was obvious that there was still room for improvement. Although Yi Zai didn't know how to do it now, he would figure it out one day. After Yi Zai finished arranging everything, Saitama, who had gone out, came back with a lot of vegetables and beef. Eh, Yi Zai, why do I feel that you're different from before? As expected of the child of the world, right? Even if Saitama was still a weakling, he had already keenly sensed that Yi Zai was different from before. Don't you know that everyone changes all the time? Don't be fooled by your thick hair now. Who knows, you might go bald one day. Because he had drawn the Gale Sword Hero card, Yi Zai's mood improved a lot, and he joked with Saitama. How is that possible? I still have to rely on this head of beautiful hair to pick up girls. Besides, I'm so healthy. How can I go bald? Saitama scoffed at Yi Zai's words. He wasn't a programmer, nor was he a novelist. How could he go bald for no reason? By the way, Yi Zai, after today's incident, I plan to train myself. I'll be a hero out of interest. Do you want to accompany me? Saitama scooped a piece of beef from the hot pot. While gritting his teeth from the heat, he didn't forget to ask Yi Zai if he wanted to participate in his training plan. Your so called tough training. Don't tell me it's a hundred push-ups, a hundred sit-ups, a hundred squats, a ten-kilometer long run, no air conditioning in winter and summer, and eating a banana in the morning? Yi Zai probed. Who knew that Saitama would look at him with a frightened expression? Do you know how to read minds? This is clearly the training plan I came up with on the way to the supermarket. How did you know? Seeing Saitama's shocked expression, Yi Zai had an I knew it expression. Saitama had indeed broken his own limits through such tough training and became the strongest in the world. However, Saitama's training method was completely useless to others. Because Yi Zai was one of the experimenters not long ago. It couldn't be helped. After all, he was the child of the world. It was natural that he could cheat. Others didn't have such treatment. Speaking of which, how did you know about my training plan? Do you really know how to read minds? While Yi Zai was thinking, Saitama scooped all the meat from the hot pot into his bowl, leaving a few floating pieces of vegetables for Yi Zai. There's no such thing as reading minds. I've just done it before. Yi Zai naturally saw Saitama's little movements, but he didn't care. After all, unlike a poor person like Saitama, he had a good life at home. Oh, how's the effect? Saitama looked at Yi Zai expectantly, trying to get an answer from his expression. The effect is naturally very good. I'm getting stronger every day. For the sake of his future, Yi Zai could only go against his conscience and admit it. In fact, he wasn't lying. After all, this method really did work on Saitama. Okay, then we'll follow this training plan. As for the other training requirements, Yi Zai, you have the same idea as me. But why can't we turn on the air conditioner in winter and summer? Saitama's training plan didn't have such a requirement. It was fine if it was winter, but how could a human not turn on the air conditioner in summer? Yi Zai was stunned when he heard Saitama's words. Didn't Saitama tell Genos in the original work that this could train his willpower? Was there something else? Okay, it's just that Saitama can't afford the electricity bill. He should save as much air conditioner as possible. However, because of Yi Zai's interference, Saitama's financial crisis hasn't reached that level yet. The next day, Saitama's training plan was activated. 
It was rare for Saitama to wake up so early in the morning. He was ready to go for a 10-kilometer run. Yi, wake up. Didn't you say last night that you were interested in my training plan and wanted to join me? Yi's eye rubbed his sleepy eyes. Yesterday, he seemed to have promised Saitama that he would train with him. In the end, Yi Zai didn't want to give up. He wanted to train with Saitama. What if he saw a ghost? Maybe if he trained with Saitama for three years, he could break his limiter as well. He didn't succeed before because Saitama wasn't there. But the situation was different now. Maybe he would succeed under the influence of Saitama's protagonist aura. Moreover, even if he didn't train with Saitama, he still needed to train himself. Time passed quickly. Saitama followed his training plan for about a year and a half. Ah! Yi Zai was woken up by a high-pitched scream in his sleep. Apart from the shock and disbelief in the scream, there was also a strong sense of unwillingness. Fortunately, the residents nearby had moved away. Otherwise, someone would have come to complain. Why are you screaming in broad daylight? Did you forget the discount at the supermarket that day? Yi Zai covered his head with the blanket unhappily. He played games with Saitama until late last night. Who the hell could stand it when he was still screaming in the early morning? Yi. 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 I'm really bald. Saitama ran to Yi's eyes bed at supersonic speed. He grabbed his shoulder and shook him crazily. Tell me, do you know prophecy? Did you know I'd go bald one day? Yi's eye finally woke up under Saitama's crazy shaking. Looking at the shiny bald head in front of him, Yi Zai finally understood what was going on. Perhaps Saitama was washing in front of the mirror today and suddenly realized the painful reality of losing all his hair. Finally bald. That's good. Yi Zai touched Saitama's bald head. He had been waiting for this day for a long time. Saitama's baldness meant that he had become stronger. His body's limiter was finally broken. From now on, he would be Sensei Saitama. Yi, you bastard. You actually said that it's good that I'm bald. I've long suspected that you were jealous of my handsome appearance. Every time we go out for a run, I'm even more annoyed by the fact that all the beauties along the way would throw flirtatious glances at me. But I didn't think that you would actually make a move on my hair. I really misjudged you. Yi Zai was speechless at Saitama's narcissism. Every time he went out for a run, all the pretty girls were looking at him, okay? What nonsense are you spouting? With my looks, do I need to be jealous of you and do something to your hair? When it came to his dignity, Yazai naturally did not intend to back down and began to fight with Saitama. Then tell me what's going on now. Why am I bald? After spending so much time with Yazai, Saitama naturally knew that his best friend was not such a person. He pointed at his big bald head and asked with a tearless cry. It's very simple. You've become stronger, so you've become bald. Yi Zai was as relaxed as if he was talking about something that was only natural. That was the truth. If Saitama didn't go bald, would she still be the one punch man? How painful is the price you have to pay to become stronger? After getting an explanation, Saitama's entire body turned gray. He bent forward in disappointment and squatted in a corner, unable to recover from the heavy blow. The world is really unfair. Why is it that I'm the only one who's bald when we train together? Yi Zai originally wanted to comfort Saitama, but when he got closer and heard his nagging, he directly threw a pillow on his big bald head. This guy was too insatiable. Using a dispensable head of hair in exchange for invincible strength. In Yi Zai's opinion, it was a great deal, but this guy still looked dissatisfied. If you're F asterisk king disappointed, then what about me? I've been training with you for so long. Why are you able to instantly kill me now? But other than my physical strength becoming a little better, nothing else has changed. If he had a choice, Yi Zai would definitely use his hair in exchange for Saitama's strength without hesitation. What's the use of being good looking? You'll have nothing if you die. Yi Zai, why don't you shave all your hair like me? Maybe you'll become as strong as me then. The dejected Saitama suddenly turned his head and looked at Yi Zai's thick head of dark green hair. A resentment called jealousy rose from behind Saitama. Get lost. Don't you dare trick me into becoming bald. Even if I become bald like you, I won't become stronger. 
Yi Zai was well aware of Saitama's sinister intentions. It was nothing more than fear. Yi Zai's looks were already inferior to his, and now that he was bald, his looks would drop even further. If the two of them went out together in the future, all the girls would be attracted to Yi Zai, and Saitama could only be a supporting character. Don't say that. How would you know if you don't try? Saitama didn't give up. He held the scissors and was about to cut Yi Zai's hair. Yi Zai naturally chose to resist, but Saitama's current strength completely crushed him. Whether it was in terms of speed or strength, Yi Zai was no match for Saitama. If you dare touch my hair, I'll take back my living funds. Yi Zai had no choice but to use his trump card in the face of Saitama's coercion. Apart from hair, money was indeed Saitama's second weakness. When Yi Zai threatened him with money, Saitama had no choice but to give up. There was no helping it. Yi Zai was rich, and the rich were the masters. This saying was applicable everywhere. Don't be depressed. Some girls also like bald guys. I'll introduce a few to you next time. Yi Zai could only comfort Saitama when he saw him squatting in the corner and drawing circles in disappointment. Although he was rich, Saitama was his backing. If he wanted to ride his coattails, it was necessary to maintain a friendly relationship. Time flew by. A year and a half had passed since Saitama became bald, which meant that Saitama had been training for three years. Only when Saitama felt that he had temporarily reached a bottleneck and could no longer become stronger did he stop training. During this time, Yi Zai would occasionally receive missions from the hero system. While killing some monsters, he would also get a chance to draw a card. However, it seemed that after drawing the Gale Sword Hero, Yi Zai had overdrawn his luck in one go. After that, he didn't get anything decent at all. He didn't even get a character summon card, let alone a trashy character. They were all useless item cards. During this period, there was even a Sinai's bread. The poison was so strong that it almost killed Saitama, the world's strongest. 5. Moreover, Yazai and Saitama were both unemployed and addicted to games every day. They were gluttonous and lazy. They were finally facing the biggest crisis in their history. They were out of money. Yazai had brought out enough money for him to squander for at least 10 years, but the two of them had squandered it in just 3 years. Saitama, it's all your fault for eating so much. You've been a glutton ever since you went bald. Now, you've eaten all the activity funds. Yazai looked at the remaining change in his pocket and complained about Saitama's astonishing appetite. Ever since Saitama broke his limiter, he had gone further and further on the path of a glutton. However, when he thought about it, it made sense. It was normal for one to consume a lot of energy while gaining a lot of power. After all, the law of conservation of energy had to be followed. Yazai, aren't you the same? You've been buying as much as you can as soon as a new game is released. You've spent half the money so quickly. The bald man was dissatisfied with Yazai's criticism and pointed at the pile of games that had been unpacked. Ha, you've been playing as much as I have, haven't you? With that, Yazai and Saitama got into a scuffle. Such an interaction was now a daily occurrence for them. Yazai, it's almost six. That means the supermarket's discount sale is about to start. Damn, why didn't you say so earlier? If we're late, those aunties will snatch all the groceries away. Hearing Saitama's reminder, Yazai immediately packed his luggage and prepared to leave. It was a pity that Yazai used to be a young master at home. Ever since he started living with Saitama, he had fallen. Now, he was reduced to going to the supermarket with Saitama every day to snatch cheap goods for sale. Boom! The two of them walked on the street and suddenly felt the ground shake. Then, a huge explosion came from the city behind them. It's another weirdo. Do you want to go together? Saitama looked at Yazai expressionlessly. Obviously, Saitama wanted to deal with this weirdo. After all, it was just a matter of a punch to him. It wouldn't take much effort. Let's go together. Same old rules. If it's a strong guy, I'll let you deal with it. If it's a weaker guy, leave it to me. Yi Zai's original intention was to follow his heart and cower. But when he thought of the future, he might have to go to an even more dangerous world. Now, he had to eat meat with Saitama, complete more quests, 
and draw more cards to increase his chances of survival. In any case, with Saitama by his side, his safety was guaranteed. But if he went to other worlds, he wouldn't have the same treatment. He would have to rely on himself. The two of them rushed in the direction of the commotion until they saw a huge monster with two antennas and purple skin. When Yi Zai saw the other party, he instantly recognized the other party. The vaccine man was at the peak of Dragon Tear and had the appearance of a replica of King Piccolo. It claimed to be the embodiment of the planet's will, had the ability to release energy balls, and could also transform twice. The energy ball released by the vaccinator could instantly destroy a large number of city buildings. It would be a piece of cake for them to paralyze several cities. That was the strength of a dragon at the pinnacle. Even Tatsumaki might not be able to defeat them, let alone Yizai. Yizai wanted to back off when he saw the vaccine man, but the, hero system, issued a mission. Ding! Mission 1, save the little girl who is about to die in the hands of the vaccine man, reward, one chance to draw a card. Ding! Mission 2, deal at least 10% damage to the vaccine man, reward, two chances to draw a card. Ding! Mission 3, successfully kill the vaccine man alone. Reward, five chances to draw a card. Three missions appeared in a row, with different rewards and difficulty. Yi Zai could do the first mission, so he should be able to do the second mission if he worked harder. However, the third mission was completely impossible to complete. Although the reward of the limited draw was very tempting, it was impossible for Yi Zai to kill the vaccine man, limited draw, specify a card type, and only that type of card will appear when the card is drawn. During this time, Yi Zai had been training with Saitama. Although he didn't cheat like Saitama, his strength had improved. However, this so-called improvement was only at the level of intermediate tiger level to upper tiger level. There was still some distance to peak tiger level. On the other hand, the vaccine man had the strength of peak dragon tier. The difference between Yi Zai and him was a big and small difference. Not to mention killing the vaccine man, even the second mission of dealing 10% damage to him was quite a challenge for Yi Zai. The closer he got to the vaccine man, Yi Zai finally noticed the little girl in his mission target. At this time, the little girl was standing on the ruins and crying, but it attracted the vaccine man's attention. So, the vaccine man reached out their evil hands to the little girl, intending to pinch this lowly to death. Forward slash. Yi Zai's legs suddenly seemed to be wrapped in the flow of the wind. His speed was already quite fast, but at this moment, only afterimages were left in the air. A game is a game, and reality is reality. Skill settings may be different. In the next moment, Yi Zai's figure suddenly appeared in front of the little girl, and the vaccine man's huge hands slapped toward the two of them. Yi Zai squatted down and quickly got into a sword slash posture listening to the sound of the wind and feeling the flow of the wind. Face the wind, wind barrier. A cold light flashed, but it did not hit any target. Instead, it cut through the empty space in front of Yi Zai. However, the extremely fast sword light seemed to cut through the sound barrier, and slashed out a wind wall in front of the two of them. The vaccine man naturally noticed Yi Zai, but to him, there was almost no difference whether he crushed one or two ants. Bang, the huge palm slapped on the wind wall, and a huge sound wave erupted. The vaccine man's strength at the peak of the dragon level burst out, and the wind wall only blocked the huge palm for a little while, but it still sent Yi Zai and the little girl in his arms flying. Pfft, the difference in strength between the two of them was too big. The wind wall's defense was amazing, but at this time, it was completely unable to defend against the vaccine man's casual attack. Yi Zai's whole body was slammed into a building, and he spat out a few mouthfuls of blood. However, the little girl in his arms was only unconscious, and she did not suffer much damage. Yi Zai felt his body that was about to fall apart, and put the little girl in his arms down. The first mission was considered completed. Next, he would try his best to complete the second mission. Yi Zai did not force this mission. It would be best if he could complete it, but if not, he would let Saitama do it quickly. Yi Zai jumped down from the building with dust all over his body. The vaccine man noticed that the little bug from before was still alive, so he attacked Yi Zai angrily again. Watch me smash you little bug. The vaccine man swung his huge fist at Yi Zai again, 
but because there was no target to protect this time, Yi Zai could dodge completely. Boom! The vaccine man's fist left a medium-sized crater on the ground. Yi Zai unleashed his maximum speed and dodged the vaccine man's casual punch by a hair's breadth. Then, he jumped up and ran quickly on the vaccine man's outstretched arm. The wind on the alloy sword surged, and Yi Zai's running speed became faster and faster. In the end, Yi Zai's figure gradually became blurry, like a divine wind galloping. Profound meaning of the imperial wind sword art, gale instant slash. The galloping divine wind broke through the sound barrier, and Yi Zai's figure instantly appeared in front of the vaccine man's big face. He leaped up, held his sword, and attacked. His entire movement was natural. In that instant, Yi Zai had swung his sword dozens of times, and each of his sword was controlled by the power of the wind, so it was extremely sharp. As Yi Zai sheathed his sword, one of the two antennae on the vaccine man's head was cut off. The vaccine man felt that he was hurt by an ant, so he slapped Yi Zai, who was in the air, away like he was swatting a fly. Ah! You damned bug, I'm going to tear you into pieces. The vaccine man covered his injured antennae and wiped off the purple blood on his face, trying to find Yi Zai's figure. The vaccine man decided that even if the ant was killed by him, he would chew it up and swallow it to vent the hatred in his heart. Yi Zai was now lying in a deep crater, and he looked absolutely miserable. All the bones in his body were wailing, and he was lying in a pool of blood. In his current situation, he couldn't even move a step, let alone run. Damn it, if I knew this would happen, I wouldn't have fought for the second mission. The difference in strength between a dragon and a tiger is too big. Yi Zai used all his skills, but he only managed to cut off one of the vaccine man's dispensable antennae. However, a casual slap from the other party had almost made him a lunchbox. What a tenacious bug. It's actually still alive. The vaccine man finally found Yi Zai's location. When he felt that Yi Zai was still breathing, the vaccine man slapped him again. This time, he used all of his strength. This little bug had no chance of surviving. Shu, a loud slap was heard, and Saitama's simple face appeared in front of Yazai. The vaccine man used all his strength to slap Saitama, but it only caused a huge sound wave. However, Saitama herself was completely fine. Saitama completely ignored the stunned vaccine man and squatted down to face him with his butt. You look like you're about to die. Can I make my move now? That's right, before accepting the mission, Yazai had specifically instructed Saitama to wait until he was at his limit before making a move. Otherwise, Saitama's punch would turn Vaccine Man into a pile of dust. How would Yazai be able to complete his mission? Another stinking bug, and an arrogant one at that. Vaccine Man was furious. He was the planet's emissary, representing the world to clean up this planet of pests that would only damage the environment. How could someone with a noble bloodline like him be ignored? How could he tolerate this? Vaccine man couldn't take it anymore. He grabbed the big baldy and planned to slowly torture this bug that ignored him. Saitama was lifted dozens of meters into the air by the vaccine man. There was no expression on his face. His face was still as rough as ever. Don't you know that it's very impolite to interrupt others when they're talking? The vaccine man was expecting to see fear on the baldy's face, but he was disappointed. The baldy's expressionless face was full of mockery. The vaccine man, who wanted to slowly torture Saitama, instantly lost his patience. The vaccine man looked at Saitama's expressionless face. He suddenly exerted strength in his arms and threw Saitama to the ground like a piece of trash. Fearing that the baldy was not completely dead, the vaccine man gave him a few more kicks. Yazai, who was lying next to him, even felt the whole ground shake. However, what happened next made the vaccine man's jaw drop. The baldy, whom he thought would definitely be crushed by him, stood up and scathed. The baldy stood up as if nothing had happened. He even patted his dust-stained clothes. Even though Saitama didn't say a word, his expressionless face, coupled with his nonchalant actions, was enough to send the vaccinated person into a state of rage. He was a powerful character who ran through three anime, but now he was being ridiculed. Moreover, just by looking at the style of the person who mocked him, five cents couldn't be more than that. The vaccine man's muscles swelled and he instantly entered second transformation. All his attributes skyrocketed. 
If the vaccine man just now was only lower dragon level, then the vaccine man who entered second transformation was a real peak dragon level. Feeling the overflowing power in his body, the vaccine man was quite addicted to it. He felt a sense of loneliness, as if he was invincible. The vaccine man, whose strength skyrocketed, looked at the baldy again. He decided to let this bug know that he was the prettiest guy on this planet. Saitama looked at the vaccine man who was full of gangster deja vu. He jumped high and threw out an ordinary punch. The vaccine man was dead. Yes, there was no exciting battle as expected, nor were there all kinds of gorgeous showdowns. The baldy demon king, Saitama, merely threw out an ordinary punch. The peak dragon level vaccine man was instantly splattered with blood and flesh. He couldn't be more dead. After killing the vaccine man, Saitama looked at his fist in a daze. Another punch. Seeing how this guy was talking so much, I thought he would be a strong opponent. Look at his posturing lines. The baldy used his actions to prove that even if he was bald, he was still the prettiest guy in the world. Yazai, are you alright? Fortunately, Saitama didn't only focus on posturing and forget about Yazai. After helping Yazai up, Saitama realized that there were a lot of people in strange clothes lying around. These people were actually, a, heroes sent by the Hero Association to crusade against the vaccine man. However, the vaccine man's, dragon level, strength allowed him to easily defeat the crusading heroes. Yazai, what do we do with these people? Should we send them to the hospital? Saitama asked as he helped Yazai to his feet. Do you have money? Yazai's question came from the depths of his soul. Saitama decisively turned his head, as though he could no longer see the people lying on the ground. Ouch, it hurts. Bastard, be gentler. I'm seriously injured. Yazai was seriously injured, but he still had the Gale Sword Hero's passive skill, Path of the Wanderer. If he hadn't conjured a protective barrier at the last moment, he would have really died. It's fine. I'll be fine after applying some mercurochrome. The baldy's rough movements made Yazai's injuries worsen from time to time. He suddenly missed his two sisters who were obsessed with their younger brothers. What the hell mercurochrome? I want to go to the hospital. I want the pretty nurse's care. Yazai let out an indignant roar, but the baldy seemed to be temporarily deaf. He ignored Yazai's words. In Saitama's house in City Z, Yazai was tied up like a mummy as he sat on a chair. It had been a few days since he met Vaccine Man. In the end, Yazai did not meet the beautiful nurse. Instead, he really went home to apply mercurochrome and accept Saitama's binding, bandaging. Ever since he and Saitama fell into a financial crisis, the hospital had become a rather luxurious place for them. However, Yazai could not help but complain. Should he say that in hot-blooded dramas, as long as the characters did not die immediately, all the characters' recovery was at the maximum level? Yazai was in a miserable state previously, but after a few days of recuperation at home, most of his injuries had healed. Perhaps Gale Sword Heroes, Way of the Ronin, had played a part in it, but such an amazing recovery rate still surprised Yazai. I say, Yazai, your body is too weak. It's such a small injury, but you still haven't recovered after such a long time. Or did you recover long ago and are just lying to me to take care of you? Baldi was cooking udon noodles in the kitchen that he had snatched from a discount supermarket. There was only noodles and no meat. Stop nagging. If I had gone to the hospital and asked the nurse to take care of me, I would have recovered long ago. It's already quite fast for me to recover to this state. Yes, Saitama had been taking care of Yazai during his serious injuries. However, Baldi obviously did not have the talent to take care of others. Did he make Yazai's injuries worse? Genos, whose housekeeping skills were at the X level, had not arrived yet. It was a miracle that Saitama and Yazai could survive for so long. You're too harsh. You should know that I've been doing all the housework since the day you got injured. Yazai did not continue to talk nonsense with Saitama. Baldi might be useless, but if he started to complain, there would be no end to it. Although he was seriously injured, Saitama was glad that he had met Vaccine Man out of the three missions issued by the system that day, two of them showed that Yazai had completed them. They were the first mission of saving the little girl and dealing percent damage to Vaccine Man. 
To be honest, Yazai had been worried that the second mission would be difficult, but fortunately, he had completed it successfully. This allowed Yazai to get three more card draw chances. Unlike his previous unlucky face, Yazai got something this time. Three card draw chances, two item cards, one Naruto's expired instant noodles, and one Chopper's blue ball. They were all useless things. But the third time, Yazai got a skill card, and it was a very practical one. Skill card, Sky Dance Technique, from Dragon Ball World, effect, controls the chi in the body to float in the air and perform flying techniques. P.S. Boy, do you want to fly into the sky and fly? The introduction was very simple, but the effect was very powerful. It must be known that in the Dragon Ball, as the abilities of the Dragon Ball Warriors improved, various abilities also emerged one after another. However, the only ones that could be used throughout the entire series and never fall behind were the Kamehameha and the Sky Dance Technique. Moreover, Yazai knew that the Sky Dance Technique was not as simple as being able to float in the air. Once the key in the body meets the conditions, it can also achieve high-speed flight. Looking at the Scions in the Dragon Ball, when they flew up, the flame-shaped key waves wrapped around them. Without the jets, they could fly around the planet in a few minutes, just like playing. Yazai didn't expect to fly around the planet in a few minutes. He only hoped that he could run faster than others. A few days later, Yazai's injuries were completely healed. In fact, he was quite nervous these days. He was afraid that the system would inexplicably transmigrate while he was injured. The system had explained before that the world and time of transmigration were random, which meant that everything was uncertain. Originally, he still had a little ability to save his life. If he had to save the world with such injuries, it would be a suicide mission. Hey, Yazai, don't be in a daze. I'm asking you if you have 100 yen. I don't have enough money on hand. Saitama looked at Yazai, who was daydreaming, with dissatisfaction. He thought that he was pretending to be deaf and mute, trying to hide the money. F asterisk CK, I can't be so unlucky, right? I just recovered. Why is it happening again? This world is really dangerous. However, the reason why Yazai ignored Saitama wasn't what he thought. Instead, he had just received another mission from the system. Ding! Mission 1, stop the scientist brother from continuing to destroy the city. Reward, one chance to draw a card. Ding! Mission 2, cut off one of the scientist brother's arms or legs. Reward, one chance to draw a card. Ding! Mission 3, Kill the Scientist Brother Alone. Reward, 3 chances to draw a card. Don't think that this weirdo was really at the level of a little brother, just because the system called him a little brother. Yazai had an impression of this weirdo. He had turned into a huge weirdo after consuming the biceps muscle potion that the scientist brother had invented. In terms of strength, he was probably at the mid-level of the dragon class. Although he had obtained great strength, his intelligence was somewhat lacking. However, the strength of the dragon class wasn't fake. With just a wave of his arm, he could destroy several streets with just the wind from his fist. As if to verify the accuracy of the system, the supermarket where Saitama and Yazai were in suddenly shook violently. The Hero Association's alarm also began to sound in the surroundings, causing ordinary people to quickly take refuge. Boom, a deafening sound rang out beside Yazai. When they looked back, there was a huge footprint on the map. Just by looking at the size of the footprint, it was definitely more than 42 yards. No, it was more than 420 yards. One but that wasn't the main point now. The main point was that Yazai was in a very dangerous situation. The vaccine man from before had already made Yazai aware of the horror of the dragon class weirdo. He definitely didn't want to court death again. Moreover, the second mission given by the system this time was completely impossible for Yazai. You still want to cut off his limbs. Look at his body. Is he as big as the gap between his teeth? Yazai, another weirdo has appeared. Are you going to go first this time? I'll deal with him after you're beaten to the ground. Saitama dug his nose and turned a blind eye to the giant that was a thousand feet tall, as if dealing with him was a piece of cake. Cough, cough. I haven't fully recovered from the injuries from the previous battle. I'll let you attack directly this time. 
letting Yazai go up again and get seriously injured. He wouldn't be so lucky to survive every time. Moreover, Yazai had no hope of completing the second mission this time. As for the first mission, the system didn't specify who to complete it. It only said to stop the giant from destroying the city. In that case, Yazai could just slack off. If Saitama stopped him, his mission could also be completed. That's fine. If I let you attack first, you'll be slow every time. If we don't go back early today, we won't be able to make dinner. Baldi didn't feel bad about Yazai's rejection. After all, Yazai was the one who would be defeated in the end. When Yazai brought Saitama to the giant with the sky dance technique, the latter was quite surprised. He didn't know when Yazai could fly. Even someone as strong as Saitama couldn't go against the gravity of the planet and fly. Yazai was so strong, but he couldn't fly. Wasn't that strange? Don't you know that I'm a, psychokinesis? What's so strange about that? Yazai lied casually. Although he was a, psychokinesis, he couldn't make himself float, let alone fly with Saitama. With his, psychokinesis, he could at most make his alloy sword fly. The reason why he could fly was because of the skill card, sky dance technique. Uh, but didn't you say that your psychokinesis is weak? That's why you want to be a swordsman. Yazai had complained to him more than once about how unscientific their family's bloodline was and why the strength of psychokinesis was decreasing. Why do you care so much? Can't I suddenly become stronger? You've been invincible for three years. Can't I suddenly become stronger? If you keep blabbering, I'll throw you down and let you run over yourself. Baldi was getting harder and harder to fool. Yazai directly interrupted the conversation. Don't. I won't ask. Saitama felt that it was unfair that Yazai could fly but he couldn't. He always thought that heroes should be able to fly. They should run. However, he couldn't offend Yazai too much. Otherwise, he wouldn't fly with him anymore. In the future, when the supermarket had a discount, they could fly. That way, those aunties wouldn't fight for leftovers. After Saitama and Yazai arrived on the giant's shoulder, the scientist realized that there were two more people on his brother's other shoulder. The scientist was fantasizing about a bright future. Now that his brother had become so strong, they would have a bright future in this world. But when he noticed Saitama's dull gaze, the scientist was stunned for a moment. Someone actually ran up to his younger brother's shoulder without him noticing. After reminding his younger brother who was immersed in his powerful strength, the giant hurriedly slapped his own shoulder. In the end, the scientist died. Although the giant had the strength of a dragon level and could still maintain its rationality, its intelligence was obviously lacking. It couldn't even tell left from right. With this slap, her brother, who was a scientist, would be deader than dead. Not even his bones could be found. Ah! You actually killed my brother. I'm going to kill you all. The giant looked at his brother, who had died with his eyes wide open, and threw the blame to Yizai and the other man. You were the one who killed your brother. Yizai didn't have the energy to retort, but Saitama dug his nose and bluntly complained about the fact that his brother had been killed by himself. You damned baldy, I'm going to crush you to avenge my brother. The bald man was born with a sarcastic face. Coupled with his poisonous tongue, just now, his sarcasm was off the charts. The giant instantly ignored Yazai's existence and said that he wanted the bald man to look better. But the word baldy obviously touched Saitama's bottom line. Looking at the giant's equally shiny head, Saitama empathized with him and wanted to comfort him. But now, Saitama didn't want to leave this weirdo's corpse intact. You're a baldy yourself, and you have the nerve to call me a baldy. The fierce battle between the two baldies instantly started. No, it wasn't fierce at all, because the aggressive giant was punched in the soft face by the little baldy Saitama. After that, the giant's body, which could cover the sky, instantly fell to the ground. He didn't even need to count, because the giant's head was gone. Now, it wasn't just a baldy problem anymore. His entire head was bald. Yazai gulped. Every time he saw Saitama fight a weirdo, he would have the thought that weirdos didn't have it easy. Wasn't it supposed to be a fight to the death, where the sun and moon would lose their light? Nothing, nothing. In front of the great demon king, Saitama, 
it was all a punch. The giant was defeated by Saitama's punch, and Yazai's first mission was completed. He got another chance to draw a card. And this time, he didn't do anything. All he did was bring Saitama to the giant's side, and he got a chance to draw a card. He didn't lose anything this time. Yazai, hurry up and fly me. Let's go back to the supermarket. Boss Saitama asked me to fly him. Why do I suddenly feel a little proud? Why are we going back? Haven't we bought everything we need? Because there was a gap between every discount in the supermarket, Yazai and Saitama would take advantage of the fact that things were cheap and stock up on ingredients for a period of time. Are you stupid? Because of this big weirdo, everyone ran to take refuge. There's no one in the supermarket now. Saitama didn't say anything, but Yazai instantly understood. Isn't that bad? Let's take advantage of the fact that no one is taking high-end beef or something. Although Yazai looked embarrassed, he didn't slow down at all. He grabbed Saitama's shoulder and moved much faster than when he was chasing the weirdo. This was what people often said, you say no, but your body is honest. Actually, I wanted to say that I left the things I bought in the supermarket because I was in a hurry. And I've already paid the money. Now I'm worried that the cashier will forget that I paid the money. After hearing Saitama's shy words, Yazai had the urge to throw the baldy down. Yazai was sure that Saitama didn't mean that he wanted to go back to buy something good. And Yazai remembered very clearly that the giant weirdo came before the baldy even paid the money. The baldy had turned bad. He was like a typical bitch who wanted a chastity. After returning to the supermarket, Saitama walked to the high-end meat aisle that he usually didn't dare to look at and kept collecting. And in the process, he didn't forget to blame Yazai. Yazai, isn't this not good? Although it's out of interest, I'm still a hero. You talk too much. We didn't take any money. Heroes will also starve. If you think it's bad, then don't eat it later. I'll take all the blame. Yazai looked at the big and small bags of high-end meat in Saitama's arms. At this moment, he had a clear understanding of his shamelessness. That won't do. Although it's your idea to take things from the supermarket when there's no one, I'm helping you take things now. You have to pay me. Without any explanation, Saitama put the blame on Yazai and asked him not to eat meat. That was impossible. At most, he would eat less. After everything calmed down, the people who had gone out to take refuge ran back. The supermarket's management staff realized that the supermarket had been messed up by the people who had fled in a hurry. However, the overall supermarket had not been damaged by the monsters. After the supermarket staff tidied up everything, they found something quite strange. Manager, come and take a look. Our high-end meat shelves have been completely emptied. The supermarket's manager was stunned when he heard the staff's words. Could it be that the monsters were no longer destructive and had changed their profession to robbing? However, when he turned on the surveillance video with a puzzled expression, Saitama's shiny bald head instantly occupied the entire screen. Saitama was facing the meat shelves on the screen. His figure appeared clearly in the invigilator's eyes. However, because the surveillance camera from another angle had been broken a while ago, the supermarket's manager could not see Saitama's face. He could only see his rather iconic bald head. There are really all kinds of crazy people these days. They actually took advantage of the monster's havoc and looted. The manager looked at the bald head on the screen and was furious. If it was an ordinary product, it would have been fine. However, this abominable bald head had a vicious eye. He had taken all the 5A grade beef. Just the loss alone was equivalent to their weekly turnover. Print out this bald head for me and paste it on the door. When you see a bald head entering the store in the future, use this photo to compare. The manager pointed at the various reflective bald heads on the screen. Even if there was no front face, he believed that he would be able to find the culprit sooner or later just by looking at the back of the head. After all, there were not many people who were bald. At this time, the bald head, who did not know that he was wanted, was sitting around a small round table with Yazai and eating beef hotpot that they had not eaten for half a year. The bald head did not look good at this time. He did not feel guilty like he had said in the supermarket before, and he did not eat less, as he had said. Yazai, you just ate the beef that I put in the hot pot. That was the most delicious part that I had saved for last. 
Saitama looked at Yeya's hot pot of beef and was about to snatch it. Shut up. Didn't you say that you felt guilty? Damn it, you ate more than I did. Yizai finally understood what Baldi was talking about. His words should be taken with a grain of salt, but they should never be taken seriously. Anyway, you were the one who came up with the idea, and you were the one who asked me to take the meat. It has nothing to do with me. Baldi was planning to deny it after eating up the food, and Yizai didn't want to argue with him anymore. After all, Yizai already knew Baldi's personality. Actually, in Yazai's opinion, Saitama's guilt was completely unnecessary. They had even helped the people of that city get rid of the monsters. What was wrong with taking some spoils of war? They were not members of the Hero Association. They were not paid to begin with. Defeating the strange man was purely voluntary work. It wasn't too much to fill their stomachs with that bit of food, right? The main thing was that Baldi was too greedy. Although he said he didn't want it, he took the most expensive and most expensive thing. In fact, they could also participate in the Hero Association's assessment and register as a hero. With their achievements, their lives would not be so tight. However, Satama was a computer idiot. He did not even know of the Hero Association's existence. Yizai was even less likely to remind him, and the reason was very simple. Once he told Satama, he would definitely drag him into the registration process. And once they joined the Hero Association, their identity information would be recorded on the computer. And with his two sisters' status in the Hero Association, Fubuki was still alright. She was only ranked first among the B rank heroes. However, Tatsumaki was a bona fide S rank hero. Furthermore, she was ranked second. If Yizai were to register for the Hero Association's hero assessment, he would be walking right into a trap. When the time came, he would be brought home to be tortured. Rather than that, Yizai might as well lead a tight life with Saitama. At the very least, his safety would be guaranteed. After eating and drinking their fill, Yizai and Saitama picked up the game console and fought for a while before falling asleep. Saitama, did you turn the air conditioner too low? When Yizai was sleeping, he felt as if he was sleeping outdoors. His body felt cold from the wind. He subconsciously kicked Saitama, who was sleeping beside him. He wanted him to switch off the air conditioner, but he missed. When Yizai opened his eyes in a daze, he suddenly realized. It didn't seem like he was sleeping outdoors, but he was actually sleeping outdoors. The house was gone, the bed was gone, and even Saitama was gone. Apart from the pajamas that were much bigger than before, the only thing that followed him here was the alloy knife. Is this the F asterisk king transmigration that the system mentioned? But there weren't any signs or hints. F asterisk CK, and why did I become smaller? Yi Zai looked at his appearance. He was at most ten years old. A gust of cold wind blew past, causing Yi Zai to shiver. He finally understood what was going on. It was fine if he had transmigrated, but what was the situation now? Why was he locked up in a metal cage? Hey! Hey! What kind of opening was this? Not only was the system lame, but it also looked like a scam. What are you screaming for? We're going to sell you to the slave market tomorrow. It won't be too late for you to seek death after we get the money. A bare-chested man who looked like a ruffian shouted when he saw Yi Zai. He threw the wine bottle in his hand at Yi Zai's cage, indicating for him to be quiet. Beach, be careful. This pretty boy can only be sold for a good price because of his tender skin. Our brothers used a lot of drugs to paralyze him. Another ruffian with a scar on his face reprimanded his companion. Hearing the conversation between the two men who looked like bandits, Yi Zai realized that he had been set up. Moreover, he was about to be sold as a slave. No wonder he couldn't exert any strength earlier. F asterisk CK, this was too much of a scam. Now, he didn't even know what world he was in. He had already lost so much blood and was directly reduced to a slave. Now, he didn't even know if he could protect himself, let alone save the world. Brothers, can you tell me where you're going to buy me? Yi Zai tried to get some information from the two slave traders, so even if they tied him up, he still had a very flattering look on his face. There's no harm in telling you. We plan to sell you to the black market in the Sabaidi archipelago. As for who will buy you in the end, 
it depends on your own luck. The man with the scar looked at Yi Zai. He was about to let the two brothers make a windfall, so he generously told Yi Zai their destination. Sabaidi Archipelago. Could it be the One Piece world? Is there a world crisis here? Well, the world department and the big boss behind it are indeed an existence that threatens the world. So, my goal is to overthrow the world department. This is too difficult, and the world line of One Piece is so long. How long will I have to stay in this world? Just when Yizai was worried about whether he would die in the One Piece world, the system reacted. Ding, discovered task 1, successfully join a camp, the reward is a chance to draw a card. Optional camps are, One Piece Camp, Marine Camp, Revolutionary Army Camp. PS1, complete three tasks, you can return to the One Punch world. The timeline of this world is too long, the host will be transmigrated several times. Every time you complete a task of this stage, you can choose to return. PS2, when in other planes, the One Punch world's time will slow down the passage of time. No matter how long the host leaves, the passage of time in the main world will be one week. This time, the system was quite humane and gave Yi Zai a lot of explanations. At the same time, Yi Zai was relieved. Fortunately, he didn't have to overthrow the world department in the One Piece world to return to the One Punch world. Otherwise, Yi Zai estimated that he would have to struggle for a lifetime. Although the power of the One Piece world was much lower than that of the One Punch world, the safety factor should be higher. But Yi Zai didn't have a thigh in this world, it was better to stay with Saitama. The first task appeared, but Yi Zai couldn't complete it at all. He was now a slave, no matter which of the three camps, they didn't want to be with the current him. And the system only said that the One Piece world was divided into several stages, and now he had transmigrated to one of the stages. Considering that he might come to this world in the future, Yizai felt that he should have been transmigrated to the previous part of the plot. But to what extent, Yizai didn't know. After all, he had too little information now. But it was useless to think so much now. He, who was drugged, now only felt that his body couldn't use any strength, and he couldn't even break through a cage. Sai, it seems that I can only be a coward temporarily. Only when the effect of the drug is over, I have the ability to resist. Yi Zai was also helpless about the current situation. He had already lost blood at the start of the match. Now he could only hope that the person who bought him was an ordinary guy, then he had a chance to escape. In this way, Yi Zai and the two traffickers floated on the sea for two days before they arrived at the legendary Sabaidi Archipelago. During this period, the two traffickers also kept drugging Yi Zai's food to keep him in a weak state. Either eat or starve to death, Yi Zai had no choice. Yi Zai had tried to starve himself for two days to see if the effects of the medicine would weaken. Unfortunately, the effects of this drug were too long. Moreover, although Yi Zai could endure hunger, he could not go without water for a few days. This is a good thing. You only gave us 500,000 berries. That's too little. You know, if you sell this kid to a rich woman, you can easily sell him for a few million berries. Two human traffickers were currently bargaining with the person in charge of the slave market. Zero 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 berries is a lot, although the goods are good. But look at his condition, he might die in a few days. This will damage the reputation of our slave auction house, okay? The person from the slave auction house also directly threw out a bag of berry. To be honest, if it wasn't for Yizai's good looks, he really wouldn't have accepted it. Damn it, what bad luck. The two human traffickers also knew that the boss was right, so they could only pick up Barry and leave. Before he left, he even kicked Yizai's iron cage to vent his anger. Yizai's current condition was indeed very bad, but he was not weak to the point of dying. Part of it was to prevent Yizai from having the ability to escape. The two human traffickers gave him very little food. The other part was that he deliberately showed weakness to make the people who bought him relax. However, because Yi Zai's condition was really not good, the person in charge of the slave market did not pay much attention to him. After all, he was a cheap good. He was not a mermaid or giant or other rare slaves. The person in charge just casually threw Yi Zai to the backstage and completely ignored his life and death. Yi Zai was quickly taken out of the cage and then thrown into a large iron cage and locked together with other, cheap goods. 
As for the alloy knife that came with him, it had long been confiscated by the first two slave traffickers. At the moment when the person in the slave market opened the cage, Yizai thought of taking the opportunity to resist. But his weak body made it difficult for him to even walk, let alone knock down several big men. Entering the big iron cage, almost all of the people in it had the same experience as Yizai. They were either abducted or kidnapped. Those locked in this iron cage were all ordinary human races, and most of them were women. Of course, there were also many good-looking boys like Yizai. Looking around, Yizai heaved a sigh of relief. Those locked in this iron cage were almost all people who were determined to have no ability to resist. They did not even have extra anklets or bracelets. After the few big men threw him into the iron cage, they left immediately. Probably because they were not satisfied with the price they received, the two slave traffickers did not remind the person in the slave market that Yizai had a certain level of strength. The slave market's lax attitude towards him made Yizai happy. If it was just an iron cage, he would have the ability to escape after the effects of the drug wore off. Seeing that there was hope for him to get out of this predicament, Yizai finally relaxed and began to size up the unlucky people who were caught with him in the iron cage. Most of them had ashen faces and almost no longer had any hope for the rest of their lives. However, there were also people like Yizai who still had expectations for the future. Among them, the three girls locked in the corner attracted Yizai's attention the most. To be precise, it should be the girl with long black hair among the three girls who attracted Yizai's attention. She was about the same age as Yizai. Although her face was young and tender, there was no doubt that she was a beauty now. When she grew up, she would definitely be a stunning beauty who could bring disaster to the country. She was clearly also in the iron cage and looked scared to death, but she kept comforting her two sisters. However, the reason why the other party attracted Yizai's attention was definitely not because of her beauty, nor was it because of her attitude towards her sisters. It was because Yizai had a vague feeling that he seemed to have seen her somewhere before. Looking at the entire pirate crew, there were countless characters who appeared, but the girl who could make Yizai remember her face was not a simple person. Therefore, with the idea of probing, Yizai went forward to talk to the three sisters. Relying on his outstanding appearance, after all, no matter in which world, it was all about looks. With a witty conversation, Yizai easily won the trust of the three girls and learned their names from them. Boa Hancock, Boa Sonia, Boa Marie. The last two names might not have any impact on Yizai, but the name at the front was definitely famous. The Pirate Empress. She's the goddess of all pirate fans. It's no wonder that Yizai didn't recognize Hancock before, but the current Hancock, although beautiful. She still hadn't reached the stage where she would be able to bring disaster to the country and its people. It's estimated that she hasn't eaten the love love fruit yet, but this doesn't prevent Yizai from getting close to her. Hancocks. Good looks are one thing, the point is that she is the future, seven warlords of the sea. And she is also the most powerful, Shichibukai. She is one of the few, tricolor hockey, in the sea, with the, love love fruit. Even in the grand line, there are many strong people, Hancock is also considered a strong person. After learning that the other party is the three sisters of the Amazon Lily Island, Yi Zai became a lot more enthusiastic. There is no other reason, it is better to have more strong friends than more enemies on the sea. And now Hancock is just an ordinary girl, the more she doesn't have the demeanor of the One Piece Empress in the later period. It's a good opportunity to brush up favorability. Even Yizai is planning to wait a few days, when the effect of the drug on his body is over, and then he will escape with the three sisters. But things go against his wishes, and the reality is often crueler than imagined. Yizai has not ushered in the drug effect for a few days. Only the second day passed, the buyer came, and it was a big shot, and the buyer Yizai didn't want to see. St. Charles, are you satisfied with these slaves? They are all good-looking goods. If you want a stronger slave, there are a lot of strong murlocs over there. The person in charge of the slave auction, at this time, was like a pug dog behind a man wearing a glass mask and a spacesuit. The other party's dress, and his arrogant appearance, plus the civilians along the way, all show that he is a celestial dragon. Celestial dragons, known as the descendants of the saviors who saved the world, are mostly arrogant and regard other people who are not celestial dragons as inferior people. 
They even disdain to breathe the same air as those inferior people and have skin contact, so they wear a hood and protective clothing. Almost 99 of the celestial dragons are the garbage of the world. Every year, they squander the heavenly gold from all over the world, and they treat the lives of ordinary people as grass. As a celestial dragon, that St. Charles who came today was also a garbage. The only reason he came to the slave auction today was because all the slaves at home had been played to death by him. That was why he had come out today to purchase a new batch of goods. As for his purpose, of course, it was to provide him with entertainment. Oh, are there any more fishmen? Are there any mermaids? The man with the big belly looked at the person in charge who looked like a lackey and asked expectantly. I'm very sorry, St. Charles. Mermaids are really too difficult to catch. They also rarely leave Fishmen Island, so our company is temporarily out of stock. If there is stock, I will inform St. Charles as soon as possible. The person in charge answered a little nervously. He tried his best to make his words sound more respectful. These celestial dragons are all psychopaths. If they say a bad word in an instant, the other party is likely to pull out a gun and kill him. And absolutely no one dares to interfere. If the blind man dares to resist the Tenryubito, the headquarters of the marine is nearby, and the admiral will come out at any time to teach him a lesson. For the celestial dragons, the so-called world department was their dog. When the master was humiliated, the dog would of course come forward to bite. Forget it, the mermaids in my fish tank can still jump for a few days. This time, I won't buy any mermaids. Don't do any auction today. I want all the slaves you have here. The slaves that have just been returned to my father are almost dead. Just send some to him. The words of St. Charles made the person in charge of the slave auction house breathe a sigh of relief, and then there was a burst of ecstasy. Although the celestial dragons are bastards, their business can be so prosperous because of the help of these stupid people with a lot of money, celestial dragons. Okay, thank you, St. Charles. We will go down and prepare all the slaves here for you. Yi Zai, who heard their conversation in the iron cage, was not good. Is his luck the legendary Yi? But he is not a lancer. But why is he so unlucky? Obviously, as long as he waits for another day or two, the effect of the drug on his body will disappear. And there are still a few days before the so-called slave auction day, but now a celestial dragon suddenly appeared. All the slaves that the celestial dragon wants, there is no doubt that he is in the category of all, that is to say, he will also be packed up and taken away. Obviously, he was about to have a grand slam, but he was suddenly intercepted. And if he goes back to San Diego Mariahua with the Celestial Dragon, does he still have a way to survive? Although in the original work, the Hancock sisters did become slaves of the Celestial Dragon, and were later rescued by Fisher Tiger, a fierce man who climbed up San Diego Mariahua with his bare hands. But Yi Zai is not sure whether he can hold on until the day Tiger comes. You know that the Celestial Dragons are all psychopaths, and they don't take human life seriously. It is unknown how long the slaves brought back by the celestial dragons can live. You are unlucky to be chosen by the celestial dragons. Now it is estimated that even if you want to die, it will be an extravagant hope. The staff of the slave market began to pack Yi Zai and the others in batches. They really know the notorious celestial dragons too well. Not to mention these slaves, even if they are ordinary people, once they are chosen by the celestial dragons, they will have to obediently become slaves without any room for resistance. Moreover, the slaves in the hands of the celestial dragons are absolutely either dead or disabled, and some are even tortured into lunatics. Even a quick death has become an extravagant hope. Yi Zai measured his current physical condition and estimated the success rate of his current escape. But Yi Zai pitifully found that with his current recovery of 10% or 20% of his strength, it should be no problem to put down these people in front of him, but the possibility of being beaten to death by the powerhouses who come later is higher. It is possible that there are not many powerhouses who are in charge of the human trafficking business. After all, in this line of work, there are definitely many enemies, and there is no lack of strong guys among the slaves. After weighing the gains and losses, Yi Zai decided not to take the risk. The current celestial dragon slaves do not have that kind of self-destruct collar. After Tiger made a mess in Mariehua, 
the scared celestial dragon ordered the science department to make it. In addition, the celestial dragons can't pay attention to a weak chicken like him. When his strength is fully recovered, it should not be difficult to escape from Mariehua with his wind-controlling ability. Although it is said to be San Diego Mariehua, there are some pampered trash celestial dragons living there, otherwise, Tiger would not have made a mess in Mariehua alone and released a large number of slaves. After the person in charge and the celestial dragons negotiated the price, Yazai and the others were brought onto the ship. Although the Sabaidi archipelago was not too far from Santiago Mariehua, it would take at least a day or two at sea. This also made Yazai overjoyed, because in the past one or two days, the effect of the medicine on his body had weakened a lot. Now, he had at least recovered more than half of his strength. On the way, Yazai, who was really bored, suddenly remembered that he still had a card draw chance that he had not used. Previously, when he followed the bald man and killed the scientist brother, he completed a mission. But before he could draw it, he woke up in this plane. Thinking of this, Yazai quickly calmed his mind and drew. If he was lucky, he might be able to get out of his current predicament directly. However, it turned out that an unlucky person was an unlucky person. No matter which world, it was an unchanging law. Yazai looked at the shining card in the space, and the corner of his mouth twitched. Item card, custom personality tattoo x5, from the system space, effect, you can design a tattoo with a custom color and shape. The duration is determined by the user, and it will be destroyed when cancelled. P.S. Peppa Pig Tattoo, applause for the people in society. F asterisk CK the tattoo, I don't want to be a double red stick, why did you give me these broken things? And it was five cards at once. Did they want him to tattoo one on each of his five limbs, the fifth limb of a man, you know? Yazai, what's wrong with you? Are you not feeling well again? Hancock looked at Yazai worriedly after a few days of contact. Hancock had a good impression of this boy who was about the same age as her, but his body was a little weak. Sonia and Mary also liked this rather humorous little brother. So at this time, Yazai's sudden excited reaction made the three of them look at him. This, no, I just suddenly feel that my body seems to be much better. Maybe in a few days, I will be able to fully recover. Yazai shook his arm. Although he couldn't draw anything useful, Yazai was not too disappointed. He didn't have much expectation at first. That's great, but it's a pity. Even if Yazai's body gets better, we still can't get rid of our status as slaves. We might even have to suffer even more. Hancock first showed a happy expression, but thinking of their situation at this time, her expression suddenly became sad. Hancock didn't know what a celestial dragon was. But judging from what the people in the slave market said before, being bought by the celestial dragons should be a very desperate thing. Hancock's words reminded Yeo. Although he only needed a few days to recover his strength, with the nature of the celestial dragons, it was hard to say whether he could safely pass these days. Hancock, Sonia, Mary, listen to me. When we arrive at the place of the celestial dragons, you will all pretend to be dying. As long as we can hold on for a few days, I'm confident that I can sneak you away. Based on Yazai's understanding of the celestial dragons, they are usually interested in those rare and strong races, such as mermaid and fishman. For ordinary people, unless they are strong or beautiful, the celestial dragons will pay attention to them and treat them as collections to compare and show off with their peers. As long as they are inconspicuous and quite weak, there should be no problem for them to survive for a few days. After all, the slave base of the celestial dragons is so large that they won't be unlucky enough to be selected in just a few days. Hancock hasn't eaten the love love fruit yet. Her appearance can only be regarded as good, but it's definitely not stunning. Although Yazai looks good, he looks like he will die at any time, and the celestial dragons probably won't like him. As Yazai expected, after they arrived at San Mariehua, the celestial dragons didn't care about the slaves at all. After all, for them, the existence of slaves was for their daily entertainment. A whole ship of slaves. Before entering Mariehua. They were first divided into three ranks by the celestial dragon's henchmen. They were divided into those rare races and strong ones. After that, there were those who were beautiful and strong, forming the next rank. The last level consisted of the old, weak, sick, and disabled slaves. 
The celestial dragons generally have no interest in playing with slaves of this rank, and sometimes they even die because they forget to feed them. Because Yazai was in a dying state, he was gloriously assigned to the last rank. It's a pity that because of Hancock's delicate face and Mary's and Sonia's bad acting skills. They were not assigned to the third rank of slaves like Yazai, but the second rank of slaves. And the slaves who had been assigned the ranks were now being caught one by one by the Celestial Dragon's henchmen, leaving the Celestial Dragon brand on them. Seeing the slaves being ferociously imprinted with the Celestial Dragon brand on them with a red-hot soldering iron, Yazai remembered such a thing. It's not a problem for Yazai to pretend to be a grandson, but it's impossible for him to really be a grandson. If he is engraved with the Celestial Dragon brand, how can he mix in this plane in the future, and how can he accept underlings in the future? Seeing the slaves in front of him being engraved with the Celestial Dragon brand, one by one, Yazai also decided to fight back. Some things are worth guarding with your life, and maybe you can escape successfully later. The Celestial Dragon brand is just like an ordinary tattoo. But Yazai still doesn't want to compromise because of this. It's okay to show weakness to the enemy, but it's impossible to really be branded with the slave brand. Hey, no, what did I just say, tattoo? Yazai seemed to suddenly think of something and patted his head. By the way, didn't I get something like, custom tattoo, before? He thought he got something of little value before, but now it seems that it can come in handy. Yazai looked at the position where the celestial dragon hoof was branded and took out the tattoo sticker from the system space. After the color and shape were set, Yazai lifted his clothes and patted his back. As soon as the sticker came into contact with his skin, the sticker was like a tattoo, sticking closely to Yazai's skin. The system said that this thing doesn't have a time limit, and it will only be destroyed if you tear it off yourself. Seeing the tattoo sticker, that works well, and then looking at the timid Boa and her sisters on the other side, Yazai slowly moved over without batting an eyelid. Sister, I'm so scared. They're burning us with red-hot iron. Sonia and Mary were just ordinary little girls in the past, and they had never seen such a scene. Just looking at the people who fainted from the red-hot soldering iron, the two little girls were already scared to tears. Although Hancock had been comforting her two sisters, she herself was not much better. After all, she was just a little girl. Seeing the ferocious celestial dragon's henchmen, she was scared. How could she not be afraid when the red-hot iron was pressed on her back? Just as Hancock looked at the line that was getting shorter and shorter, a familiar male voice sounded beside her. Hurry up and take off your shirt. Yazai sneaked over, there was not enough time, and there was no time to explain. Why should I take off my shirt, we haven't reached that kind of relationship yet. Hancock said hesitantly, she admitted that she had a good impression of Yazai, but not to that extent. There's no time to explain, come here. What? Hancock obviously didn't understand Yazai's joke, but Yazai didn't have time to play with her, he lifted her shirt and did it. Yazai, you actually. Even if Yazai had only recovered half of his strength, a little girl like Hancock couldn't resist him. Hancock's eyes were filled with tears, she thought she had made a friend, but she didn't expect him to be a beast. Just as Hancock was about to shout and attract the attention of others. She only felt a chill on her back, and then her shirt was put down by Yazai. Wasn't Yazai going to do something to her? Why did he suddenly stop? Was he afraid? Or did he have a conscience? Seeing Hancock's puzzled eyes, Yazai said angrily, What are you thinking? I just helped you put a tattoo, you don't have any assets, do you think I will do something to you? Yazai looked at Hancock with a playful look and gave her two stickers. He told her to help Sonia and Marie stick it and not tear it off, and then he slipped back to his team. Sonia, help me see what Yazai did behind my back. Hancock was also very confused about Yazai's behavior, she asked her sister next to her to see what Yazai did behind her back. Sister, you have an extra mark on your back, just like them. Sonia lifted her sister's shirt and covered her mouth in surprise. On Hancock's white skin, there was an extra mark of the celestial dragon. So Yi Zai was helping me just now. He didn't want to. Humph, who asked him to not say anything and caused others to misunderstand. And what does he mean by that? He actually said that I don't have any assets. Sooner or later, I will become a great beauty with a curvy figure and let him see if I have the assets. Hancock pressed her small chest. 
she just hasn't developed yet. She swore that one day, she would make Izai fall head over heels for her. However, although Hancock was stubborn, looking at the two, tattoo stickers, in her hand, she felt warm in her heart. A friend in need is a friend indeed. Not everyone would be willing to lend a helping hand when they were in trouble. It has to be said that this wave of favorability was very successful. Now Hancock's favorability towards him has skyrocketed. Sonia, Mary, turn around. Big sister will help you stick this on so that you won't be scalded by those bad guys. Hancock looked at Yazai who sneaked back to his team and revealed a gentle smile. Yizai doesn't like me, does he? Otherwise, why would he take out such a precious thing to help me? It's not surprising that Hancock would think so because there are so many slaves here, and many of them are not inferior to her, but Yizai chose to help her. In addition, Hancock is now a girl, and it's normal for her to like fantasizing. If Yizai could hear Hancock's thoughts at this time, he would definitely shout that he was wronged. He just chose a good investment target. A few tasteless, tattoo stickers, were not as valuable as the, seven warlords of the sea, the pirate empress Boa Hancock in the future. After Hancock stuck the two, tattoo stickers, on her sister's back, she directly fell to the ground and pretended to be unconscious according to Yizai's instructions. Although she didn't know why she did this, Yizai helped her, so she chose to believe him. Soon, the henchman who helped the slaves imprint the, celestial dragon mark, came to Hancock and saw the three sisters lying on the ground and roared. Don't pretend to be dead. Even if you are dead, you must be imprinted. The henchman pulled up Hancock on the ground, lifted her clothes, and planned to put the branding iron on her. But he saw that there was already a, celestial dragon mark, on Hancock's back. Oh, it turned out that they were imprinted before, and then fainted because of the pain. Really, it's troublesome for me. After confirming that the three sisters all had the celestial dragon mark on their back. The lackey cursed as he threw the unconscious three people into the pile of people who had been scalded. After successfully deceiving them, Hancock understood why Yizai asked them to pretend to be unconscious. Obviously, if they were awake, they would probably be questioned. And with the timid character of the two sisters, they might give themselves away. The situation on Yizai's side was similar, or rather, his side was more relaxed. After all, they were defective goods, and they might die in a few days. Even the henchmen didn't care much. In the next few days, Yizai didn't see the three sisters again. Because they were locked in different places, Yizai didn't know how they were doing now. But according to the situation in the original work, they should be fine. Now, the one who should be worried should be himself. Originally, Yizai thought that if they pretended to be old, weak, sick, and disabled, the celestial dragons wouldn't be interested in them. But it turned out that Yizai was thinking too much. Even the lowest level slaves couldn't escape the claws of the celestial dragons. In the past few days, several people had been pulled away. As for the reason, it was actually to help the celestial dragons test the medicine. A few celestial dragons who had nothing better to do were actually comparing whose poisons were more powerful. The celestial dragons took out their family's poison and let their slaves drink it. Whoever's slave died first would win. With such a rule, the targets of the medicine test were naturally not those strong slaves. But Yi Zai and the others who were on the verge of death. After all, they could die at any time. Of course, they would die instantly if they drank the poison. Fortunately, Yi Zai was relatively young, and when the henchmen selected slaves, they tried to choose the old ones. Because the young people's bodies were much better than the old men's, Yi Zai also escaped. I can't stay any longer, I have to run away tonight. Yi Zai secretly said in his heart, although his strength has only recovered 80, but the celestial dragons, these garbage, seem to be addicted to this kind of game recently, and sooner or later, it will be his turn and his strength has recovered 80%, although he lacks weapons, it should be no problem if he wants to sneak away. It's a pity that Yi Zai doesn't know if he has the ability to save Hancock and the others. After all, they are not defective slaves like Yi Zai, who is waiting to die at any time, and the guards must be more strict. In the end, after much consideration, Yi Zai decided to run away first. After his strength was fully recovered, he would come back to see if there was a chance to save Hancock and the others. 
Not to say that Yi Zai was ruthless, but because his strength had not fully recovered, escaping by himself was probably already his limit. If he tried to be brave and brought Hancock and the others, it was likely that the last one would not be able to escape. And since Tiger could climb up Mariehua, Yi Zai, who had the ability to control the wind, should be able to do the same. Since he had already made a decision, Yi Zai did not hesitate anymore. At night, when the other slaves were asleep, Yi Zai used a hand knife to cut through the iron cage with some effort and sneaked out. Yasuo was also a sword hero level. Since he could use sword energy to attack, cutting iron was naturally not a problem. Zoro could use bladeless style, so could Yi Zai. However, because Yasuo might not have enough stars, and Yi Zai had not fully recovered, it took a long time for Yi Zai to cut through an iron bar. Fortunately, the iron cage was not made of sea stone, otherwise, Yi Zai, who had no weapons, might not have been able to escape successfully. As Yi Zai expected, although it was the gathering place of the celestial dragons, his position was not very guarded. After Yi Zai neatly twisted the necks of the two guards, he smoothly came to the cliff. It was impossible to go through the main door. The only way out was the cliff against the sea. Yi Zai was not an ability user, so it was not a problem for him to fall into the sea. He had accompanied Saitama to train his physique for several years, coupled with, Gale Sword Hero, S ability to control the wind, and his own half-baked superpower, climbing down this steep cliff should not be too much pressure. In fact, it should be more convenient to use, Sky Dance technique. However, he did not have much, cheat now. After reaching the sea below, he did not know how long it would take to see land. Yi Zai wanted to save some strength to fly so that he could find a new foothold. Using his half-baked superpower and the power of the wind, he supported his body. Yi Zai easily relied on this half-climbing and half-supporting method to reach the mountainside. It should not be a problem for him to climb to the bottom before dawn. Because it was nighttime, Yi Zai was climbing down and could not see the situation below. He had estimated the height of the cliff and the speed at which he was crawling to make this guess. But when Yi Zai climbed halfway, his climbing but obviously touched a foreign object. Is this the bottom? Is the height of this cliff lower than I thought? And this is obviously not the kind of feeling a rock should have. Yi Zai thought to himself. Then, he reached out his hand worriedly and touched the back of his buttocks to see if it was the bottom. However, to his horror, at the same time that he stretched out his hand, another hand rose from below and touched his hand. Is it, celestial, scum? You who kidnapped my compatriots, this old man will bury you in the ocean right now. When he touched Yi Zai's outstretched hand, Yi Zai clearly felt that he was caught by a strong hand, and at the same time, there was a somewhat loud voice from the other party. Yi Zai hurriedly explained when he felt the tremendous force that he was unable to break free from. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm not a, celestial, trash, I'm a captured slave, I'm breaking out of prison, understand? Celestial dragons, those pampered guys, how could they be so bored to climb the cliff in the middle of the night? Hearing the other party's words, Yi Zai knew that the other party had obviously mistaken him for someone else. To be able to meet a companion while climbing a wall in the middle of the night, there was really no one else. Indeed, those bastard celestial dragons really don't look like people who have the courage to climb this cliff. But you make me curious, you actually have the ability to escape from the celestial dragons. The other party easily believed Yi Zai's words and let go of his hand. Yi Zai's words were very persuasive, it was impossible for a celestial dragon to do such a thing at this time. Yi Zai did not answer the other party's question, but was thinking about the other party's identity. He climbed the cliff in the middle of the night to escape, then what was the other party doing? And why did Yi Zai feel that the other party's behavior of climbing Mariehua was surprisingly similar to that of a certain fishman? He couldn't have just casually climbed over a wall and met another big shot, right? But this time is not right. Hancock and the others were locked up for three years before Tiger came to liberate the slaves. How many days has it been now? Could it be that Tiger came early? Or was Hancock caught later? Combined with the age of the Empress, Yi Zai was more inclined to the latter. Little brother, since you escaped from Mariehua, then do you know where the fish men are locked up? If it was because of the night before, Yi Zai couldn't see the other party's appearance and couldn't confirm the other party's identity. 
then Yi Zai could be 100% sure that the other party was the one who climbed up Mariehua with his bare hands, liberated the slaves, and became the future head of the Sun Pirates, Fisher Tiger. Because the other party said that his compatriots had been captured before, and now he asked her the fishmen were locked up, then it was definitely Tiger who didn't run away. Tiger actually hoped that Yi Zai would go with him in his heart. After all, he has never been to Mariehua, and it is likely that he won't be able to find the place where his compatriots are locked up. However, it wasn't easy for him to escape, so Tiger felt that it wasn't right to ask him to go back with him and risk his life. So he asked Yi Zai to see if he knew the whereabouts of his compatriots. Yi Zai naturally knows the whereabouts of the fishmen. They belong to the kind of race that is strong and rarer than ordinary people. The place where they are locked up is closer to the residence of the celestial dragons, and the guard is naturally more strict. The only thing in Yi Zai's heart now is whether he should accompany Tiger to save people. If the original work is the same, Tiger finally left Mariehua safely. But in the end, he was betrayed by the humans he rescued, and was finally injured in the pursuit, and then refused to transfuse human blood, leading to his death. If he helps Tiger, he can get the friendship of the fishmen, and the promise to Hancock and the others can also be fulfilled. You are listening to this audiobook on web novel audiobooks Tkthigud. But the only thing that makes Yi Zai entangled is that Tiger can walk out of Mariehua alive, but it doesn't mean that he can too. And just when Yi Zai was in a dilemma, the system that had been silent for a long time helped him to answer. Ding, discovered the second task, help Fisher Tiger, liberate the slaves of Mariehua, and leave safely. Reward, 100 hero points, one chance to randomly draw a card. Originally, Yi Zai wanted to retreat, because even if Yi Zai didn't go, Hancock and the others could be saved. But now that the system has given a task, Yi Zai began to hesitate. In order to deal with all kinds of similar emergencies in the future, Yi Zai is eager to become stronger, so Yi Zai only thought about Tiger's request and agreed to it. Big brother, since you want to save your compatriots, then I will go with you, because I also have someone I want to save. Yi Zai has no choice, although the system did not say what will happen if the task fails. But with the nature of the system, there will never be a good result if the task fails. Furthermore, the mission reward this time was rather tempting for Yi Zai. The unknown category, hero points, from before had actually appeared this time. Although there are only 100 points, there is no doubt that this kind of thing is definitely something that can only be encountered by chance. Yi Zai also completed a lot of tasks in the One Punch world before, but this reward has never appeared at all. Tiger was also taken aback when he heard Yi Zai's words. It was naturally better to have someone to lead the way, but Yi Zai had a hard time running out of the sea of fire. But. Now, he had to run back for him, which made Tiger a little embarrassed. My name is Fisher Tiger. From now on, little brother, you will be a friend of us, Fishman. Fishmen and humans clearly have the same blood in their bodies, but for thousands of years, they have been in constant dispute. Fishmen discriminates against weak humans, believing that they are not worthy of owning a vast land. And most fishmen also yearn for life on the ground, sunshine, forests, and all kinds of new things. And most of the humans on the land have a bad attitude towards fishmen. There are many humans in this world who think that fishmen are aliens, hunt them wantonly and buy and sell them at will. And when Yazai, a human, actually said that he wanted to help Tiger and save his compatriots, he instantly gained the favor of Tiger as a fishman. Tiger has no ill feelings towards humans, and he also thinks that Princess Odoheim is right. Humans and fishmen can coexist peacefully. Although most fishmen don't think much of it, seeing Yazai's resolute decision to help a strange fishman. At this moment, Tiger deeply agrees with Princess Odoheim's words. Because at this time, isn't the best representative standing in front of him? My name is Yazai, and I am also honored to be a friend of Fishman. Yazai has even less prejudice against Fishmen. There are all kinds of characters in the One Punch world, and a mere Fishman is considered normal in appearance. Moreover, Fishmen are the real children of the sea, and their combat power in the sea is extremely strong. In the entire anime that runs through the ocean, it is always right to have a good relationship with them. The two took advantage of the night and groped their way up. After climbing for most of the day, they finally climbed up to San Mariehua. Brother Tiger, if I remember correctly, 
the place where, Fishman, is locked up should be in that direction. After climbing up Mariehua, Yazai pointed in a certain direction, which was indeed the place where the celestial dragons previously detained high-level slaves. Tiger looked at the big Mariehua, and then looked at Yazai's body, which was only ten years old, and finally said, Yazai, little brother, you should escape along the original path. I will help you save the people you want to save. Obviously, on the dark cliff, Tiger heard Yazai's voice, but he didn't expect him to be so young. Asking a child of this age to accompany him to save someone was undoubtedly courting death. The guards of the celestial dragons were not all good for nothings. It was too dangerous for Yi Zai to follow him. Big brother Tiger, I can help. Tiger wants him to go back. What a joke, what about the mission? He had climbed down the cliff for half a day and then climbed back up for half a day. Wasn't it all for that little reward? You are still too young, and we are, fish men. You don't have to do this for us. After all, Yazai's appearance. Who would have thought that a half-grown child could be so strong? Now, there are only slaves caught by the celestial dragons here. There is no such thing as fishmen or human. Whether it is fishmen or any other race, I want to save them all the same. Even Yizai felt embarrassed when he said those words. But it had to be said that Tiger liked it very much. After Yazai said this, the favorable impression he had of Yizai increased by quite a bit again. It even went from a good little brother to a friend that I can entrust my life to. But because of this, Tiger felt that he shouldn't let Yazai take the risk. It would be a pity if such a young man, who had no prejudice against fishmen and had such an excellent temperament, died here. Yazai also knew that if he didn't show some of his strength, Tiger would probably not be at ease. Yazai walked to the front of the celestial dragon guard whose neck was broken by him, picked up the long sword that fell on the ground, and walked back to Tiger. As soon as the sword was in his hand, Yazai felt a feeling of blood connection, as if the sword was an extension of his arm. Yazai knew the feeling brought to him by the Yasuo card. As a famous sword hero, in Ionia, Yasuo roamed the whole continent with the sword in his hand and the imperial wind swordsmanship. Yazai closed his eyes and felt the flow of the wind, and then he drew his sword as fast as lightning, leaving a silver sword in the air. Then, in Tiger's incredulous eyes, a wind blade that cut the air was slashed out from the sword in Yazai's hand and left a deep sword mark on the ground. You are actually a sword hero, is little brother Yazai from the Ueno country. Yizai's display of power truly stunned Tiger. But it doesn't mean that he is not an opponent. A fierce person who can cause havoc in San Mariehua, his strength is conservatively estimated to be at the level of Shichibukai. Tiger was surprised by Yazai's strength. At his age, he is actually a sword hero, level swordsman. How dazzling will his future be? A swordsman who can cut iron and slash out sword energy is the symbol of sword hero. As for the cut iron above, it is a sword hero with excellent swordsmanship. Those who can cut diamonds are the so-called great sword hero. Although the sword energy that Yazai just displayed was a bit immature, no matter how immature it was, it was still a sword energy. It can be said that Yazai's current swordsmanship strength has surpassed most swordsmen. I am not a samurai of the Ueno country, but when I was a child, I was fortunate to be guided by a great sword hero. How about it, Brother Tiger, can I go with you to save people now? Yazai did not intend to elaborate on the origin of the swordsmanship. He now wants to know if the sword just now has been recognized by Tiger. Okay, but if you encounter an opponent that you can't fight against, let me deal with it. Don't try to be brave. Yazai's strength has indeed been recognized by Tiger, at least many of the fishman warriors he knows are not as strong as Yazai. Yazai was relieved when he heard Tiger nod. Next, if he succeeds in leaving Mariehua alive, then his task will be completed. Where are the people you want to save? Let's save your friends first, and then save my compatriots. Because the number of fishmen that Tiger wants to save is a bit too many. He is afraid that after saving his compatriots, the celestial dragons will inevitably react, and it will not be easy to save Yazai's friends. This time, Yazai didn't refuse Tiger's proposal. After all, Tiger was right. The fishman he wanted to save was in the most heavily guarded place of the celestial dragons. And the number of people he wanted to save was so large that the celestial dragons would definitely find out. 
If he went to save the fishmen first, the celestial dragons would react and then it would not be so simple to save Hancock and the others. After discussing the rescue plan, Yazai took a knife and walked in front to lead the way. Although he had been locked in a cage, Yazai had a general understanding of the terrain here by watching the guards coming in and out every day. It didn't take long for Yazai to find the location of Hancock and the others. Unlike the place where Yazai was locked up, there were only two weak guards. There was a small team of guards watching over Hancock and the others. And judging from their momentum, they were much stronger than the two unlucky guys who had their necks broken by Yazai just now. Is that where your friend is being held? Of course, Tiger also saw a team of nearly ten guards. Although it seemed that everyone was at the level of Marine, Captain, Tiger didn't put them in his eyes. Referring to the captain who went to the Sanji Sea restaurant, his strength didn't seem to be very good. After all, his fishman karate was almost one move for a person of this level. There are only eight people. I will go up and kill them. After rescuing your friends, I will save my compatriots. Tiger patted his chest and promised that he would have no problem with these people. Yazai didn't have to do anything at all and just waited here for him to come back. Big Brother Tiger, are you sure that after killing them, you won't alarm the celestial dragons? Yazai looked at Tiger and continued, if we kill them and alarm the celestial dragons again. Then after that, the difficulty of rescuing the fishmen will increase a lot. There is no doubt that the difficulty of rescuing from the hands of an unprepared enemy and rescuing from the hands of a vigilant enemy is not the same at all. This. It's not a problem to kill them, but to do it silently. It's a bit difficult. Tiger's strength is there, but his fishman karate is a bit too powerful. Not to mention other things, just his huge body alone would not be able to approach them silently. Then, if I can let Big Brother Tiger approach them silently, how many can Big Brother Tiger take care of at the same time? Yi Zai looked at Tiger. If Tiger's answer was no, or he could only take out five or less at the same time, then they would have to change their plan. If he didn't kill everyone at the same time, it would be meaningless because the others would definitely warn him. Then they would be making an enemy of the entire Mariehua guard ahead of time. If the distance is enough, it shouldn't be a problem to deal with six people at the same time. Tiger said after pondering for a moment. He didn't think too much about it. If he had come here alone to save someone, there was a high chance that he would have chosen to act rashly. After all, fishmen were not good at using their brains. They relied on their muscles. Then there's no problem. I can deal with the remaining two at the same time. It wasn't that Yi Zai was overly paranoid, but that he was afraid of death. Although in the original work, Tiger did liberate the slaves of Santiago Mariehua, shocking the world. But how many slaves had died, and how many people knew? Tiger liberated all the slaves, and it was impossible for everyone to escape from Mariehua. I'm afraid that more of them died than escaped. And Yi Zai didn't want to gamble. He wasn't the son of the world, with luck, so it was always right to be cautious. Then Yi Zai used his superpower to control the flow of the wind and wrapped it around the feet of the two people, making their steps lighter and covering the original footsteps. Yi Zai's move shocked Tiger again in an instant. Because he knew that, Sword Hero, didn't have such an ability. The only explanation was that it was a, devil fruit. Not only did he become a, sword hero, at this age, but he also ate the treasure of the sea, the devil fruit. And judging from this ability, it was very likely to be the most precious, Logia, among the devil fruits. Yi Zai naturally didn't know what Tiger was thinking at this time, otherwise, he would have refuted. His superpower had a lot of small effects, but compared to the, Logia, devil fruit, the effect was simply overpowered. The upper limit of each, devil fruit, was extremely high. As long as it was properly developed, it would be easy to split mountains and seas. And his superpower, Sai, in short, it was hard to explain in a few words. If it wasn't for the, Yasuo, card, which originally had the ability to, ride the wind. His superpower was at most a small windmill. In this way, Yi Zai and Tiger easily came behind the guards without them noticing. Fishman Karate, Water Strike after coming to a certain distance, they raised a pool of seawater with their hands and quickly punched out, hitting the raised water with their fists. The splashing water, under the action of the huge force, burst out with power comparable to bullets. 
The unprepared celestial dragon's lackeys, six of them standing in front, were instantly shot full of holes and directly died. The other two guards, because they were standing too far away, Tiger's water strike was obviously not powerful enough to hit them. But just when they wanted to warn others and let them notice that there was an intruder attack, another black shadow quickly approached from behind. Yi Zai quietly appeared behind one of them and instantly cut his neck with the sword he had just built. Step forward chop. The other person was just about to shout out loud when Yi Zai used an inconceivable movement technique to close in on him. Then, Yi Zai slashed out with his saber chi and sliced him into two. At this point, eight guards were quietly assassinated by him and Tiger in a short moment. Things went so smoothly mainly thanks to the darkness of the night. Moreover, these guards were too relaxed. They probably wouldn't have thought that someone would be so bold as to cause trouble in the Celestial Dragon's territory. It was also because of this that they were able to kill eight captain-level guards so easily. Although it was easy for Luffy and the others to beat them in the TV series, it was not a problem for them to become a captain-level existence to deal with pirates with a bounty of millions. What happened outside naturally attracted the attention of the imprisoned slaves. When they saw the guards lying in a pool of blood, they were stunned. The celestial dragons were dead. Little brother Yi Zai, those are your friends. After taking them, let's go quickly. Tiger looked at the commotion of the slaves and knew that if this continued, even if the guards didn't warn, others would be attracted by the movement here. Yi Zai. Did you really come to save us? Before Yi Zai began to recognize people, Hancock in the iron cage heard Yi Zai's name and quickly looked for Yi Zai's figure. Previously, Hancock thought that Yizai was just comforting them when he said that they would leave. After all, with Yizai's frail appearance, not to mention saving them, even a strong gust of wind could blow him away. But even so, Hancock still took this sentence as hope and encouraged herself to persevere. As the elder sister of Sonia and Marie, if she couldn't hold on, then what about her two younger sisters? But just now, what did she hear? A rough voice called Yizai's name, and said that he was going to save his friends. Yazai's friends? Then it should be them. God knows how excited Hancock was at this time, and her little heart was instantly filled with happiness. Because there was really someone who came to save them regardless of his own safety. If he escaped alone, the success rate should be higher, but Yazai still took a great risk. At this moment, Hancock's favorability for Yazai reached the peak in an instant, and it reached the same position as her two younger sisters. If Yazai heard Hancock's thoughts, then he would definitely want to say that this was a big misunderstanding. He wanted to save Hancock and her sisters, but he planned to run away first, and when his strength was fully recovered, he would think of countermeasures to save them. Now, he came back to save Hancock and her sisters regardless of his own safety because he was driven by the system. Yazai, we are here. But in any case, Hancock was quite happy at this time, and she had become very trusting of Yazai. In the past few days, she had been tortured by the Celestial Dragons, and even in her dreams, she wanted to get rid of the control of the Celestial Dragons. Yazai heard Hancock's whisper and quickly found her position, picked up the sword in his hand, and cut the cage neatly. Lord, can you let us out together? We have had enough of being Celestial Dragon slaves. Seeing Yazai, a young child, cut the iron cage neatly with a sword, the other slaves around were even more restless. They wanted to get rid of the control of the celestial dragons all the time, but there was no hope at all. No one in this world dared to go against, world aristocrat, and it was impossible to have reinforcements. Sometimes, even death became an extravagant hope. Yazai was indifferent to the slaves who asked for help. He was not a saint, and the more people there were, the bigger the target, and the less likely it was to escape successfully. And if he didn't know the plot, Yazai might be moved. But after learning that some people here may betray him and Tiger in the future, Yazai didn't want to save these people at all. Humans are selfish. Perhaps the moment you save them, they will be deeply grateful. However, when faced with a crisis or the temptation of huge benefits, how many people would be able to stay true to their hearts? Lord, if you can't save us, then please, give us a knife, let us die. A man wearing a captain's hat, who looked like the captain of a pirate ship, looked at Yazai with a pleading face. At this time, his hands and feet were tied, and he didn't even have the minimum mobility to deal with other people. Obviously, he had the tendency to commit suicide before, but he was stopped. 
And here, there were many people who suffered this kind of treatment. Since we can't escape, it's better to die, at least we don't have to be tortured by the celestial dragons. There are many people here who have the same idea as this person. After all, only by experiencing it can you know how perverted these celestial dragons are. They only hate that they don't have the ability, otherwise, they will bite off a piece of flesh and blood from the celestial dragons. Yazai, little brother, let them all out. Tiger on the side was obviously infected by the emotions of these tough men, and he decided to let them go, whether they were fishmen or other races. But big brother Tiger, what if someone betrays us? Yazai was reluctant, although these people are pitiful, but human nature is really hard to say. Didn't you say it before? There are only celestial dragon slaves here, and there is no difference between fishmen and human. Since they are all slaves of the celestial dragons, there is no reason not to lend a helping hand. Well, Yazai thought that he was good at pretending, but now it seems that he is shooting himself in the foot. However, Tiger actually wants to save people, and Yazai can't do anything about it. After all, the arm can't twist the thigh. Besides, his mission is only to assist Tiger in liberating the slaves. Whether Tiger will be hunted down for snitching or not, it seems that it has nothing to do with his mission. And although the target has become bigger by releasing everyone, but with more people, the opponent's firepower will be dispersed, and the hope of escaping from Mariehua will also become greater. Yazai released all the slaves, and as soon as these people came out, they count out to Yazai and Tiger to thank them. When they learned that Yazai and Tiger were going to save others, most of them also expressed their gratitude. Since their lives were saved by them, they will follow them in the future. Wherever the boss goes, they will naturally follow. There is another part of them, although they are also grateful to Yazai and Tiger. But they plan to stay in place and wait for them to come back, because it is too dangerous to rush to save others. Tiger and Yazai did not force them, after all, people are divided into different classes. There are people who repay a drop of kindness, and naturally, there are also people who just express their gratitude verbally. But as long as they don't stab them in the back, they are still good. In this way, the team of only two people, Yazai and Tiger, has now become a large group of people. Among these people who were caught by the celestial dragons, there were also some powerhouses. At this time, they regained their freedom and naturally hated the celestial dragons. Yazai saw that the team was growing, and now it was obviously impossible to secretly save people, so it was better to simply make a big deal out of it. In the entire Holy Mariehua, there is not only one celestial dragon family, but there are many celestial dragon families. And every celestial dragon has a large number of slaves. It can be said that the number of celestial dragons plus their guards is not even a fraction of these slaves. Yazai let the slaves with a little strength take the lead, and everyone acted separately, releasing the slaves when they saw them, completely messing up Holy Mariehua. The slave powerhouses, who have been holding back their anger for a long time, were also quite powerful. The guards before would often punch and kick them. Now that the opportunity for revenge has come, they went down one by one without any mercy. Often, when they see a celestial dragon's lackey, they will be swarmed by angry slaves and directly hacked to death. And every time the slaves were released, these leaders would leave a sentence, the people who saved you are Yazai and, Fishman, Tiger. But such a sentence was simply the spontaneous behavior of the slaves. If Yazai knew about it, he would definitely be angered to death. He still wants to develop wretchedly and doesn't want to attract the attention of the world government. But the rescued slaves didn't know about it. They did it on their own accord. Moreover, every time the person who was saved, saved someone else, they would bring up this topic. It didn't take long for Yazai and Tiger's names to reach the point where almost everyone in Mariehua knows about them. The rescued slaves are naturally grateful to the benefactor, and it is natural for them to remember the name of the benefactor. On the other hand, the celestial dragons were completely furious. In the face of the whole chaos in San Mariehua, they claim that the other slaves can be ignored, but this man named Yazai and this tiger must die. The dignity of the celestial dragons cannot be provoked, this is the shame of the entire San Mariehua. Yazai didn't know what was going on at first because he was ready to run away. The system has prompted him to complete the task. He just needs to take Hancock and the others, hold Tiger's thigh tightly, and leave Mariehua. However, for some reason, their group encountered the most obstacles in the process of escaping. 
Because of the appearance of Yazai and Tiger, the celestial dragons can't know in a short time, but there is no mistake that Tiger is a fishman. Therefore, the celestial dragons ordered that as long as they see a fishman, they would kill them with all their might. Because of that, Yizai's group received the most ferocious attacks. Because of this large group of people, except for a few humans such as Yazai and Hancock, and the few powerhouses who said that they would follow Yazai before, the rest are almost all fishmen. After Yazai forced another CP3 to retreat, he also said with a headache, Tiger, we can't go on like this, do you have any good tricks, use it quickly. Tiger was able to escape from San Mariehua, which was the setting of the original work, so Yazai expected that Tiger must have some tricks up his sleeve. Tiger looked at Yazai and said after he slapped the head of an attacking CP member directly. I have no choice. Our fighting power on land is far less than half of what it is in the sea. Now we can only take one step at a time. Yazai was dumbfounded when he heard Tiger's words. What? Tiger didn't have any tricks up his sleeve, then how did he escape from Mariehua with a large group of people under such a siege? Is reality reality, anime is anime, the content is only for reference, and everything is based on the actual situation? Isn't this a trap? Damn it, I was thinking, if we escape this time. The names of Boss Yazai and Boss Tiger will be famous in the sea, I didn't expect the celestial dragons to be so tenacious. Yeah, every time I saved someone, I would say Boss Yazai and Boss Tiger's name. We wanted to let the world know what a shocking thing they had done. At this moment, the two human powerhouses in Yizai's group were cursing and swearing. They had actually chosen to follow Yizai and flaunt their boss's name. This was what underlings should do. In this vast ocean, fame and strength determined everything. Naturally, they also hoped that their boss was an amazing person so that they would feel proud when they went out to mingle. When Yizai heard their conversation, he couldn't help but be stunned for a while. Well, he finally found the culprit, it turned out to be his own people's doing. He was still wondering why he encountered such strong resistance, it turned out to be because he encountered a pig teammate. Damn it! Can't you talk tough and brag until you've escaped? Why did you have to choose this time to court death? And what made Yazai even more speechless was that there were a few fishmen who greatly appreciated the behavior of these pig teammates. They thought that they didn't forget and promoted their boss Tiger's name by the way. Yazai really had a headache, he felt that if he mixed with these simple-minded guys, he would die sooner or later. But now that he has boarded the pirate ship, if he wants to get off the ship and fly alone now, he will undoubtedly die faster. Big Brother Tiger, we probably can't run away like this, we have to use other methods. Yazai looked at the people who were killing more and more people and said to Tiger. Their group was too big of a target, and they were also the strongest, so the celestial dragons mainly targeted them. Little brother Yazai, do you have any ideas? Tiger also saw that this little brother Yazai, although young, was quite assertive. I have an idea, but I need your help. Yazai did have some ideas, but if he was alone, he would easily become a target. No problem, just tell me how I can help you. Tiger had long regarded Yazai as a brother who had gone through life and death. Before Yazai could say anything, he patted his chest, indicating that there was no problem. Big Brother Tiger, use your full strength later and throw me out of the encirclement. Yazai looked at Tiger seriously and said. But you will become a target, right? They will definitely prioritize attacking you first. Then I will rely on Big Brother Tiger's help after that. Try to help me share some of the pressure. Tiger saw Yazai's serious expression and didn't look like he was joking, so he nodded seriously. After that, Yazai stood on Tiger's arm, and Tiger's arm suddenly exerted force and threw him out. When the people surrounding Tiger saw that Yazai wanted to escape the encirclement, they naturally aimed their gun at Yazai. Sword energy, cannonballs, and bullets poured down on Yazai like a heavy rain. Fishman Karate Ocean Current Shoulder Throw Tiger assumed a karate stance and threw out a sea current, blocking more than half of the attack that was sweeping towards Yazai. However, because there was no seawater here, the water used by Tiger's move was provided by a special fishman among them who could store water. Therefore, Tiger didn't completely block the attacks that flew towards Yazai. There were still a few cannonballs and bullets that flew towards Yazai. However, because Tiger blocked most of the attacks, the remaining ones didn't pose much of a threat to Yazai. Wind Swordsmanship Wind Wall 
Yazai waved his blade in the air and slashed out a wind wall in front of him, blocking all the remaining flying items. After successfully blocking the attacks, Yazai relied on Tiger to use the force of his throw to use the sky dance technique and directly shot in a direction. Tiger breathed a sigh of relief as he watched Yazai's figure disappear into the distance. He was just about to be pierced into a hedgehog because of Yazai. After all, it was difficult to dodge attacks in the air. Big Brother Tiger, Big Brother Yazai won't abandon us and leave by himself, right? A fishman said uneasily, but immediately met with Tiger's angry glare. Yazai isn't such a person. If he wanted to leave, he would have left by himself long ago. And he definitely won't abandon us sisters. Hancock said with a red face. After being locked up for a few days, she was forced to eat the love love fruit. Her expression at this time almost made these fishmen lose their minds. Yazai really didn't want to escape by himself. Although he was a coward, he still had a bottom line as a human being. Since others trust him, he naturally will not trample on this trust. After breaking through the encirclement, Yazai's goal was very clear, that is, the residence of the Tenryubito. At this time, the entire San Mariehua was in a state of chaos, and the defense of the Tenryubito was also in a relatively relaxed state because of the slave riot. Originally, when the slaves rioted, the Tenryubito should be more alert. But these arrogant Tenryubito, aware that even if the slaves ran out, as untouchables, they would not dare to do anything to the world aristocrats. Therefore, a large number of guards were also called out to execute the slaves who dared to riot. When Yazai sneaked into a mansion, he thought that he might encounter strong resistance, but who knew that things would go unexpectedly smoothly. When he entered the mansion, the first thing he heard was a burst of angry abuse. Bastard, I didn't expect that one of the masterminds of this slave riot ran out from here. How can I raise my head in front of my people in the future? And those damn slave merchants, they actually lied to me about the strength of the slaves, I must kill them all later. Coincidentally, Yazai casually chose a Tenryubito mansion, and it turned out to be the Tenryubito who bought them before. At this time, St. Charles' fat body was really slumped on the sofa, and there were broken red wine bottles on the ground, and his mouth kept swearing. Because of this incident, he became a laughingstock among his people. They said that he, St. Charles, couldn't even manage a group of slaves and was not worthy of being a Tenryubito. Because the slaves rioted from him first, after some investigation. The Tenryubito also knew that Yazai, one of the masterminds, was a slave bought by St. Charles. Haven't you caught the slave named Yazai yet? St. Charles angrily asked a CP3 behind him, who was his only guard now. As for the others, they were sent out by him to execute the untouchables. Yes, St. Charles, that kid is very cunning and has been acting with the tyrannical, fishman. We haven't been able to take them down yet. The CP3 said with trepidation, in fact, if he could, he would rather go out and kill people than protect this fat pig here. These Tenryubido people have problems in their heads, and they don't care who the target is. Arrogant, selfish, disgusting, all the derogatory words in the world are used to describe them. You're all a bunch of F asterisk king trash. What's the point of keeping you? If I don't see the two masterminds before I wake up in the morning, I'll throw you all to raise my sea king pets. Sure, when he heard St. Charles, St. Charles picked picked up the red wine bottle beside him and smashed it on the head of the CP3s. The glass bottle shattered in an instant, and the red wine liquid flowed down the CP3's hair. Although he can use, Tekai, and the red wine bottle can't hurt him, he felt humiliated. They are elite talents who have been strictly selected and have learned the Marines Rokushiki, but they have to suffer such humiliation in front of the Tenryubito like dogs. But no matter how angry the CP3 is, he has no courage to resist the fat Tenryubito in front of him. The other party is the world aristocrat, the high and mighty Tenryubito, if they attack them, they will be the enemy of the world government, which is simply a dead end. Yazai didn't expect that he would see a good show as soon as he came in. But these have little to do with him. He already knew how trashy the Tenryubito is. This time his purpose is also very simple, that is, to hold a Tenryubito, commonly known as a hostage. Because of the pig teammate, it has become very difficult for them to leave San Diego Mariehua now. If they want to escape successfully, they can only let those who besiege them hesitate to attack. 
the people who are chasing them are all the lackeys of the Tenryubito. The safety of the Tenryubito is above everything else. As long as they tie a Tenryubito as a hostage, it should not be too difficult to leave San Diego Mariehua safely. Because they let Yazai and the others run away, those people will at most be scolded as trash by the Tenryubito. But if a Tenryubito dies because of this incident, then they will all have to be buried with him, and it is absolutely impossible for them to be spared. Since you want to see me so much, then I will fulfill your wish and appear in front of you. Yazai leisurely appeared in front of St. Charles. The room was empty and brightly lit, and it was almost impossible to assassinate him. And now there is only this CP3 guard around the Tenryubito, and Yazai is still sure to deal with it. The so-called CP3, although like other CP, belongs to the World Department and is the most loyal dog of the highest department. But it is also divided into three, six and nine grades, like the CP0 of the direct leader, no matter the strength and status, there is nothing to say. It is definitely the best, most mysterious and top existence in the intelligence organization. The so-called CP3, although also belonging to the intelligence department, only belongs to the reserve force. Although they also learn part of the Rokushiki, they are not proficient. Therefore, the CP3 can be regarded as generally weak in the CP organization. Just like the Water Seven Islands chapter, on the sea train, there was a guy dressed like a gangster, and he was eventually hammered to death by Frankie. The other party seems to be the CP3, but it seems that he participated in that mission as a reserve member of Lucci's CP9. As a result, it was a guy with a name that people can't remember. He appeared in less than two episodes and was directly killed. Like his appearance and strength, there is no doubt that he is a cannon fodder. Back to the topic, St. Charles looked at Yazai, who swaggered into his mansion, and he was also angry. You are the slave. You're just a lowly commoner. Who allowed you to use your filthy teachings to trample on my beautiful floor? From the fact that the Tenryubito is not even willing to breathe the same air as the civilians, it can be seen how arrogant they are. At this time, Yazai came uninvited and entered his house. St. Charles felt that he has been greatly insulted. Ha! Huh. You fat pig, you still don't understand the situation, right? Yazai was also convinced by these ten Ryubito, and now Yazai came in front of him aggressively. Even a fool knows that Yazai wants to do something to him, but this ignorant fat pig thinks that Yazai dares not to do anything to him. Yazai didn't intend to continue to talk with this ten Ryubito. After all, Tiger was in a critical situation now, and he had to take down this Tenryubito as soon as possible. And now the marine support hasn't arrived yet. If they wait until the admiral comes, then they won't be able to leave. Even if he catches the celestial dragons as hostages, it is almost impossible for him to escape from the hands of the admiral. Rankyaku. Seeing Yazai's action, CP3 next to Tenryubito made the first move. Although he was just insulted by this Tenryubito, he still has to protect the safety of this Tenryubito. Because if this Tenryubito makes a mistake, he feels that he will die without a burial place. A crescent moon slash came out from CP3's leg, and the blue slash slid across the marble floor, like a hot knife cutting tofu, leaving a smooth cut mark on the ground, and came to Yazai. Imperial Wind Sword Technique, Wind Barrier A wind barrier like a gap blocked the blue slash. Then Yazai used, step forward slash, and took incredible steps. His swaying body was like a falling leaf in the wind, untraceable, yet extremely fast. A devil fruit ability user. Seeing Yazai's move, CP3's pupils shrank. Like Tiger, Yazai's ability was regarded as the ability of devil fruit. However, for the ability of devil fruit, CP3 became more calm. Devil fruit may be a great thing before entering the new world. But in the second half of the grand line, it is really a mediocre thing. Even some devil fruit with little ability not only can't increase the strength of the user, but also become a burden. Although the ability of devil fruit is strange, and some of them can even split mountains and seas once taken. But the weakness of devil fruit ability user is also quite obvious, and it is quite fatal in the sea. That is, the ability user who takes devil fruit will become a landlubber without exception. And as soon as they touch the sea, the ability will disappear, and even their strength will become weak. Although there is no sea here, but 
CP3 pulled out two brass knuckles with a metallic luster. These two brass knuckles are made of sea stone, which is also the nemesis of ability users. In addition to seawater, the other restraining item of the devil fruit was the sea stone. This type of metal could emit a power similar to that of seawater. Once hit, an ability user would be powerless to resist. As a member of the CP3 and as a guard of the Celestial Dragons, Sea Stone is rare for them, but it is not something that cannot be obtained. Because in this San Diego Mariahua, there were quite a few, Devil Fruit, ability users, and if you wanted to suppress it, this kind of thing was naturally indispensable. With the Sea Stone weapon, the CP3 is naturally fearless against the Devil Fruit. If Yizai was a sword hero, he would find it rather difficult to deal with him. However, if he was a devil fruit user, he would only become a burden to him. Looking at Yazai's figure that was constantly rushing towards him, CP3 was ready to attack. He didn't intend to avoid it. If Yazai's attack can't cause fatal damage to him, then the price of injury for injury is completely worth it. Although he didn't fully learn Marine's Rokushiki, he can use Tekai, Rankyaku, and Kamii. If he uses, Tekai, to take the attack and then punches this kid with, knuckles, made of sea stone, then he will only win. However, the imagination is beautiful, but the reality is cruel. Yazai's elegant body quickly rushed to the front of the CP3, and a slash that tore the air and cut out the wind rushed out from his scabbard. Imperial Wind Sword Technique, Steel Flash. Marines Rokushiki, Tekai. Both sides use their own moves at the same time. Yazai's wind blade directly tore the clothes on the CP3's body, and there were also dent small wounds on his body. At first, the CP3 relied on Tekai to stand still in the wind, but with the roar of the wind, the Tekai gradually cracked. The CP3 didn't expect that a half grown child could already make such a slash. This slash is even comparable to those excellent swordmen. But he hasn't lost yet. Although he felt that the Tekai was cracking, the CP3 was still struggling. Before he was about to be blown away by the wind, he punched Yazai's face. Ha, huh, after this punch, the Tekai on the CP3's body finally collapsed completely. His body was blown away by the wind and hit the ceiling directly, smashing the gorgeous crystal chandelier of the Tenryubito. Yazai's face was punched by the CP3, but because the opponent hit against the pressure of the wind, the power was slightly insufficient. He just spat a mouthful of blood on the ground and nothing happened to him. The CP3 struggled to get up and saw that Yazai just spat a mouthful of blood and nothing else happened to him, and he was dumbfounded. Aren't you a, devil fruit, user? Why is it that you were hit by my, sea stone, weapon but nothing happened to you? The CP3 looked at Yazai in disbelief, he thought he won the bet. Although he was seriously injured, he was not the one who won in the face of the weak little devil. But now the situation was somewhat beyond his expectations. The other party touched the sea stone, but he was still alive, and he was seriously injured. Doesn't that mean he is dead? Who told you that I am a devil fruit user? Have I ever admitted it? Yazai held his sword and slowly walked towards the CP3. The other party was obviously seriously injured now, and he was ready to go over and collect the head. Then he will immediately tie up the Tenryubito. He doesn't know how long Hancock and the others can hold on. You are not a, devil fruit, user. Then why can you control the wind? The CP3 also knew that he couldn't live, but he still didn't understand why he could control the wind when he wasn't a, devil fruit, user. Yazai once again slashed out, and the galloping wind instantly cut the CP3 in half. You will never know that there is a kind of person in the world. With their own extreme swordsmanship, they can make the kamikaze surrender and be controlled by them. Yazai looked at the CP3's body and said. He should have heard the voice of the kamikaze scamper. After dealing with the CP3 guard, there is only one thing left. Yazai looked at the sneaky fat body that was trying to sneak away. Don't you think it's too late to leave now? Yazai didn't have time to deal with this fat pig before, and the other party didn't even realize that he was going to run away. Yazai came behind Tenryubito and put the knife on his neck. The latter seemed to feel the cold metal touch on the blade and finally realized the threat of death, and the fat all over his body began to tremble. What do you want to do? 
Do you know the consequences of killing, world aristocrat, Tenryubito? Although the fat pig was scared to death, he still threatened Yazai, trying to frighten him and make him move the knife away. If you kill me, you will bear the wrath of the world government. The admiral of the marine headquarters will hunt you down. At that time, even in the whole sea, there will be no place for you. At this moment, St. Charles seemed to have been possessed by a negotiator, as he began to explain to Yizai what the consequences would be if he killed Yizai. There is no way, although he looks down on the pariah. But now his life is in the hands of others. If this pariah is stupid and directly slips his neck, it will not be worth it. Although this pariah will definitely be buried with him in the end, what's the use? His life is much more precious than the life of this pariah. I don't need you to remind me, I know the consequences of killing, Tenryubito. I don't want to kill you. Of course, the premise is that you have to cooperate well. Yazai also doesn't want to kill Tenryubito. Although he is now following Tiger and making things so big, it is estimated that it is not very possible to develop wretchedly. But if he kills the Tenryubito, it will only make things worse. Other, world aristocrats, will not let this kind of existence that dares to disobey them. Today, someone dares to kill a Tenryubito, and in the future, he will definitely dare to kill a group of Tenryubito. This kind of development is not good, and they will only strangle it as soon as possible. What do you pariahs want me to do? Do you want me to let you slaves leave San Diego Mariahua safely? Then I advise you not to be delusional. There are so many, Tenryubito, living in Mariahua, and I don't have the final say. Although St. Charles was trash, he was not hopelessly stupid. Seeing that Yazai took him hostage but did not kill him, he knew what he wanted to do. No, they will agree. If they really don't know what's good for them, then we can only trouble Lord Charles to be buried with us. To be honest, Yi Zai was also a little weak. He did not know if the other celestial dragons would care about the life and death of this celestial dragon. If it was the marine, maybe they would hesitate to attack. But as a world aristocrat who was also a celestial dragons, he didn't know if they would have such awareness. However, he had no other choice. This was the only way. Otherwise, when the marine support arrives, they won't be able to leave. You lowly commoners who deserve to die, you actually want to use me as a bargaining chip to leave this place. St. Charles instantly understood the meaning behind Yi Zong's words. But this made him even angrier. He was only mocked before, but if he was really used as a bargaining chip, then he would really become the disgrace of world aristocrats. In the past, the people who were used as trading had always been them, the lowly people, and the people who were bought and sold were them, the high and mighty celestial dragons. However, St. Charles would never have dreamed that one day, his identity as a lowly commoner would be swapped, and he would become a commodity in a transaction. You are not too stupid, I can only hope that your life as a high and mighty, world aristocrat, can be worth a little, otherwise, I can only trouble you to be buried with us lowly people. After Yi Zai put the knife on St. Charles' neck, he pulled his fat body and walked out. Along the way, when they saw Yi Zai holding St. Charles hostage, they also surrounded him in horror, but no one dared to step forward. Because the life of the celestial dragons was in his hands, if the celestial dragons died, most of them would be buried with him. In this way, Yi Zai put the knife on St. Charles' neck and walked to the position where Tiger and the others were before. The number of people surrounding Yi Zai also increased explosively along the way. Because compared to the safety of the celestial dragons, those escaped slaves seemed to have become insignificant. Moreover, as the guards of Santiago Mariahua, they let their master, the celestial dragons, be captured. It is estimated that after this storm, whether the celestial dragons are fine or not, the best result waiting for them is to be demoted. Brother Tiger, what should we do? There are more and more people, and there seems to be a large wave of people over there. It is estimated that the other party's reinforcements have arrived. A fishman who was in charge of watching looked at a large group of people in the distance, and he couldn't help but be shocked. Because Yi Zai held St. Charles all the way, the team that surrounded him on the road gradually grew. This made the fishman who was in charge of watching couldn't see Yi Zai, who was blocked by the crowd. There is no other way, now we can only risk our lives to break out. Try to protect the safety of the three little girls, they are the friends of little brother Yiya, even if we die, 
we must let them escape successfully. Tiger looked at Hancock and the other two who were protected behind him and said to the fishmen under him. But boss Tiger, that Yi Zai has been gone for so long, and he hasn't come back yet. Maybe he is already dead, or he ran away by himself. Some fishmen didn't agree with Tiger's approach. They are, fishmen, and they have conflicts with humans. Is there a need to go to this extent? Little brother Yi Zai is not that kind of person at all. He could have left alone without anyone knowing. But he came back and accompanied me to save you. He is our, fishman's eternal friend. Tiger walked up to the fishman who had said that he would run away in the night and gave him a tight slap. Are we, fishmen, ungrateful people? Even if little brother Yi Zai dies, we will risk our lives to save his friends, this is, trust. Tiger's reputation among the fishmen is needless to say, and it is even higher than the King Poseidon. When he roared, none of the fishmen stood up to sing a different tune. Even the fishman who had been slapped by Tiger had a guilty look on his face as if he regretted what he had just said. Boss Tiger, the situation is not right, although a large number of people are coming over, they are not attacking. At this time, some fishmen also found that the situation was not right, because it was not only the people who were coming over who did not attack. Even the people who had surrounded them earlier had stopped their attacks and started to surround Yizai. Before Tiger and the others could figure out what was going on, a voice rang out. Yizai's voice came from the crowd. Damn it, retreat a little, if my hand trembles, this celestial dragon will die, it will have nothing to do with me. It's Yi, I knew he would be fine. Hearing Ye's voice, the happiest person was Hancock. Especially when she saw Yi come back, Hancock also glared fiercely at the fishman who had just slandered Ye's escape. Although Hancock was quite dissatisfied with the people who condemned Ye's eye before. Although she firmly believed that Yi was not that kind of person, if he didn't come back, no matter how much she said, it was pale and powerless. But now the situation is different, Yi is back. He didn't run away, and he caught a hateful, Tenryubito. Seeing Yi in the midst of thousands of troops, Hancock had a feeling of exaltation. She even imagined how Yi went in and out and finally killed the enemy's rear to catch this Tenryubito fat pig. Moreover, the celestial dragon that Yi Zai made was the one who bought them and forced them to eat the devil fruit. This made Hancock start to wonder if Yi Zai had caught him for her. It has to be said that if he knew Hancock's thoughts, he would be quite speechless. Went in and out. He almost didn't encounter any resistance along the way and killed a CP3. And he just walked into a mansion. Who knew that this unlucky guy named St. Charles was so unlucky that he was just bumped into Bai Yi? But should I say that she is worthy of being Empress Hancock? This imagination ability is simply at the max level. In the original work, she liked Luffy, and from time to time, and now it's transferred to him. However, Ye's current figure is indeed like a hero, deeply engraved in Hancock's mind. Little brother Ye, I really didn't misread you. Seeing Yi Zai carrying St. Charles to his side, Tiger was even happier. He patted Yi Zai's shoulder. Everyone moved slowly with me to the position of the cliff, Tenryubito is in my hands, they dare not do anything. He didn't have time to continue chatting with Tiger, but began to let others move with him. Now that the Marines haven't arrived yet, they have to run as soon as possible, otherwise, even if they leave Mariehua later, they can't guarantee to return to the sea alive. When everyone arrived at the cliff, Yi Zai looked at the pursuers who had surrounded them. Go and prepare a few ropes that are long enough. After we leave safely, I will let this guy go. We're just a bunch of so-called, pariah. It's not a loss to exchange for the life of this guy who calls himself, world aristocrat, right? The people who surrounded them looked at each other. This matter was clearly not something they could decide. So he sent a few more people to ask the opinions of the other celestial dragons. After learning that St. Charles was held hostage, the other celestial dragons also cursed out loud. This St. Charles is really useless. We haven't even settled the score with him for the slave rebellion, and now he's been kidnapped by the slaves. Several celestial dragons sat together, apparently quite angry at St. Charles, but there was nothing they could do. Give those bastards some ropes. As soon as they release St. Charles, kill those damn bastards for me. The final result of the discussion among the celestial dragons was to agree to Yi Zai's conditions. It has to be said that Yi Zai's luck was quite good. 
Although this St. Charles did not look amazing, he was indeed the only heir of his family, and his status was different from ordinary celestial dragons. Although the other celestial dragons had suffered a little this time, they could get compensation from St. Charles' family later. On the other hand, if they chose to directly attack regardless of St. Charles's safety, then St. Charles' family would definitely take the opportunity to attack. For them, offending a family for the lives of some bastards was not worth the loss. They knew very well what to do. On the other side, Yi Zai, who had been waiting for a long time, was also a little flustered. He wondered if he was so unlucky to be a worthless celestial dragon that he couldn't even exchange for a few ropes. Also, looking at the other party's pot-bellied appearance, he was probably also a piece of trash in the celestial dragons. However, to Yi Zai's relief, although they were late, the celestial dragons still sent a few bundles of ropes. Big Brother Tiger, you take everyone down first. I think when they reach the sea, they should be unable to do anything to the fishmen. As for those races that are not fishmen, I'll have to trouble Big Brother Tiger to take care of them. As long as they reach the sea, then the fishmen are almost invincible. Even if the navy wants to pursue the fishmen on the sea, it would be extremely difficult. The fishmen's strength at sea has greatly increased, and they are agile, plus they can breathe. It is already good enough that those ships are not pierced by them. If we all leave, what will you do? Tiger asked with a frown as he watched the others slowly climb down the cliff. However, Yi Zai was still standing at the edge of the cliff indifferently. Tiger asked with a frown. Big brother Tiger, you guys go down first. I have to catch this celestial dragon, otherwise, the others won't be able to escape. Yi Zai also wanted to run away, but once he let go of the only life-saving hostage, no one would be able to escape, including himself. Then let me catch this celestial dragon, you follow them down first. Hearing Yi Zai's words, Tiger quickly said that he would take St. Charles hostage. Yi Zai has done enough. This time, it was because of him that they were able to successfully break out of the encirclement. Tiger doesn't want Yi Zai to continue to take risks. Big brother Tiger, you go down too. The fishmen still need your command, and your role in the sea is far greater than mine. And you don't have to worry about my safety at all. I still have a backup plan. If I want to leave here safely, there should be no problem. Yi Zai finally reassured Tiger, and the latter climbed down the cliff with the rest of the team with a worried face. As for Hancock, she now has blind trust in Yi Zai. Yi Zai said that he would come to save them, and he really came. Yi Zai said that he had a way to take them out of the encirclement, and he really caught a celestial dragon. Now that Yi Zai said that he can leave safely, then Hancock believes that he will be able to do it. After the others left, only Yi Zai, the captured celestial dragon, and the guards who surrounded them were left on the cliff. You can't run away, I must grind you into minced meat and feed you to the dogs. Even at this time, St. Charles still continued to look for trouble, putting on the arrogant attitude of a celestial dragon. To be honest, Yi Zai really wants to kill him, but although it's good to vent his anger, he will have to face endless pursuit after that. In the original work, Luffy just beat up a celestial dragon, and the entire fleet had to be separated for two years. If it wasn't for Mr. Kuma not coming in time, even the plot wouldn't have happened. The Straw Hat pirates might have even been killed by Kizaru because of this. Now what Yazai did was almost the same as what Luffy did. Luffy beat up a celestial dragon, and he also held a celestial dragon hostage, and he was no better than him. But if he really killed a celestial dragon, then the nature would be different. Killing a celestial dragon, the world government will not be indifferent, and they will definitely send their strongest forces to hunt him down. Other celestial dragons will definitely not give up. It's not that St. Charles is important enough to move all the celestial dragons, but because of this attitude. Their celestial dragons is the attitude of the world aristocracy. Imagine if a random slave can kill a celestial dragon, then they will represent their absolute authority in the future. If a celestial dragon is killed so easily, will it set up an illusion that celestial dragons are weak? Then won't there be more people who resist them in the future? What would the countries that offered them the gold from the heavens think? So this precedent can't be set. Once someone becomes the first person to eat crabs, the end will not be good. Yazai naturally doesn't want to die. He doesn't have the protagonist's destiny, like Luffy, and he doesn't want to look for trouble. 
If he really has the strength now, then this celestial dragon will be killed. But he is still weak, and he doesn't want to be remembered by the marines too much. Besides, although this celestial dragon has been talking dirty, he didn't do anything to him. When he has the strength in the future, he will have the opportunity to come back and collect the debt. After Tiger and the others left, Yazai also planned to withdraw. As St. Charles said, if Yazai doesn't have special means, he really can't leave. Because those guards won't let him leave with St. Charles like the others. However, Yazai didn't panic because he can fly. Although he doesn't have much key and the distance he can fly is not long, he still has the ability to fly down the cliff. The reason why he had climbed the cliff earlier was to conserve his energy to find the nearby island. After all, swimming in the sea was quite dangerous. Those sea kings were not to be trifled with. But now, with Tiger and the other fishmen at the bottom of the cliff, Yazai no longer needed to reserve the power to fly on the ocean. Immediately after, under everyone's dumbfounded gazes, Yizai's body surged with a transparent air wave, and his body began to slowly float up. St. Charles, who was being chased by Yizai, also floated up with him. We've done as you said. Let go of St. Charles now. An intelligence chief shouted anxiously when he saw Yizai floating in the air. The other slaves ran away. As long as they saved St. Charles and the mastermind who dared to kidnap the celestial dragons, they could go back with an explanation. However, the current situation was somewhat beyond their expectations. Even in their dreams, no one would have thought that this daring little brat could actually fly. I don't mean to kill this fat pig, but when I reach a certain safe distance, I will return this fat man to you. Before this, Yizai had already thought about how he was going to escape. Obviously, although there were many people besieging them, there were not many people who could use Jeppo. Moreover, the only long-range attacks they had were cannons and guns. Once Yizai flew over a certain distance, these would not be a threat to him. Yizai flew for a while with St. Charles. When he felt that he had flown a sufficient distance, he threw the fat pig in his hand to the few remaining henchmen who were chasing after him with Jeppo. The few people who were chasing after him saw St. Charles falling down and naturally knew what to do. Go to hell, you lowlife. Bang. Bang. However, Yi Zai. Never thought that this fat pig of St. Charles was actually a ruthless person. The moment he broke free from Yi Zai's control, which was the moment Yi Zai threw him out, he actually took out a pistol that could be loaded with sea stone bullets from his arms and fired several shots at Yi Zai in a row. Imperial Wind Swordsmanship, Wind Barrier Facing the incoming bullets, Yi Zai once again used the Wind Wall technique. However, because the distance was too close and the sea stone bullets were relatively hard, Yi Zai's Wind Wall was not able to completely defend against them, and it just diverted the bullets. Several bullets were bounced off, but one bullet still inevitably hit Yi Zai's shoulder, and a flower of blood bloomed on his body in an instant. Damn, you fat pig, you are looking for death, steel flash. With his body injured, Yi Zai almost lost his balance. Furthermore, the excruciating pain instantly angered him. He drew his sword and slashed out a wind blade, slashing at St. Charles' head. Can't kill the Tenryubito. Marine Admiral chasing after him. Go F asterisk King Hell. If he didn't react fast enough, he might have died. Seeing the wind blade tearing the air flying towards him, St. Charles was scared. St. Charles was also scared out of his wits. He still remembers the consequences of the previous CP3. A few couples who had originally planned to take advantage of Yi Zai's injury to catch him hurriedly used Jeppo to rush to St. Charles's side to help when they saw this scene. Renkyaku. Seeing that the tornado like slash was about to hit St. Charles, the CP who couldn't help in time also used Renkyaku to try to offset Yi Zai's slash. But how could the slash of Gale Swordsman be so easy to block? Although the card was only zero star, now, Yi Zai slashed with anger at that time, and the power was much stronger than before. After all, this is a hot blooded fan, and the output is all about roaring. Just now, Yi Zai was more or less exploding and that slash was at a new level. The slash of Rankyaku had no way to offset Yi Zai's slash, but it knocked Steel Flash off its original trajectory. The slash that should have cut St. Charles in half, after being blocked by Rankyaku, directly cut through St. Charles' shoulder. 
Immediately afterward, accompanied by the sound of tearing the air, St. Charles' entire left arm was cut off. The couple who dared to arrive later also hurriedly picked up St. Charles, who had fallen off. Ah! It hurts. It hurts. I'm going to die, take me back to stop the bleeding, quickly go back to receive treatment. The pampered Tenry Yubito, when has he ever suffered such a serious injury, St. Charles suddenly screamed crazily. When the other CP knew that the matter was serious and wanted to find Yi Zai, the culprit, there was no trace of him in the original place. Why do you still care about that lowlife now? Hurry up and take me back for treatment. If I die, none of you bastards will be able to escape. St. Charles was bleeding profusely because his entire arm was cut off, but seeing that he still had the strength to curse, he should not die in a short time. However, the rest of them were miserable. The mastermind was not caught, and this celestial dragon had his arm cut off. They could already imagine what they would have to face when they returned. It was not that they did not think of redeeming themselves, but only a few of them knew Jeppo here. Below them was a large number of fishmen who had returned to the sea. The consequences of rashly chasing after them were self-evident. At that time, the position of the hunter and the prey would be reversed, and they would probably be sent to their deaths. On the other side, after Yi Zai's shoulder was injured, he also flew to the bottom of the cliff. Just as he was about to fall to the sea, a pair of strong arms scooped him up. The familiar big beard and red skin, it was Tiger who had been waiting below for a long time. Tiger had already let the others swim a little further away. As for him, he could not let go of Yi Zai, so he stayed behind alone to help him. Little brother Yi Zai, you are actually injured. Didn't you say that it would be fine? Tiger looked at the injury on Yi Zai's shoulder and said angrily. Obviously, if it were not for the special situation now, he would have gone to find the guy who injured Yi Zai to avenge this little brother. I didn't expect that celestial dragon to carry a sea stone pistol with him. Yi Zai was also a guy who cherished his life, otherwise, he would not have gone around looking for thighs to hug. It could be said that St. Charles's ruthlessness this time was beyond Yi Zai's expectations. However, he had also reaped the interest. In the end, Yi Zai also saw the miserable appearance of the celestial dragon before he left. Unfortunately, he really did not intend to be too ostentatious, but after this incident, he was afraid that he would become famous in the sea. Brother Tiger, let's not talk about this first. Let's get out of here quickly. I have seriously injured that celestial dragon, and there will probably be a large number of pursuers coming later. Tiger took a look at Yi Zai's injuries. After confirming that there weren't any major problems, he got Yi Zai to grab his fins. Then, he swam quickly in the sea. A few days later, a party was being held on a medium sized ship on the sea. If someone were to pass by, they would be surprised to find that a scene was happening on this ship that was impossible to see on other ships. Fishmen and humans were actually coexisting peacefully. Moreover, many of them had their arms around each other's shoulders, as if they were brothers. Yi Zai's upper body was wrapped in bandages. Looking at the joyous crew, he couldn't help but laugh because this situation had been going on for three days. That's right, the people on this ship are all slaves who escaped from Santiago Mariajoa. After successfully escaping from the demon's den and learning that their benefactor had also successfully returned, this kind of party had been going on for several days. Big Brother Tiger, tell everyone that it's about time. If this continues, our resources won't be enough to support us to reach the next island. Yi Zai had been recuperating on the ship for the past few days, so he temporarily followed Tiger and the others. Moreover, when he proposed to leave, Tiger also said that as long as his injuries were healed, he wouldn't stop him from going wherever he wanted to go. However, there was no way Tiger would agree to let the injured Yazai leave on his own. It's okay. Let them be happy. After all, they have escaped from the celestial dragons. They will be free in the future. Moreover, we're not too far away from the next island. We can just replenish our supplies when the time comes. Tiger said indifferently. After all, they had escaped from an impossible situation. It was normal for them to be happy. Moreover, their ship wasn't sailing aimlessly at the moment. Instead, it was bringing some ordinary people back to their homes. That's right. Most of the slaves who escaped with Tiger and Yi Zai were ordinary women and children. 
Unlike those fishmen and human powerhouses, the cruelty of the sea was not suitable for them at all. That was why Tiger got a ship to send these poor women and children back to their respective islands. If Yi Zai had known at that time, he would have definitely stood up to stop it. Because he knew quite well how Tiger died. It was nothing more than sending people to the island, but they were reported by someone. Although Yi Zai, who had woken up, said that as long as these women and children were gathered on an island, it would be fine. But Tiger refused. The reason was that these women and children were powerless. If they were placed on an island, they would only be caught again. Furthermore, because Tiger had met Yazai, he firmly believed in Princess Aji's words that, fishmen, and, human, can become friends. Everyone was comrades who had escaped from the celestial dragons together. Tiger decided to send these people back to their islands one by one. Tiger was determined to do this, so what could Yazai do? He could only pray that when the time comes, his eyes would be bright and he would kill the guy who was acting strangely first. Hancock, I said that I can eat by myself. You don't have to feed me. I'm not a child. Yi Zai was thinking about how to save Tiger when Hancock handed the food to his mouth again. No, your arm is injured. What if the movement is too big and the wound opens again? Just when Yi Zai was having a headache about how to get rid of Hancock's entanglement, two fishmen suddenly ran over. Boss Tiger, Boss Yi Zai, your bounty is out. The few of them who were eating meat and drinking wine suddenly ran to Yazai and Tiger excitedly with two bounty slips in their hands. Bounty? Brother Tiger and I have a bounty on us. All right, although he had long guessed that such a day might come, Yizai was still rather depressed when he really had a bounty on his head. He wanted to grow up in a wretched way. But things didn't go as he wished. The matter had become so big that it seemed to be expected that there would be a bounty on them. Now Yi Zai only hoped that the amount of his bounty was not too much. Otherwise, if those marines and bounty hunters were eyeing him, that would be bad. But when Yi Zai saw the two bounty slips in front of him, his dream was broken again. There was no other reason, because his bounty was actually more than Tiger, the mastermind of the slave liberation. This was simply not giving him a way out. Yi Zai looked at the two bounty posters and was instantly confused. Tiger's bounty was 230 million berries. As one of the two people who made a mess in San Diego Mariehua, he directly angered Tenryubito and forced the Marine to issue a high bounty. As for whether Tiger had a bounty before, Yi Zai didn't know. He was just thinking about where the safest place in the world was. He was going to find a place to hide for 8 or 10 years, and then continue to come out to complete the task. This was the first time Yi Zai had a bounty on his head, so the bounty on his head definitely exceeded his own strength by a lot. In the bounty poster, Yi Zai with a tender face was holding a long sword and standing in the middle of the crowd. Imperial Wind Sword Hero Yi Zai, made a mess in San Diego Mariehua, took, world aristocrat, Tenryubito hostage and seriously injured him. P.S. This person has a good relationship with, Fishman, and his character is extremely ferocious. Bounty, 250 million berries. Seeing the last bounty, Yi Zai's whole person was not good. Tiger only had a bounty of 230 million berries, but he actually had a bounty of 250 million berries for the first time. Tiger's bounty of 230 million berries is reasonable. After all, Tiger's strength is at least at the level of Shichibukai. But what's the matter with Yi Zai? Although he is not a rookie, he is not that strong. A bounty of 250 million berries, this is forcing him to his death. In fact, the marine originally gave Yi Zai a bounty of only 80 million berries, because from the information, Yi Zai's strength was only worth this price. As for why it became million berries, in the end, it was entirely because of the intervention of the Charles family. How could the family of the person who had caused Charles to lose an arm so easily? In the end, they forced the bounty to be set. Therefore, Yazai's bounty was actually similar to Nico Robbins. He was obviously not strong, but his bounty was unreasonably high. Unlike Yizai's sad face, the other people on the ship cheered even more when they saw the bounty posters of Yizai and Tiger. Because on the sea, the amount of bounty represents the reputation of this person on the sea. As a pirate, the size of the bounty was a symbol of their own strength. Pirates will also treat their high bounty as a medal. For Yazai and Tiger to have such a high bounty, the others were naturally happy. 
After all, they had already decided to follow Yi Zai. The more famous their boss was, the more face they would have when they went out, right? However, Yi Zai didn't feel happy at all. Without the strength to match the high bounty, it was really easy to die in this sea. Because a high bounty means that you will encounter marines, bounty hunters, and even bounty pirates. Don't think that just because you're a fellow pirate, others won't choose to attack you. Those guys with lower bounties than you, if they want to gain fame faster, would usually choose to target those with higher bounties than you. After all, the strong preyed on the weak in this sea. If one wanted to maintain his reputation, he had to have the strength to match it. Sure enough, it's Boss Yi Zai's first bounty and he has such a high bounty. A group of big men on the ship yelled and it seemed that it was only a matter of time before Yi Zai became the overlord of the sea. Yi Zai was really worried because his first task was to let him choose a camp. Now that he has a bounty on his head, it is obviously impossible to join the marines. Originally, joining the marine camp as a traitor was the most stable way to act, but now it's basically impossible. The remaining two camps are only the Revolutionary Army Camp and the Pirate Camp. Yi Zai also had to choose one of these two choices to complete the first mission. Speaking of the Pirate Camp, Yi Zai first looked at his own team and finally shook his head. The Revolutionary Army was more reliable. Now that Yi Zai's bounty is so high and his strength has not reached that level, it is undoubtedly more likely for him to seek death. These strong people rescued from the Tenryubito, in fact, most of their strength is ordinary. Although some of them are on par with Yi Zai, their strength is not enough in the new world. As for the other fishmen, although many of them are strong, they will obviously follow Tiger. Although Yi Zai saved them and the fishmen also showed respect to him, if they want to disband, there is no doubt that they will follow Tiger. So in summary, Yi Zai made the final choice to join the Revolutionary Army camp. After making a plan, Yi Zai's next step is to recuperate in peace and keep saying goodbye to the people on the ship. A few days ago, Hancock and her sisters also left. Although Hancock said that she wants to accompany Yi Zai, even if it's wandering around, it doesn't matter. But Yi Zai refused her on the grounds that she has to take care of her sister, and what he is going to do is very dangerous, and Hancock can't help. What a joke, if the Empress follows him, how can she grow into the seven warlords of the sea? How can she become the powerful empress who mastered the tricolor hockey? Sister, don't look anymore, brother Yi Zai has gone far. And didn't he say? He will come back to see us in the future. Sonia looked at Hancock who was like a husband gazing stone, staring at the ship in the distance and sighed helplessly. Sonia, when do you think he will come back to see us? Hancock bit her fingernails and asked bitterly. They just separated, but Hancock felt as if she lost something important. Brother Yi Zai is such a good person, he will not lie to us. And he is only going to do something dangerous, so he is worried that sister will get hurt, so he didn't agree to take you with him. Mary also hurriedly spoke up. She could also tell that her sister was lovesick. Then I must become stronger. In this way, I can help Yi Zai, and he can't just leave me behind in the future. In this way, Empress Hancock was determined to become strong in her heart and decided to become strong in the sea to help her lover and fulfill his wish. Hancock and her two sisters were inevitably forced to eat the devil fruit. Before, Hancock was disgusted by the celestial dragons who gave her strange things, but now she felt that this was an opportunity to become stronger. After sending the three sisters away, Yazai and the others' next goal was to send a little girl named Koala back to her home on the ship. That would be the end of the mission. Along the way, Yazai was mentally exhausted. He remembered that Tiger was reported by the villagers on the same island when he was sending a slave home. But the character Tiger didn't even appear in the original work, and Yazai didn't know much about him. Not to mention that Tiger was betrayed in the process of sending someone home. So Yazai was also very helpless. Every time he arrived at an island, he had to pay careful attention to the surrounding environment. It made others feel like they were on vacation, and he was the only one who was nervous. At first, Tiger felt a little strange when he saw Yazai's situation, and because the shadow of him being captured by the celestial dragons was still there, he became a little paranoid. But so much time had passed, and Yazai was still in this state, which was really a bit abnormal. Yazai, you can't always live in the past. Now you are free, 
and there won't be people around who want to harm you. Tiger patted Yazai's shoulder and said. He didn't want this little brother to always be in this state. Yazai's talent is very good. At his age, he already has such strength, and he will definitely become a powerhouse in the sea in the future. But people who live in a painful past can't move forward, so Tiger couldn't help but remind him. I know, big brother Tiger. Yazai thought that the island of Koala was also their last stop. The other islands in front were more daunting than dangerous, so they can't be so unlucky at the last stop. Maybe I'm really thinking too much. It may also be because of my intervention, so there are not only fishmen in Tiger's group, so the islanders are not very vigilant against them. But no matter what. After sending Koala back to her island, Yazai was about to say goodbye to Tiger and the others. He needs to complete his first task, which is to choose a camp to join. And Yazai's final choice is the Revolutionary Army Camp. The base of the Revolutionary Army may be a secret for non-members, but for a transmigrator like Yazai, it was not a secret. He remembered that the base of the Revolutionary Army, before it was destroyed by Blackbeard, was Baltigo, the White Earth Island on the Grand Line. The leader of the Revolutionary Army, that is, Luffy's father, Monkey D. Dragon, should have betrayed the Marine not long ago. If he wants to join the Revolutionary Army, there should be no problem. Moreover, because he and Tiger had caused a ruckus in San Mariehua, and he had even kidnapped and seriously injured the Celestial Dragons, his identity couldn't be faked, and he should be able to be accepted by them. As they had already planned to say goodbye to Tiger and the others, Yazai did not follow the mission of sending Koala home this time. Instead, he rested on the ship to calm his nerves that had been tense recently. But not long after, the system suddenly popped up a third mission, waking Yi Zai up from his nap. Mission 3, assist the fishman Fisher Tiger in escaping from the Navy's pursuit and help him survive. Reward, one chance to draw a random card, one chance to draw a specific card. P.S. After completing the above three missions, the host can choose to leave this plane, or choose to stay in this plane temporarily. The cost of staying is one hero point equals one day in this plane. When he received this message from the system, Yazai didn't know whether to be happy or say that he was unlucky enough. He was happy that after completing three missions, he could return to the One Punch world. He felt unlucky that he had been trembling in fear for a while, observing every movement around him like walking on thin ice, but nothing happened. And he just took a nap, and what he had been worried about happened. Boss Tiger, you have to hold on, we will see our ship soon. As soon as Yazai ran out of the cabin, he saw several fishmen and several human powerhouses who had been rescued from the celestial dragons before, surrounding the injured tiger and rushing in his direction. Behind them was a large number of marines chasing after them. Looking at this configuration, it was obvious that they came prepared. As a matter of fact, after the marine headquarter learned that Fisher Tiger appeared in Fool Shout Island, they immediately sent Rear Admiral Strawberry and ordered the surrounding marines to assist him in capturing Tiger. Tiger, who had become the primary target of the attack, was also seriously injured by Strawberry in an instant. Now he was able to break out of the encirclement by luck. Seeing this situation, Yazai didn't hesitate much, he picked up his sword and jumped off the boat. Boss Yazai, we were betrayed, Boss Tiger was seriously injured. Several people saw Yazai coming up and they were quite excited. After all, they thought that Yazai was a fierce person on the same level as Boss Tiger, and even a fierce character who had just attacked the Celestial Dragons. Now that Yazai is here, they will be able to escape the pursuit of the Marines. I see, you take Tiger on the ship first, and then drive the ship away, don't worry about me, I have my own way to leave. Yazai saw Tiger, who was unconscious, and knew that things can't be delayed. If Tiger dies, his mission will fail, which means that he will have to stay in this world forever. And with the nature of the system, it will never let Yazai stay in this world comfortably, so he must go all out. When the people who were being hunted heard this, they didn't hesitate and ran in the direction of the ship. They are quite confident in Yazai's strength, after all, he is on the same level as Boss Tiger. And if it wasn't for the sneak attack, and Boss Tiger was trying to protect them, how could he be seriously injured by a rear admiral? If Yazai knew that the fishman people were confident in him, he would be crazy again. He is on the same level as Tiger. He did not know if the few of them would be a match for Tiger even if they were to fight together. 
The reason why Yazai dared to stay behind is that he can use the sky dance technique, so he has nothing to fear. After all, in this world, there are not many people who can fly. Even if Jeppo can move in the air, the speed is certainly not as good as sky dance technique. Imperial Wind Swordsmanship, Steel Flash Shortly after Tiger left, a large number of marines followed, and the leader was a marine wearing a justice uniform with a strange hairstyle. The tornado rolled up by the sword energy left a gully on the ground, so the marines had to stop and look at the young boy in front of them. You are that, Imperial Wine Swordsman. Were you left behind? Rear Admiral Strawberry looked at Yazai and frowned. This time, the only information they received was the existence of Fisher Tiger. As for Yazai, he was completely unexpected. When Strawberry saw Yazai blocking the way, he was actually a little worried. After all, Tiger just broke out with his strength, even if he was seriously injured by their sneak attack, he could still break out with powerful strength. Judging from the strength that Tiger just showed, Strawberry thinks that he is not his opponent. As Yazai's bounty is 20 million berries higher than Tiger, Strawberry is not sure about Yazai's strength. However, from the courage of the other party to stay behind, it is enough to see that he is quite confident in his own strength. Is Yazai confident in his own strength? Come on, how could he not know how much he was worth? Don't be fooled by his arrogant appearance, in fact, he was already secretly planning the best escape route. Looking at the ship that was gradually sailing away from them, Strawberry also drew his sword. Regardless of Yazai's strength, they represent justice and will never allow evil to escape in front of them. Imperial Wind Swordsman, you are also a sinner who caused trouble in Mariehua. First, I will enforce justice on you, and then go after another sinner. Although in the anime and manga before, he has seen marines who shout justice and then crusade against sinners, it is the first time for Yazai to meet them face to face. He also knows that most marines are a bit one-track minded, and they will carry out what they think is justice to the end. Usually, it is useless to explain more, so he didn't want to talk, but chose to attack directly. Ding, the two sides didn't communicate much, but pulled out their weapons at the same time and disappeared like thunder. When the ordinary soldiers around them recovered, the weapons of the two sides had already collided fiercely. Strawberry's weapon and Yazai's long sword collided in the air, and there was a vibration-like echo around them. But this situation did not last long. After a moment of stalemate, Yazai felt a huge pressure coming from his arm, and his whole body was also pushed back by a huge force. Imperial Wind Swordsman Yasuo, no matter from which aspect, is at least a great swordsman, character in the world of One Piece. But Yazai's physical fitness is not high, and the Yasuo card is only in the state of scattered, for various reasons, he just fell into a disadvantage in the confrontation with Strawberry. Who is Strawberry? He is also a rear admiral of the Marine Headquarters, and he is already a top combat power figure only below Vice Admiral and Admiral. And Yazai's body is just a half grown kid, holding an inferior weapon, even if he has superb swordsmanship, it is normal that he can't defeat his opponent. Strawberry saw Yazai, who was hit by him in the collision, and he was stunned for a long time. This, Imperial Wine Swordsman, doesn't seem to be as strong as he imagined. Although his bounty is higher than Tiger's bounty, this strength seems. Could it be that the other party was pretending to be weak so that I would reveal a flaw? Strawberry did not underestimate Yazai because of his age. At his level, he knew very well how foolish it was to judge a book by its cover in this sea. Yazai is a terrorist who can make a mess in San Mariehua and hold a Tenryubito hostage, so his strength can't be so little. Therefore, Strawberry had to play it safe to prevent himself from falling for Yazai's trick. But after fighting with Yazai for a long time, he found that Yazai seems to have only this much strength. Although Yazai's swordsmanship is indeed exquisite, and it was taught by a master at first glance. Just now, the Gale Blink cut made Strawberry feel like he was facing great swordsmen. But when Yazai used it, it was quite shallow. And not only was his swordsmanship shallow, but Yazai's physical fitness was also much worse than the rear admiral of the headquarters who has been tempered thousands of times. The people in the world of One Piece are originally strange, some are obviously ordinary humans, but they can grow up to several meters tall. And the people in this world are generally strong in physical fitness, not to mention the rear admiral of the marine headquarters. When Yazai arrived in this world, his body was no longer his original body. 
Although his appearance was the same, his physical age was obviously wrong, which has already explained everything. In other words, every time Yazai arrives in a new world. Memories are shared, but whether it is a transmigration or a clone, he has to go back to find out. It can be understood as a clone school. Of course, it is only the body. Haki, Ryatsu, Chakra, and other powers are shared, and the body's problems will be corrected in the future. Of course, if it is a card equipped on the body, which has the effect of improving physical fitness, it should be effective no matter which world it is in. Therefore, the current Yazai, whether it is strength, speed, or endurance, is no match for Strawberry. Exquisite swordsmanship alone is useless. As time passed, the wounds on his body became more and more. And this is because Strawberry had always thought that Yazai was holding back, so he was on guard and did not dare to use his full strength. If Strawberry had used his full strength from the beginning, he would have only been defeated faster. Now that Strawberry saw that Yazai was a brat who looked strong in appearance but was weak in reality, he no longer held back and sped up his attacks. At the same time, he secretly mocked the higher-ups who set the bounty for Yazai. Damn it, I was scared by the other party's bounty and thought that he was a master who pretended to be a pig to eat a tiger. If he had known that Yazai only had such strength, would he have watched Tiger run away from him? He could have double-killed and saved time and effort, but because of those higher-ups who set the bounty, he had to take a boat to chase the other one later. Headquarters higher-ups, we are not taking the blame for this. The bounty we agreed on was only 80 million berries. It was a stupid Tenryubito who raised the bounty to this level. Yazai also began to suffer in the face of Strawberry, whose attacks have become stronger. What happened to acting together? At first, Yazai thought that this headquarters major general was a guy like Akiji. Enforcing the justice of Sloth, he turned a blind eye to the guy who he thought was a good person, so he had been acting with him just now. But now it seems that this is not the case at all. This sudden increase in strength, even a fool can see that compared to the state just now, it was like taking Viagra. Yazai wanted to run away, but looking back, he saw that Tiger's ship was not far away. He can't withdraw now, otherwise, his previous injuries would have been in vain. The distressed Yazai looked at the marine soldiers who gradually surrounded him, and he couldn't help but think of a dirty trick. That's right, the dirty trick that Yizai thought of was the same as the games he played in his previous life. What was the nickname of Gale Swordsman? Yasuo. Happy Wind Man. I can play around, I can also give away, but I must be happy. As long as the soldiers are still around, I can still play, I can still show off my skills. Facing Strawberry's fierce attack, Yizai no longer chose to foolishly resist. Instead, he turned his head and rushed towards the navy soldiers that were rushing towards him. Originally, the navy soldiers wanted to cooperate with their rear admiral to capture Yizai. But now, Yizai's action of walking into the trap simply confused them. This was completely out of the ordinary. However, since the other party wanted to walk into the trap, as a navy, they naturally couldn't give way out of fear. Instead, a large group of people surged towards Yizai. Seeing Yizai's actions, Strawberry also frowned and put away the sword energy that was already brewing. There was no other way. Yizai's figure was constantly shuttling around his subordinates. If his sword energy slashed over, even his own people would be injured. And now, Strawberry also knew what this brat Yizai was trying to do. This made him so angry that his teeth itched. He saw Yizai using a strange pace to wantonly shuttle through the navy soldiers. And from the looks of it, this elegant movement method was actually much faster than before. And every time Yizai used forward slash to move, he would reap a life at the same time. Every time Yizai moved, the originally dense crowd would fall one after another like a large field of wheat. Imperial Wind Swordsman, Yizai, to think that you're a swordsman. Do you dare to come out and fight with me? Instead, you're using the lives of others as your shields. Strawberry was also powerless now. He wanted to catch up to Yi Zai who was wantonly slaughtering. However, he regretfully discovered that at this moment, he couldn't catch up to Yi Zai's figure at all. He could only watch hatefully as his subordinates kept hiding in pools of blood. In the face of Strawberry's clamor, Yi Zai completely ignored him. Leave the crowd and fight one-on-one -on -one with Strawberry. Stop joking. 
he wasn't a fool. If he couldn't win, why would he go out and die? Besides, he wasn't here to fight. He was just stalling for time. Once Tiger and the others were far away, he would have to run away. Yi Zai remained indifferent, and Strawberry was infuriated beyond words. Right now, he had super powerful strength, but he was powerless against Yi Zai. However, he was a major general of the headquarters after all. His eyes were quite sharp. After observing Yi Zai's movements, he finally discovered Yi Zai's fatal weakness. The only reason why Yi Zai could rely on his graceful movements to move quickly was because of the bridge built between people. Although he didn't know how he did it, Strawberry believed that he hadn't seen wrongly. This was because Yi Zai could only display unparalleled speed when the two of them were close to each other. In that case, if he wanted to restrain this identity, it would be very simple. Everyone, listen to my orders. Spread out and don't stand together. Strawberry quickly ordered his subordinates not to stand together but to spread out. He wanted to verify whether his guess was right or not. TSK, your eyes are really sharp. You found it so quickly. After the marine soldiers dispersed, Yi Zai naturally couldn't move forward anymore. His figure was directly exposed in front of Strawberry. Sure enough, it's just as I guessed. Although I don't know if it's the ability of the devil fruit, or your own unique swordsmanship, now you have no choice but to surrender. Seeing that his guess was right, Strawberry was also proud. Surrender without a fight? Please, I don't want to eat prison food. It's almost time, I should leave. Yi Zai looked back and saw that Tiger's ship was nowhere to be seen. Yi Zai also planned to run away. If he continued to wave, he would really die. Now, you still want to leave? In the name of the Marine's justice, I must catch you here today. Strawberry saw that Yi Zai was still delusional to think that he could leave safely at this time and felt very ridiculous. Does he think that he, Rear Admiral, was made of mud? Unless Yi Zai could fly, he would definitely. Then in front of Strawberry's surprised eyes, Yi Zai really flew. Yi Zai's body surged with white flame-like flames, and then his whole body burst into the sky at an incredible speed, leaving a group of marine soldiers looking at each other. You can't run away. Today, even if you can really fly, I must catch you. After a brief moment of shock, Strawberry quickly reacted and used Jeppo to chase after Yi Zai. Don't doubt the strength of a rear admiral. At their level, Marines Rokushiki has long been familiar to them. There is no possibility that they can't use it. And this time, the operation to capture Fisher Tiger, he had arranged so many things, and he had received a secret report before. Originally, under such a foolproof plan, the operation should have been quite successful. However, the operation this time could be described as a complete failure. In the final analysis, the reason for all of this was because of Yi Zai. If it weren't for him, they would have already caught the seriously injured Fisher Tiger, and so many ordinary soldiers would not have been injured because of this. One must know that he was the highest person in charge of this operation. If the operation was messed up and there were heavy casualties, he would be held accountable when he returned, and even face the danger of being demoted. Now that they couldn't catch Fisher Tiger, then this Imperial Wind Swordsman must be caught, so that they can make up for it. Compared to Fisher Tiger, the Imperial Wind Swordsman Yi Zai was hated by the Celestial Dragons. As long as he brought him back, this time he might be able to make more contributions than mistakes. And if he let him escape, then there is nothing to say, he will definitely be on the bench when he returns. You are stronger than him, and you have more people than him. If you can't catch him, how can you continue to be a rear admiral? So at this time, Strawberry was really giving his life, crazily using Jeppo to chase after Yi Zai. Yi Zai didn't expect the other party to be so persistent, and quickly looked back at Strawberry who was chasing after him. Rear Admiral, how much do you earn a month? Do you have to work so hard? If you work so hard, in the future when you are old, it won't be good for your body to have problems. Yi Zai still had time to turn back and tease Strawberry, because he was not weak at all. Although Jeppo was also a means to move in the air, it was much slower than sky dance technique. The former was the speed of running in the air, but the latter's speed was comparable to a jet. It is me worry, ehem it's me your beloved translator. Editor. Anyway this is the last chapter for this week, Ima continue next Monday, peace. 
Well, not many people in here yet, but I don't really mind. Like I said, I'm doing this because I feel like it anyway. Ima upload five chaps today, peace. Although the speed of Yazai's sky dance technique is far from that level, and his ability doesn't support him to fly for a long time. But this is also the same for Strawberry. Marine's Rokushiki is a physical technique that surpasses human limits, and the consumption of physical strength is also quite terrifying. Even if he is a Marine Rear Admiral, he can't keep using Jeppo to catch up. Even if Strawberry alternates Soru and Jeppo, his speed is only comparable to Yazai's. And this rapid depletion of his stamina clearly caused Strawberry to expend even more energy. Not to mention the battle with Yazai, just the long run alone was enough to tire him out. Marine Rear Admiral, I'll go first, I'll see you again in the future. After chasing for some distance, Strawberry finally felt a little exhausted. In the end, he could only look at Yazai with a detestable smile and disappear into the distance. Damn it, the next time I see you, I will catch you. Strawberry roared angrily at the sky as he watched Yazai tear through the sky and rapidly leave. This operation turned out like this mainly because they didn't know Yazai well, and he was too cautious. However, the ability to fly at high speed is really troublesome, just like Golden Lion Shiki's Float Float Fruit, it's obviously an ordinary ability but there are not many people who have the ability to do it. After Yazai got rid of Strawberry's entanglement, he quickly found the location of Tiger and landed on the ship. Although he has been mischievous, in fact, he is also strong in appearance but weak in reality. Originally, when he fought with Strawberry, he consumed a lot of energy, and then he flew for a long time. His body was still that of a half-grown child. To be able to do this much was already pushing his body to its limits. Seeing Yazai return to the ship, everyone anxiously crowded around him. I knew Boss Yazai would have no problem, how can those marines be Boss Yazai's opponent? A large group of wide and fat, fishmen, surrounded Yazai, the little shorty, and called Yazai, Boss. It looked very out of place. Looking at their reaction, Yazai knew that they must have misunderstood again. However, Yazai couldn't be bothered to explain. Even if he did, it would probably be useless. How is Big Brother Tiger? Is his life in danger? This was what Yi Zai was most worried about right now. He had come back with injuries all over his body. Why? It was all for the sake of completing the mission. Now he helped Tiger get rid of the pursuit of the Marines, and he had to ensure Tiger's survival, his task was completed. Boss Tiger's injuries aren't serious, but he's lost too much blood. If he doesn't get a blood transfusion in time, he might be in danger. But Boss Tiger's blood type is rather special. None of the murlocs on the ship have this blood type. There are human blood types on the ship, but Boss Tiger. When the fish men said this, he subconsciously realized that Yizai seemed to be a human as well, so he became hesitant. Big Brother Tiger doesn't want to transfuse human blood, right? Yizai immediately guessed the reason. Actually, there was no need to guess, because it was exactly the same as the original work. Because Tiger was betrayed by a human, he didn't want to have the same blood as a human in his body. Help me test my blood type. If it's the same blood type as Big Brother Tiger, help me to transfuse to Big Brother Tiger. If it's not the same, go and get the same blood type and lie to Big Brother Tiger that it's my blood. In short, the most important thing right now is to make sure he can survive. Even if he has to sell his blood, he must make sure that Tiger survives, otherwise, his mission will be over. And through this period of contact, Yi Zai quite admired Tiger's character, and he didn't want Tiger to take the easy way out. Now it's not the paper people on the screen, the people who are in contact with Yi Zai are living, real people. Yi Zai is not a cold blooded person, so it's normal for him to feel this way. Yi Zai's blood type was finally tested, but unfortunately, it didn't match Tiger. But Yi Zai asked the fishmen on the ship to get a few bags of blood with the same type as Tiger's and stuffed them in his clothes, and then walked into Tiger's cabin. As soon as Yi Zai came in, he attracted the attention of everyone in the cabin. Brother Yi Zai, you're back, what should we do now? Boss Tiger won't accept the blood transfusion, he will die. A blue skinned fishman, who was larger than the others, saw Yi Zai and quickly said. The person who came forward was also a big man, the future. Seven Warlords of the Sea, Knight of the Sea, Jinbi. After Tiger brought back the slaves caught by Tenryubito, 
in order to cover up the Tenry Yubito mark on his compatriots, he formed the Tasun Pirates with other former compatriots. As the most prestigious person among the fishmen, Tiger was naturally the captain of the Tsun Pirates. In the original work, Jinbi, and even Arlong, who later became Nami's childhood nightmare, and Octopus Hachi joined the Tsun Pirates. Jinbi was originally grateful to Yi Zai, who saved their compatriots together, and with Yi Zai's deliberate approach, the relationship between the two was good. Even Arlong, who had the worst personality, felt that Yi Zai was a good guy even among the trashy humans after Tiger's repeated praises. However, because of Tiger's injury, Arlong's attitude towards Yi Zai began to become a little bad again. It's all because of these damn humans, Boss Tiger saved them, but he got such a reward, sure enough, humans are all damn trash. Although Arlong's words were a little angry, it can be seen that except for those who escaped from Tenryubito, the other fishmen's eyes were not as friendly as before. Who is Tiger? For the fishmen, he was their idol when they were young, the hero of the entire fishman group. But now, he was stabbed in the back by humans, and there was a contradictory relationship between the two races, so it's not unreasonable for them to hate humans. Arlong, you're almost okay, Brother Yi Zai is not a human who harmed Boss Tiger. On the contrary, he is also a benefactor who saved our compatriots. If you do this and let Boss Tiger know, he will definitely beat you up. In the pirate group, Jinbi's strength is only inferior to Tiger, and his words naturally have weight. At least under his scolding, even the most troublesome Arlong didn't dare to fart. Of course, this is also because Jinbi was right. Even if they hate humans, they have to say that Yi Zai is a different guy and should be treated specially. If you guys continue to blabber here, Big Brother Tiger may really be hopeless. Yi Zai didn't care about Arlong's attitude towards him. What's important now is Tiger's situation. If this continues, Tiger is likely to follow in the footsteps of the original work. In Yazai's opinion, Tiger is too glass-hearted. Before, he kept saying that he believed that he would see a day when humans and fishmen coexisted peacefully. Now that he was exposed by humans, he couldn't even accept the transfusion of human blood. In fact, because Tiger had too much hope for humans before, he was even more sad when he was betrayed. Originally, the appearance of Yazai made Tiger believe that they, the fishmen, would be able to live on land one day and not be hated by humans. But this time, Tiger knew that he was still too optimistic. In this world, there are only a few humans like Yazai after all. Only a new generation like Koala can change the humans' view of the fishmen. Like those adult humans and fishmen, the hatred between them has long been deep-rooted, and no matter how much they do, they will still maintain estrangement from each other. Yazai was brought in front of Tiger. Tiger's tall body was already covered with bandages, and his breath was weak. What are you waiting for? Hurry up and transfuse blood to Brother Tiger. Yazai handed the tube connected to the blood bag in his clothes to Jinbi on the side. But Boss Tiger said, if we do this, won't it go against his will? Jinbi took the tube and hesitated, not knowing whether to listen to Yazai's words or not. They, the fish men, worship Tiger as their idol, and they have never violated Tiger's words. I say, is there something wrong with you fishmen's heads? Is this the time to talk about this? Brother Tiger is dying. If he really gets angry, you can all blame it on me. Yazai looked at the unconscious Tiger and couldn't help but curse. These fish men are really stupid. Tiger didn't let them save him, so they just watched Tiger die. Now that Tiger fainted, they gave him a blood transfusion first and didn't tell him later. Or even if Tiger knows and saved him, so what if he gets angry? It's said that the fish men are fierce, but Yazai thinks that they are quite honest. On the contrary, humans are deceitful all day long. Compared to humans, the fish men are simply cute. Jinbi was angered by Yazai, but in the end, he felt that what Yaya said was reasonable and finally inserted the tube with the needle into Tiger's vein. But Yazai said that he will bear all the consequences and bear Tiger's anger, Jinbi can't do it. What is Jinbi? Hero of the sea. A guy who upholds justice to the end, he can't do that kind of thing. After inserting two packets of blood, Yizai finally let out a sigh of relief. He finally received a notification from the system that his mission was completed. This meant that Tiger had been saved. Otherwise, the system wouldn't have notified him that his mission was completed. 
Seeing that Tiger's breathing was gradually stabilizing and his complexion was gradually improving, the surrounding fishmen all became happy. Tiger's position among the fishmen could be said to be extraordinary. It was even higher than King Neptune of the Fishmen Island. If Tiger died, there would even be a large number of radical fishmen who would attack the humans. Although it's true that the fishmen are stronger than ordinary humans, there are more strong humans. After all, they have a large population. Tiger's death will even shake the Fishman Island, which is what Jinbi didn't want to see. After Tiger was replenished with blood, his strong fishman physique allowed him to quickly wake up. But when he looked at the blood tube on his arm, his expression changed immediately. He wanted to remove the infusion tube. You guys, now you dare to not listen to me. I didn't say that I don't want dirty blood in my body. But before Tiger's action of removing the tube was completed, he was stopped by a hand from the other side. Big Brother Tiger, your words are too hurtful. Earlier, we called each other brothers. Now, you're saying that my blood is dirty? The other fishmen didn't dare to lie to Tiger, but Yazai obviously didn't have this scruple. Yazai thought that these fishmen were a group of naive people. Tiger died in the original work because they were too honest. Yazai, are you transfusing blood for me? Do you have the same blood type as me? Seeing that the blood he transfused was indeed from Yazai's sleeve, Tiger's action of removing the tube hesitated. He didn't want to have human blood in his body because he hated the humans who betrayed him. But Yazai was different. Although he was a human, Tiger had already regarded him as a brother. Yazai ignored his injuries and gave him blood transfusions and saved him again and again. If Yazai's blood was dirty, then what was the difference between him and those humans who snitched? I also heard from Jinbi that you refused to accept the blood transfusion, so I acted on my own initiative. I hope Brother Tiger doesn't blame them. Whether it was because of the system or Yazai himself, he didn't want Tiger to die. It wasn't easy to raise Tiger's favorability so high. If Tiger died like this, then wouldn't Yazai's previous efforts be in vain? And if Tiger died, Yazai would still be able to maintain a friendly relationship with the fishmen, but it would definitely not be comparable to now. Brother Tiger, it's not easy for me to block that Marine Rear Admiral, but you want to die like this. Wouldn't that make me suffer all these injuries in vain? Seeing that Yazai was indeed covered with scars and was still giving him blood, Tiger also looked apologetic. Yazai, if every human was like you and had no prejudice against fishmen, how good would that be? I really can't figure out why I saved their child. Am I wrong to be their benefactor? But why did they betray me? It was really difficult for Yazai to answer Tiger's question. After all, not everyone in this world knows how to repay kindness. The conflict between humans and fishmen isn't something that happened in a day or two. It's unrealistic for you to change the views of an entire race by yourself. Brother Tiger, the hope for peaceful coexistence between fishmen and humans lies in a new generation like Koala. If you truly wish for your compatriots to be able to live openly on land one day, you can't just die like this. Because dying like this has no value at all, and it will only deepen the conflict between humans and fishmen. Yazai looked at Tiger with a serious face, and a bold idea suddenly emerged in his heart. The idea that just came to Yazai's mind was to take Tiger and join the Revolutionary Army together. Yes, Tiger wants to change the contradiction between fishmen and humans, and the idea of the Revolutionary Army is to overthrow the rule of the world government. If the Revolutionary Army can succeed in the end, maybe the fishmen will have a new opportunity. Brother Tiger, join the Revolutionary Army with me. Revolutionary Army? You mean the organization that is against the world government? Tiger was a little confused, he didn't know why Yazai suddenly said that. Not long ago, he completed the transformation from Adventure to One Piece, and now he wants to become a Revolutionary Army? That's right, Big Brother Tiger. If you die like this, it'll really be a pity. Moreover, your death will only make more fishmen hate humans. If you join the Revolutionary Army, they are against you with the Marine, and their ideas coincide with ours, I think you can try it. Yazai now wants to find allies, although he has long felt that it is good to join the Revolutionary Army, Yazai can't predict the future. It would be best if he could get Tiger to join them. He is no longer a commander, with Tiger's strength, joining the Revolutionary Army 
that has just been formed, Dragon should be very welcome. And Tiger is not like Yazai, who is alone, he has a large group of fishmen followers. If such a huge force is injected into the revolutionary army, Tiger can at least be a cadre. And with Tiger's current relationship with Yazai, it will also make Yazai more popular in the revolutionary army. In any case, Tiger joining the revolutionary army is a good thing. The purpose of the revolutionary army is to change the world and let the world get rid of the rule of the celestial dragons. And the fishman wants to live on the land that they dream of. If the revolutionary army succeeds, can you also give the fishman a place to live? Yazai saw Tiger hesitating and quickly drew a big picture again. And the effect was quite significant, Tiger didn't say anything, but the fishman around him was already moved and felt that Yazai's proposal was good. After all, every fishman wants to live on the land and breathe the air. However, they could do nothing about the humans who wanted to kill them. If the merfolk who did not have any strength went ashore alone, it would be a dead end. Yi, are you a member of the Revolutionary Army? Tiger had always been guessing Yazai's background. After all, he was so young, yet he had such extraordinary skills. No matter how he thought about it, it was impossible for him to be a child of an ordinary family. At this moment, Yazai was trying so hard to promote the Revolutionary Army, that Tiger thought that Yazai was actually a member of the Revolutionary Army. I'm not a member of the Revolutionary Army, but I know something about them, because before I was captured by the Celestial Dragons, my goal was to join the Revolutionary Army. Yizai didn't lie about this. If he was a member of the Revolutionary Army, then his first mission would have been completed long ago. Why would he need to put in so much effort? But will the people of Revolutionary Army accept us, fishmen? As far as I know, their leader is also a human. Tiger was already moved. If he really couldn't change the current situation of humans and fishmen, it seemed to be a good idea to help his compatriots fight for a place to live in the world. However, Tiger's only worry now was whether the revolutionary army would be like ordinary humans, hating and looking down on fishmen. Brother Tiger, you don't have to worry about this. The revolutionary army was originally formed by a group of like minded people. As long as their ideals are the same, they don't care about race at all. And as far as I know, there are not only humans in the revolutionary army. There are other races, even fishmen. Yazai didn't know if there were any fishmen in the revolutionary army, now, but of course, the bigger the better. After Tiger heard Yazai's words, he was also moved. After that, under the encouragement of the fishmen under him, he agreed to join the revolutionary army. Of course, part of the reason was that Tiger felt that Yazai would not harm him. Yazai had done so much for fishmen, so naturally, he would not choose a dead end for them. After making a decision, Tiger asked about the location of the Revolutionary Army. Yazai also reported the White Earth Island, Baltigo, in his memory. After the fishmen at the helm heard it, they shook their heads and said that they had never heard of it. Fortunately, Tiger was originally an adventurer. When he was a pirate, his favorite thing was to adventure everywhere. He happened to have been to this place before, and he left a log and map. Yazai saw the road sign on the sea map. With their current position, they almost had to run over a large area of the sea and even pass through the calm belt. Yazai instantly rejoiced at his wise decision to bring Tiger along. Although he knew about Baltigo before, he didn't think that it would be such a remote and dangerous place. If he went alone, not to mention how long it would take him to get there, just the calm belt alone was enough to give Yazai a headache. Calm belt, as the name implies, is a sea without wind. Wherever a ship goes, it will lose the power to sail. Unless the ship itself has other sources of power, it can only be trapped there. And calm belt has another characteristic, that is, the calm belt area is usually the nest of giant sea kings. Don't think that sea kings are all trash. Giant sea kings can swallow several warships in minutes. And what is a nest, it means that it is not a matter of one or two, but a large group of giant sea kings. Ordinary ships entering there are usually dead. But it is normal to think about it, no matter what, it is the nest of the revolutionary army. As the enemy of the world government, how can they not choose a hidden and dangerous place? 
Because Tiger's Sun Pirates will also join the Revolutionary Army, Yazai doesn't need to leave alone, he just needs to take a ride. The fishman is also quite powerful. Even the boat is pulled by sea kings. It is obviously a small boat, but it has the speed of a speedboat. It should take weeks to sail, but it is abruptly compressed into a few days. The calm belt was even less of a problem for the fishmen. They were good at underwater to begin with. Tiger and Jinbi jumped into the water and released their hockey. The sea kings that just emerged moved collectively. Even a few sea kings that were relatively slow were instantly dismembered by the ferocious fishmen and turned into their food reserves. Because the fishman was so powerful, after only a few days of sailing, they arrived at the white island, Baltigo. Yazai, this should be the, Baltigo, you mentioned. Do you know where the, Revolutionary Army, is located? After the fishmen stopped the ship, they landed on the island. Tiger looked at the yellow sand and the barren ground, he couldn't find anything that looked like a building. Yizai looked at the desert-like island with a dumbfounded look on his face. Yes, he knew that the base of the Revolutionary Army was in the so-called Bartigo, but he didn't know the specific location. Brother Tiger, you think too highly of me. If I knew so clearly, the Marine would have found the Revolutionary Army long ago. Yazai also spread his hands and said that he didn't know the specific location, but he could always find some traces on the island. How did you find this place, tell us your purpose, otherwise, we will expel you. A person whose hair, clothes, and entire body were divided into two colors, yellow and white, suddenly appeared in front of Yizai and the others. Yizai knew the person, his name should be Inazuma, a cadre of the Revolutionary Army, he was also a character in the original work. Later, he would enter the big prison and become a level 5 prisoner, he also helped a lot when Luffy made a big trouble in the Summit War. At this time, Inazuma appeared here to warn Yazai and others and to figure out their purpose. In fact, as early as Yazai and others approached the Baltigo, the Revolutionary Army found them. After all, it was the headquarters of the Revolutionary Army, it was impossible to have no surveillance means. They originally wanted to stop Tiger's ship from approaching the Bartigo. But when he saw the flag of the Sun Pirates, Dragon stopped this action and chose to send Inazuma to contact them. If it was any other pirate group, they would have sunk it. After all, the secret of Baltigo is more important. But the Sun Pirates were different, this pirate group was established not long ago. And the cause was also the San Mariehua incident that caused a stir some time ago. The enemy of the Revolutionary Army was originally the world government, and Tenryubito was the head of the world government. You are listening to this audiobook on web novel audiobooks Tkthigud. Tiger and Yazai's previous actions of making a big scene in Mariehua and holding Tenryubito hostage were undoubtedly against Tenryubito. From this point of view, Dragon judged that Tiger and Yazai were their allies, so they didn't sink their ship. Of course, just being enemies with the Celestial Dragons was not enough to make Dragon completely trust them, so he sent in Azuma to figure out the purpose of Yizai's visit. You should be a member of the Revolutionary Army, right? So isn't it obvious why we are here? Yizai's words caused Inazuma's pupils to shrink. Even the wine glass in his hand was almost crushed by him. The revolutionary army soldiers behind him also raised the guns in their hands and aimed at Yizai's group. Inazuma had never said that he was a member of the revolutionary army, but the other party had bluntly revealed their identity. They knew that they were from the revolutionary army and had directly come to this island. It was obvious that their intentions were not simple. Seeing Inazuma's expression, Yizai also knew that he was anxious. That's right, the Revolutionary Army has always been operating in secret, not to mention their base, Baltigo. How am I going to explain that I know this place? Don't be nervous, we didn't come with malice. If we really had ulterior motives, we would have brought the Marines directly. We just want to join the Revolutionary Army. Looking at the two sides, Yizai quickly expressed his intentions. Now he could only try to make Inazuma relax her vigilance. Want to join the Revolutionary Army? Do you know the purpose of our Revolutionary Army? Inazuma wanted to continue to ask Yazai, but at this time another male voice joined the conversation between them. Then a gust of wind blew, and a man in a green cloak with a tattoo on his face suddenly appeared in front of Yazai. This man is the leader of the Revolutionary Army, Monkey D. Dragon, 
who is defined as the most vicious criminal by the world government. The sudden appearance of Dragon made Tiger and Jinbi feel a burst of pressure. Because they just couldn't feel how the other party got close to here. In other words, their large group of people may not be the opponent of the former Marine Headquarters Vice Admiral. Yazai's situation is not much better. Dragon's strength has always been a secret. Even in the original work, they have hardly seen him fight. But the one who just came out to challenge the world government is at least a Yonko, for Emperor's, level. You want to overthrow the rule of the world government and change this corrupt world. Our enemies are the Tenryubito and the Marine, and the Fishman friend also needs a place to live, so our ideas are not conflicting. Because Tiger and Jinbi belong to the type of people who are stupid, almost all the negotiations with Dragon are carried out by Yazai. But why should I believe you, just because you made a big scene in Mariehua? If this is a good show you deliberately put on with the Tenryubito, then aren't we inviting the wolf into the house? Although the revolutionary army is still in the embryonic stage, and it is indeed in urgent need of new blood, but this does not mean that Dragon will relax his vigilance. If we are really with the Tenryubito, I am afraid that we will not be the only ones who came here today. Dragon leader, do you think that the current, revolutionary army, can resist the attack of the Marine headquarters? Yazai's face is full of confidence. Although he was an otaku in his previous life, as an excellent successor under the red flag, and with the conditions of profit, he can gain a greater advantage in negotiations. Moreover, the most daring existence to challenge the world government, if you don't even have the courage to accept the allies who want to join, it is too small. Monkey D, Dragon Leader, do you think what I said makes sense? When he said that the revolutionary army was small, Yazai clearly saw that Dragon just looked at him and his eyes became a lot sharper. However, since the words had already been spoken, Yazai had no choice but to bite the bullet and continue to speak. And when he finished, Yazai also made a face. Did I say something wrong? If you don't like it, come at me head on. His expression made the group of fishmen, fans behind him instantly revere Yi Zai like a torrential river. Fishman, Boss Yi Zai is a real man, look at the guy with the tattoo on his face, he is too scared to speak. Tiger, Brother Yi Zai is too straightforward, we can't do this person. One Jinbi, when the fight starts, should I protect Tiger Boss and leave, or should I help Yi Zai? In fact, not only the fishman thought a lot, but Yi Zai himself was also in a panic. After all, anime is anime and reality is reality. It's really hard to say whether Dragon will do something to them. But what made Yi Zai happy was that Dragon's character was similar to the original work and he didn't choose to do anything to them. Thinking about it, they came to join the Revolutionary Army. If they were killed, who would dare to come in the future? How could their Revolutionary Army grow? Tiger and the other fishmen joined the Revolutionary Army to fight for a foothold in the world in the future. Then, Imperial Wind Sword Hero, Yazai, tell me, why do you want to join the Revolutionary Army? You can say those words just now, you shouldn't be an ordinary kid. Dragon didn't want to refuse Tiger and the others. After all, he was also a Marine Vice Admiral, and he knew the Celestial Dragons too well. It was harder to make the world nobles lose face and play such a good show with Tiger than to kill them. And he also received news before that Tiger and the others were plotted against by the Marine not long ago, and Tiger even almost died. If it was a show to the world, it would be troublesome, so Tiger's identity was not a problem. What surprised the dragon was that the little brat was actually able to choke him to the point that he could not even speak. Before, he thought that Yi Zai could get such a high bounty because he held the celestial dragons hostage. But now it seems that it's not just that. This kid named Yi Zai has a mind beyond his age, at least Dragon can't see through him yet. However, Dragon was not too surprised. After all, there are devil fruits in this sea, and their abilities are also strange. It's estimated that there are abilities that can make the user age backward or keep the user young. Dragon is more concerned about Yi Zai's purpose. The desireless Dragon would not believe him. Moreover, Yi Zai did not look like an honest fisherman. The reason why I want to join the Revolutionary Army is very simple, because I think what you are doing is right, that's all. Yizai really didn't have any other thoughts. However, because of his usual black bellied behavior and his thoughts that were beyond his age, it couldn't be helped that others were suspicious. 
but it was really just to complete the system mission. Compared to being a pirate with low safety, Yazai chose the more promising, revolutionary army. It's fine if you don't want to say it, but I promise to let you join the revolutionary army. I will also let you see that the revolutionary army has such magnanimity. I believe that one day, you will be convinced by us and tell me your true purpose. Dragon laughed maniacally as he looked at Yizai. Clearly, he did not think that Yizai was telling the truth. However, he didn't care. If they didn't dare to accept even one person, then how could they talk about becoming enemies with the world? Of course, although he did not know Yazai's purpose, Dragon was basically sure that Yazai was not in cahoots with the world government. Otherwise, he would not have accepted him. Ding! Mission 1, Choosing a Faction has been completed. The reward has been issued. The host has completed three world missions. You can choose to return to the main world or stay in this plane temporarily. The longest time you can stay in this plane is one month. If you exceed this time, you will have to pay one hero equals one day. Just as Dragon agreed to let Yazai join the revolutionary army, the system also popped up a mission completed message. Naturally, Yazai did not choose to go back immediately. Instead, he chose to stay for the time being. If he suddenly went back and ran to this plane in the future, he would not be able to explain it clearly. He did not want to leave behind a bunch of trouble. In general, although Dragon did not completely trust him, he still accepted him. His mission could be considered to have been completed without any mishaps. After Tiger joined the Revolutionary Army, he was suddenly promoted to a cadre. He was mainly in charge of the fishmen under him. For him, there was almost no change. Although Yazai was not completely trusted, he still received the position of a captain. After Tiger, Yazai, and a large group of people settled down, Yazai was called over by Dragon for questioning. The main thing was to ask where Yazai found out about the existence of Baltigo, and how he knew that this was the nest of the Revolutionary Army. Dragon had just asked Tiger and the others about it. It was Yazai who told them. The fishmen thought that this was a public matter, so they betrayed Yazai without any psychological pressure. Yazai also knew that he could not fool them just now. He still had to be asked what should be asked. If he wanted to blame someone, he could only blame himself for not thinking about it before. I once wandered to a small island in the East Sea. There was a swordsmanship dojo on the island. The dojo owner was called Koshiro. He once suggested that I join the Revolutionary Army. Yazai had no choice but to casually report a person who might have a close relationship with the Revolutionary Army. As for what would happen in the future, Yazai could not care about it now. He could only use time to gain Dragon's trust. As for the name, Koshiro, that Yazai reported, some people might not remember it at the moment. This person was actually Zoro's teacher, the father of Zoro's little Kuina, and the former owner of the Wado Ikamanji. This person definitely had something to do with the Revolutionary Army. Although he might not be a member of the Revolutionary Army, he had contacts with them. Moreover, this Koshiro was not a simple person at all. He could teach Zoro and Kuina, who was better than Zoro. He even had one of the Great Swords. Coupled with his face that looked like one of the Five Elder Stars, it was obvious that his identity was not simple. Of course, these were all guesses. After all, even One Piece's fans, who was very powerful in his previous life, could not figure it out, let alone Yazai. However, after hearing the name, Koshiro, from Yazai's mouth, Dragon did not continue to ask him. Instead, he asked him to go back and rest. Although it might be exposed in the future, who would care? At that time, Yazai would be on vacation in some corner, or he would be so strong that he did not need to care about the other party's attitude at all. A few days later, Yazai was sailing on the sea alone in a boat. At this time, he was sunbathing comfortably. This time, he took the initiative to apply for a mission. This time, Yazai's mission target was the Windmill Village in the East Sea. That's right, it was the place where Luffy was born. Dragon sent him to visit his son and collect the latest information on the sea. Yazai was very suspicious. Collecting information was true, but visiting his son was just a matter of convenience. However, this was just right. Yazai was looking for a time to leave Dragon's sight, and this mission was just right for him. 
As for why he wanted to leave their sight, the reason was very simple. It was because his one-month stay was almost over, and he was going to return to the one-punch world. Another wave of dizziness hit him, and when he woke up again, he had returned to the one-punch world. Familiar smell, familiar ceiling, he really returned to the one-punch world, and the place where he came back was the same as before. At present, Saitama was not at home, so he quickly got up and looked at his changes. Looking at the mirror, his face was almost the same as before, and he couldn't help but breathe a big sigh of relief. Fortunately, he still had his adult face, and not his Shota face in the One Piece world. If his Shota face in the One Piece world appeared in the One Punch world, then what was the difference between him and Tatsumaki? At least Loli was light, flexible, easy to push down, and more or less can do big things. But if he were to turn into a Shota, how would he be able to pick up girls? Even if he had a handsome face, he wouldn't be able to do it. Ding, the host has returned to the main world, and all the rewards have been sent. When Yi's eye was glad that his body didn't change much, he received a message from the system. This time, the reward for completing the task in the One Piece world was in his account. Task 1, join the faction, reward, a random card. Because the difficulty of this task was the lowest, the reward was not ideal. If it wasn't for Yazai choosing the more stable, revolutionary army, he would have been able to complete this mission by raising the flag of One Piece himself. Task 2, assist Tiger to free the slaves, reward, 100 hero points. Mission 3, support Tiger and make sure he survives, reward, 1 designated card draw and 1 random card draw. 2 random cards, 1 designated card, and 100 hero points, this was the harvest of Yizai's trip. Although the reward sounded small at first, it was mainly because the difficulty of the task was not high. Although Yizai's journey as a pirate was thrilling, there were almost no strong enemies. In addition to the Marine Headquarters Rear Admiral Strawberry, who is strong, Yizai didn't even fight with a strong person. And Strawberry, although he was a Marine Rear Admiral, as a character who didn't even have the qualification to appear in the original work, at most, he was a cannon fodder character in the later stage. But Yi Zai was not dissatisfied, he was already very satisfied with these rewards. In the One Punch world, he followed Saitama everywhere. That time, Vaccine Man even broke all the bones in his body. After several years of continuous farming, he had only gotten a dozen or so chances to draw random cards. However, because he was really unlucky, or maybe it was because he was slacking, he only got a handful of decent items from these draws. This time, not only did Yi Zai get designated draw, but he also got hero points. He was already quite satisfied. Looks like it's not necessarily a bad thing if I don't end up in an extremely dangerous world every time I transmigrate. Since Saitama wasn't home, Yi Zai decided to take all the loot from this trip. As usual, he had to take a bath and change his clothes. Then, he took out the card Yasuo and inhaled some European air to try to sneak in again. Yi Zai entered the system space. As usual, it was randomly selected first. The handbag was very important. If he was going to sell it, he would stop immediately. This was because Yi Zai firmly believed that everyone's luck was limited every day. Once today's portion was used up, it would be impossible to sell any more. For the first time, Yi Zai lifted a huge card. Just by looking at the picture on the card, he knew that he was probably going to lose this time. This was an equipment card. The card picture was also very simple. It was just a small pile of bandages. Urza's chest wrap, from the fairy's tale, introduction, fairy queen Urza used a certain outfit changing spell to use a chest wrap. Because of her clean and simple attire, it can make her body more agile. Effect, increase overall movement speed and attack speed by 5, PS, don't feel inferior because of your small chest. Wrap the belt, everyone is the same. The effect was very powerful, but Yi Zai didn't want to use it at all. And what the hell was the PS at the end? Was it mocking him? Was he trying to make him a crossdresser? What kind of cute boy was he? Did he have a chest to wrap around? Don't F asterisk king feel inferior because of your small breasts. Find me a man with big breasts to take a look. Yi Zai also tried to take advantage of the loophole and wrap the chest wrap around his arm. This way, he would look cool and his attributes would be increased. Why not? 
but he was too naive. Equipment seemed to only enjoy the buff effect when it was equipped in a designated position. However, for the sake of these attributes, it was impossible for him to abandon his dignity as a man. There might be a really fragrant plot in the later stages. In short, the first round was very depressing. At least, that was what Yi Zai thought. Although this, chest wrap, could be considered a small top grade item just by looking at its attributes. But its appearance. Yi Zai expressed that he couldn't accept it. If it was another item that had the same function, Yi Zai would have decisively stopped. But now, Yi Zai felt that he had to do it just now, so he chose to continue. The second time he drew a card, Yi Zai nervously opened the cover card. This time, it was a character summon card. Moreover, this character happened to have the ability that Yi Zai dreamed of. The card picture was of a small man wearing a green, Chinese, training suit. His face was a little pale, and he was floating in the sky. Character Summon Card, Kaiatsu, from the Dragon Ball, Introduction, like Tian Shinhan, he is a disciple of Master Crane. He is good at iron head technique and has a superpower. He can use psychokinesis to control items. P.S. I am not bald. I still have a strand of hair. I really am possessed by a European emperor. I really got something. When Yizai saw the Kaiatsu card, he was instantly overjoyed. Although this Kaiatsu card wasn't as strong as the Gale Sword Hero card, Yizai was still quite happy. Because this card could at least raise Yizai's superpower by a few levels. It could be said that superpowers had already become Yizai's obsession. They were obviously siblings, but why was it that Tatsumaki's superpower could destroy the heavens and earth, while his superpower was so weak? But this time, he had drawn the Kaiatsu card, which could be considered as fulfilling Yizai's dream. Although the Kaiatsu card couldn't make his superpower comparable to Tatsumaki, or even Fubuki, it could increase his superpower a lot. However, it could also increase his superpower by a lot. Moreover, just like Gale Sword Hero, this card seemed to be able to rise in stars, which meant that it was not at its peak yet. Although Kaiatsu's superpower wasn't outstanding in Dragon Ball, that was because there were a bunch of freaks there. What kind of world was the Dragon Ball? It was a world where the strong were everywhere and super players were no better than dogs. Even the planets were exploding for fun. When Yizai switched to the Kaiatsu card, he clearly felt that his mind had become clearer. Moreover, his control over his superpower had also become much smoother. Just like Kaiatsu's superpower golden binding technique, Yizai felt that he could now at least suppress lower tiger tier monsters and make them unable to move. However, although the improvement of his superpower was delightful, there was one thing that made Yizai worried. That was the card slot problem. What was Yizai's character information like? Name, Yizai level, zero star hero, upgradable, character card slot, Kaiatsu skill card slot, air dance technique equipment card slot, none hero points, 100, universal currency used to upgrade heroes or for other subsequent functions. This was Yizai's current character information. That's right, if one looked carefully, they would realize that because he had equipped the Kaiatsu card, the Gale Sword Hero card had been taken off. In other words, although Yizai's superpower had improved because of the Kaiatsu card, he had lost the Imperial Wind Swordsmanship because the Gale Sword Hero had been taken off. Yizai's status had also changed from a sword expert to a superpower expert. Obviously, he couldn't have choose both. As for the reason, it was very simple. It was because he didn't have enough card slots. Yizai looked at the Kaiatsu card in his equipment and the Gale Sword Hero card in his hand and instantly felt conflicted. To be fair, equipping the Gale Sword Hero increased his strength even more. This was because other than the Imperial Wind Swordsmanship, the Gale Sword Hero also enhanced his five senses and physical fitness. These weren't things that the Kaiatsu card could compare to. However, Yizai was obsessed with superpowers. In his opinion, both of his sisters were mage players, so what was the point of him playing as a warrior? Because he couldn't equip two cards at the same time, Yizai had the Imperial Wind Swordsmanship and superpowers at the same time. Yizai's initial surprise had been mostly washed away. However, after hesitating for a moment, he began studying the system's functions again. 
Since the number of card slots existed, it meant that this thing could be increased. As for how to increase it, Yi Zai discovered that there was an additional word, upgradable, behind his original level, zero point hero. Moreover, the function of the hero points that had been empty all this time was now displayed. Yi Zai did not know what the follow up function was, but now it clearly indicated that Yi Zai could be used for hero upgrade. As for whether this hero upgrade was used to upgrade Yazai himself or those character cards, this low level system did not say anything. However, Yizai noticed that behind cards such as Gale Sword Hero and Kaiatsu, there were no upgradable words. This meant that either hero points couldn't be used to upgrade character summon card or the conditions hadn't been met yet. The only thing that could level up now was Yizai's own hero level. After considering for a moment, Yizai decided to give it a try. After all, no matter what the function was, he had to try it out. Rather than letting these 100 points gather dust in the corner, it was better to use them to search for more possibilities. Yi Zai directly chose the option behind his zero point hero and chose upgrade. Ding! It has been detected that the host has completed three plane missions and has met the upgrade requirements. Do you wish to consume 100 hero points to upgrade your level? After Yi Zai chose to upgrade, the system popped up such an information box. It also let him roughly know that in order to upgrade his hero level, other than the need for hero points, there were actually other conditions. This time, the conditions for his hero level upgrade were 3, plane missions, and 100 hero points. What about the next time? Would it be a, plane mission? Or would it simply be 10? Or something else? Moreover, the, hero points required for this upgrade were 100 points. Then, it wouldn't be another 100 points next time, right? As the hero points were instantly reset to zero, Yi Zai's character information also changed. First of all, the original zero point hero had now become one star hero. Yi Zai could also feel that as his hero level increased, his physical fitness seemed to have increased as well, although the extent was not considered great. Moreover, what made Yi Zai even more ecstatic was that his card slots had actually increased. The original, character summon card, skill card, and, equipment card, actually had one more slot each. This meant that he did not need to make a choice between the, Gale Sword Hero, and, Kaiatsu, cards. He could completely play the, dual cultivation of magic and martial arts method. Moreover, other than the increase in the, character summon card, card slots, there were also more slots for the, skill card, and, equipment card. Although he did not have any extra, skill card, or, equipment card, now, he could not rule out that he would not have any in the future. It could be said that the leap from zero-point hero to one-star hero was simply the rhythm of changing from a shotgun to a cannon for Yi Zai. One plus one did not necessarily equate to two. It could be equal to three or even four. The abilities of a character summon card were varied. Sometimes, the combination of some cards could even exceed the advantage of quantity. Think about it, what would happen if some character summon cards with powerful strength but weak physical abilities were combined with some character summon cards with regeneration abilities? Also, what would happen if some character summon cards with forbidden spell level magic were combined with some character summon cards with enough mana? There were too many examples. Just thinking about it made Yi tremble with excitement. Right now, he could only equip two character summon cards, but what about in the future? Would he have three? When he had four? Perhaps there would be a day when he could really fight with Saitama. After leveling up to one star hero, Yi Zai could not wait to know what was needed to level up to two star hero. Yi Zai did not know if a two star hero could unlock more functions, but just the additional card slot was enough to make Yi Zai excited. Previously, when he was a zero point hero, Yi Zai, who was equipped with the Gale Sword Hero, roughly had the strength of an upper tiger tier. Now that he was equipped with both the Gale Sword Hero and Dumplings cards, Yi Zai almost had the strength of a peak tiger tier. Yes, he had directly surpassed the upper tiger tier and had the strength of a peak tiger tier. If he filled up the skill card and equipment card, card slots, Yi Zai's strength could even reach the low demon tier. Don't underestimate the strength of this low-level demon level. 
In the world of One Punch, even monsters with dragon level strength were everywhere. However, when it came to dragon level strength, it was already considered the top of this planet. As for the legendary god level strength, it had not appeared so far. Even when Boros appeared later, although it was defined as a god level disaster, its strength seemed to be only at the level of peak dragon level. Even in the Monster Association, dragon level strength could be regarded as the existence of a cadre. The strength of a low-level demon might not be a big deal among the monsters, but it was already considered one of the best among humans. The strength of a low-level demon might not be enough compared to an S-level hero, but it should be more than enough to be an A-level hero. After killing a large number of A-level heroes, Genos, one of the S-level heroes, and the sexy prisoner, king of the deep sea, his strength was only at the peak of the demon level. In summary, as long as one had the strength of mid-upper demon, one could reach the last bus of an S-level hero. After using up two random draw card chances and using 100 hero points to upgrade his hero level, Yi Zai only had one designated draw card chance left. Yi Zai planned to draw all of them. After all, he could specify which type of card he wanted to draw. It was just that he could not decide the grade of the card he would draw. As expected, it still depended on his luck. For the designated draw card chance, Yi Zai first specified two types of skill card or item card. This was because he had just fumbled around. If he wanted to upgrade to a two star hero, he needed one, zero, zero, zero hero points and other things. He had risked his life and only managed to get 100 hero points this time. It was obvious that he would not be able to achieve 1, 0, 0, 0 points in a short period of time. Originally, using the designated draw to draw the rarest character summon card was the most cost effective. However, even if he had other character summon cards, now, Yi Zai did not have any card slots to equip currently, Yi Zai only had one empty card slot. He only had one skill slot and two equipment slots. What Yi Zai should do now was to increase his strength as soon as possible because he didn't know where the next world would be. Whether or not he could live peacefully would depend on his own strength. After thinking for a while, Yi Zai decided to draw the item card. In all fairness, the skill card might be more practical than the item card. After all, they could grow together. On the contrary, item cards were full of uncertainty. Sometimes they would be heaven-defying items, and sometimes they would be of little value. According to Yazai's past experience, the probability of trash appearing was at least 70 to 80 percent. Since the item card was such a scam, why would Yazai choose the item card? It was entirely because when he used designated draw just now, he discovered that among the options of item card, there were options such as weapon type, prop type, and defensive type. It was also because of this reason that Yi Zai finally decided to choose the item card for the designated draw. Although the skill card was not bad, there were some useless skills sometimes. For example, Yi Zai had once drawn Satan's martial arts. The Satan here wasn't the great existence of hell, but the Satan of the Dragon Ball world, which was the world champion idiot. Did Yi Zai need to equip Satan's martial arts skills? Even with his current level, he was still hundreds of streets ahead of Satan, okay? Therefore, instead of drawing the skill card, that was full of uncertainty, Yi Zai finally decided to draw what he needed the most at the moment. The item card that Yi Zai chose was the weapon type. This was because the alloy sword that Fubuki had made for him was taken away by two slave traders when he brought it to the One Piece world. Yi Zai was so embarrassed that he didn't even have a suitable weapon at the moment. Most of his strength came from the Gale Sword Hero. Without a suitable weapon, his strength would drop greatly. After using Designated Draw to select the weapon type option, another card appeared in the air. However, it was different this time. This card had already been erected and wasn't in a state of being covered. The card on the card was also a shadow like weapon. Before Yi Zai could react to the situation, the image on the card began to change rapidly. It was like a revolving lantern that kept changing the card. At first, Yi Zai's expression was still calm, but after a while, he couldn't remain calm anymore. Even an idiot could tell that the system was drawing cards from the weapon category. However, when Yi Zai saw weapons like axe, bow, or sickle flashing on the card from time to time, he couldn't remain calm anymore. 
That's right, although the item card could be designated as a weapon type who said that there were only swords and sabers. It was true that swords and sabers accounted for the most weapons in the world, but there were also quite a number of other weapon types added up. It was still a low-level system. This time, he was going to be screwed. Look at other people's systems. They were as smart as they could be. From time to time, they would even give warm reminders to the host. This counterfeit system of his, other than issuing missions, didn't say a single thing. Even the system's functions had to be explored by himself, let alone be able to remind Yi Zai. Now, Yi Zai could only pray that he was lucky enough to draw a weapon that was suitable for him. Yi Zai closed his eyes tightly and prayed to all the goddesses who used swords and sabers in dramas in the past to give him a good weapon. Don't ask why he didn't pray to men. It was because men were all big pig trotters. They were ruthless existences. Did he still expect them to give him a big sword? The image on the card changed slower and slower. Finally, it slowly stopped under Yi Zai's uneasy mood. Yi Zai also felt uneasy as he looked at the card that had stopped. Look at this outline. It's definitely a long saber. As long as it's a saber or sword, it's fine. Even if its attributes are trash, I'll have asterisk king endure it. However, when Yi Zai's hand came into contact with the card, he finally obtained the card's information. What made Yi Zai ecstatic was that it was different from what he had imagined. This saber wasn't trash at all. In Yi Zai's opinion, he didn't even need to change weapons for a long time. Item card, Demon Sword, Mura Mesa, from One Piece World, 21 Great Swords, Introduction, An Unknown Demon Sword. Without, Sword Master, or above, it is easy to lose your mind with this sword. Effect, when the enemy is injured, the wound will be cursed, and the healing speed will be slowed down. P.S., it will give you a wound that can't be healed. Great Sword. One of the only 21 famous swords in One Piece World. Although there was a more advanced, great sword, above it, Yazai didn't dare to ask for it. There were only twelve swords in the whole, One Piece world, and maybe all of them already had owners. And Yazai might not return to the, One Piece world, in the future, and it would be bad if he stole someone's sword. But speaking of which, before going to the, One Piece world, he remembered that he had drawn, Luffy's straw hat. He didn't know if this thing was unique or not. If it was, he felt that he should get rid of it the next time he went to the One Piece world. As soon as the demon sword Mura Mesa was in his hand, Yazai felt an ominous aura. However, Wind Sword Master, Yasuo, was an expert in using swords. Yazai only felt a short discomfort, and then he was suppressed. The Kayatsu card increased his superpower, and with this demon sword Mura Mesa, Yazai's strength barely rose to the demon level. After sorting out all the gains, Yazai's mind exited the system space. Not long after, there was a sound coming from the entrance. Obviously, the bald-headed demon king Saitama was back, but Saitama obviously didn't notice that Yazai was back, and he was still muttering. When the bald-headed man entered the room with a lot of discounted goods, he saw Yazai who had been missing for a week. Yazai, where have you been these days? Really, if you are going somewhere far, you should at least say hello. Saitama looked at Yazai who was sitting in the room, and his expression was a bit unnatural. Although Saitama said that he was concerned, Yazai had known Saitama for a long time, and he knew that the bald-headed man must have something to hide from him. And it happened during the week when he was missing. As for what it was, Yazai still needed to find out. Seriously, I didn't even know you were back today. I'll go to the supermarket to buy some meat. Let's have hot pot tonight to celebrate your return. At first, Yizai only suspected that Baldi was hiding something from him. Then, Saitama's next sentence was practically a hammer to the hammer. The stingy Baldi actually wanted to go to the supermarket to buy meat, and the reason was to celebrate his return. Yizai was now fairly certain that Baldi was hiding something from him, and there was a 99% chance that it was something that had let him down. If that wasn't the case, Baldi Saitama wouldn't have taken the initiative. Freeloading food and drinks was his main theme. Treating others to a meal was an impossible dream. Tell me, what did you do behind my back to let me down? Since I'm in a good mood now, I might be merciful enough to forgive you. Yazai walked to Saitama's side and hooked his arm around his shoulder, giving him a look that said, you know what I mean. However, Baldi obviously didn't buy it. 
he looked at the ceiling and didn't let his gaze meet his eyes. What a joke. If he confessed, he would be lenient. If he resisted, he would be punished severely. How could Saatama not understand the logic of going home for the new year? If Yazai were to find out about this, Saatama felt that his head would be split open at any moment. Looking at Saatama who refused to budge, Yazai had no choice but to play a few rounds of games to relax. Although only a week had passed in this world, Yazai had been in the One Piece world for several months. He had long missed himself and the game that he had always been thinking about. He remembered that before he left, he had stingily saved up his money to buy the latest game. Even before he could enjoy it, he was directly thrown into the One Piece world by the system. Tonight, he wasn't going to sleep. Instead, he was going to clear the stage with cultivation. After all, his gaming nerd personality from his previous life was still affecting him. But when he opened the cabinet that contained his games, a bad feeling welled up in his heart. Looking at Saitama who was trying to sneak out of the room, Yazai suddenly had a bad premonition. Ah! Oh. A scream comparable to the lion's roar instantly resounded throughout the entire apartment building. If it weren't for the fact that Z-City had been attacked by monsters all year round, there would be almost no tenants here. That scream just now would definitely cause Yi-Z to be complained about a few hundred times. Saitama, you bastard. Where have you taken all my treasures? That's right. Yi-Zai had originally filled up a grid of games, but now, they had all disappeared without a trace. That was his lifeblood. Yi-Zai had even labeled those games and covered them with a membrane to prevent them from being damaged. But now, all of them were gone. There was no need to think about who the culprit was. Even if Yi-Zai used his but to think, he knew that this matter was definitely related to Big Baldi. Yi-Zai, calm down. Maybe you were robbed. You know, there have been reports on the news recently that thieves are quite rampant recently. They even went to the supermarket to steal a lot of high-grade meat. I think your game might have been stolen by this guy as well. After all, there are all kinds of people in this day and age. When Baldi saw the report on TV, he tried to make a last-ditch effort. Although Yi Zai's games were indeed sold to the second-hand shop by him, how could he say that? As for why he sold Yi Zai's games, the reason was even simpler. After Yi Zai left, the last bit of money was taken away by him. Baldi Saitama couldn't even afford the discounted bean sprouts in the supermarket. After a few more days of not having a proper meal, Saitama finally extended his evil claws to Yi Zai's treasures. In fact, Saitama also liked to play games. He was a little reluctant to sell these games. But compared with the important matter of filling his stomach, Saitama decisively made a choice. He decisively chose to sacrifice his spiritual food to satisfy his appetite. Yi Zai looked at the TV that Saitama was pointing at furiously. It was indeed reporting about the theft. Because of the monster's attack, the person in charge of the supermarket went to take refuge. But when he returned, he found that a large number of high-grade meat products had been stolen. Because the monster was wreaking havoc at that time, there were no witnesses. But the surveillance camera clearly captured the back of the head of the criminal. Originally, this matter had been going on for some time, but the supermarket owner had been looking for it to no avail. In the end, he decided to put a bounty on the hateful thief on TV. And Yi Zai saw that the photo attached next to the host was the back of the bald head that he was extremely familiar with. Looking at the shiny bald head on the TV, not only was Yi Zai stunned, Saitama was also dumbfounded. He and Yi Zai had clearly taken the meat together. Why was he the only one blacklisted? Although only the back of the head was shown in the photo, Saitama was still quite dissatisfied. However, it wasn't that Saitama was dissatisfied with being blacklisted by the supermarket. He was just unhappy. Yazai had eaten as much meat as he did, but why was he the only one to take the blame? Fortunately, the supermarket that had recently suffered heavy losses didn't have a discount, so Saitama didn't patronize it. Otherwise, with the back of his head, Saitama would have been caught red-handed. However, these things weren't important. What Saitama was worried about now was how to deal with Yazai. He was really unlucky. He had casually blamed a thief on the TV, but it turned out to be him. What do you have to say now, Saitama? You admitted that my collection was stolen by this baldy. 
Then, should we discuss which direction we should cut open this Baldi's head from? That will make the brain juice splatter even more brilliantly. Yazai took out a huge hammer from nowhere and stared at Saitama's shiny bald head, as if he was looking for a place to strike. Yazai, calm down. You've really turned evil. This isn't your character at all. Even though Saitama was stronger than Yazai, for some reason, Yazai's expression was as terrifying as it could be. Yazai, wait a minute. Before Saitama could beg for mercy, Yazai had already struck with the hammer. Clang! The hammer came into close contact with Saitama's bald head, making a loud noise. However, the result was disappointing to Yazai. The scene of brains splattering everywhere didn't happen as Yazai had imagined. There wasn't even a bump on the baldi's head. Instead, the handle of the hammer broke directly into two, and the hammer bounced back and embedded itself in the ceiling. Saitama was still trying to stop him. When he saw the hammer being knocked away, he blinked in confusion. Was he bitten by a mosquito? Why didn't he feel anything at all? After a brief moment of shock, Yi Zai was unable to restrain his anger and punched out. His target was the bald man's mocking face. Kacha. A voice that was even clearer than before rang out from Yi Zai's hand. Then, Yi Zai's entire arm drooped powerlessly as if it had lost its bones. That's right, Yi Zai's all out punch just now had caused Saitama to be completely fine but Yazai's bones were broken instead. That punch just now didn't seem to have landed on flesh, but on a diamond. Saitama also felt that he had gone a little overboard, so he planned to let Yazai punch him a few times to vent his anger. However, the result was obvious. He was fine, but Yazai was seriously injured. Seeing the bald man pick his nose in a daze, Yazai almost couldn't hold back again. He wanted to take out the demon blade Muramesa he had just obtained and cut a few holes in the bald man's body. However, he was also worried that the famous blade he had obtained with great difficulty would be cut into pieces because of this. In the end, he could only swallow his anger. At the same time, Yazai also understood why the weirdos felt that Saitama deserved a beating when they saw his face. Yazai had clearly used his full strength, but the baldi's blank face was the most silent humiliation to his opponent. At this moment, Yazai was even more determined to become stronger. He even wanted to go to the Dragon Ball world to train and come back to rub the baldi on the ground. Yazai's desire to become stronger was not because he wanted to save the world, but because he wanted to teach a certain arrogant baldi a lesson. It was a farce. Yazai couldn't do anything to Saitama. In the end, the farce disappeared. Yazai ate all the food by himself. Saitama looked at him pitifully as he ate and ended the dinner with an empty stomach. Since he couldn't do anything to Saitama with his strength, Yazai could only punish him in other ways to vent his dissatisfaction. On the first night after returning to the origin world, Yazai slept peacefully. If it wasn't for the dazzling sunlight, Yazai wouldn't have known that he was sleeping outdoors. Did he transmigrate again? Why was the cooldown time so short this time? Yazai opened his eyes in a daze. This time, he was hanging from an antenna on the side of the road. Yazai looked around, trying to figure out which time he had transmigrated to. However, he found his surroundings familiar. Isn't this the road outside our dormitory? In other words, I'm still in the one-punch world. Then, how did I get outside? Yazai looked at the familiar road. He had lived nearby for a few years, so he couldn't be mistaken. Looking at the opposite floor, Yi Zai immediately understood what was going on. That bastard Saitama was sleepwalking again. Furthermore, he had thrown him out of the room like he was a piece of trash. Yi Zai had just returned from the One Piece world. He was physically and mentally exhausted. He slept so soundly last night that he didn't even wake up when Saitama threw him out. In other words, I slept on the antenna all night and was exposed to the cold wind all night. Yazai felt that he had another bad debt with Saitama. Just as he was about to go back and settle it with him, there was a sudden movement on the ground. A strange man who was all black with purple stripes on his body and holding four big swords emerged from the ground. Ding! Mission 1, Eliminate 5 Underground Monsters. Reward, 1 Random Card Draw. Ding! Mission 2, Assist Others to Defeat the Underground King. Reward, 2 random card draw. Ding. Mission 3, 
defeat the underground king alone. Reward, one random card draw and two random card draw. As the underground king appeared on the road with a group of minions, Yazai, who was hanging from the antenna pole, also received the mission issued by the system. It was the same as before. Although the reward for the third mission was rich, it was the kind of difficulty that could be seen but not eaten. Yazai vaguely remembered that the underground king was in existence on par with the Sky King and the Deep Sea King. He wasn't the underground people that Saitama dreamed of in the original work. The underground king after waking up from the dream was the real deal. Although he didn't have the terrifying dragon level, strength like the Tavaxin man and the biceps giant. However, to be on par with the deep sea king, who had defeated several S-level heroes, he should be at the peak of the demon level. Yazai's strength had barely reached the weakest demon level. It was almost impossible for him to kill the underground king alone. I, the underground king, have finally come to the surface world. This time, I must conquer the entire surface world and then further invade the sky and sea. Although Yazai didn't want to fight with the underground king, he had no choice in the current situation. Because even if it was the first mission, he needed to kill five of the other party's underlings, so he could only bite the bullet. However, he already had the strength of a demon level, now. Even if it was the weakest demon level, even if the underground king's strength had reached the peak of the demon level, he wouldn't be able to kill him instantly. Moreover, Saitama was sleeping upstairs. Even if he couldn't win, it shouldn't be a problem for him to escape. After considering his own strength and devising a perfect escape route, Yazai felt that he could take a gamble this time. The sky dance technique allowed Yazai's body to float, and he slowly descended from the antenna pole. Of course, Yazai's appearance instantly attracted the attention of the underground king and his underlings. It wasn't because Yazai was too handsome, nor was it because his appearance was flashy enough. It was because City Z was a ghost district, and there wasn't even a dog on this street. It was hard for Yazai's sudden appearance not to attract attention. Oh, I'm about to see a pitiful guy appear. Is it one of those so-called heroes? The underground king saw Yazai floating down from the telephone pole and didn't have any intention of taking him seriously. In the underground king's eyes, how strong could an idiot who stood on a telephone pole be? He was probably just a third-rate hero. However, this didn't matter, even if he was a weakling. But using him as a sacrifice for the first step of his invasion of the surface world, using this hero's life to announce to the surface world that he, the underground king, had descended. Yazai didn't know what the underground king was thinking, otherwise, he would definitely spit in his face. Someone who came down from a street lamp was a weakling. Just like a certain street lamp king from Planet of the Shaped Moon, he was cool and powerful. I actually don't have any idea WTF is he talking about, the word weakling directly penetrated his entire worldview. In front of him, even the underground king was a weakling. However, Yazai was quite helpless about the misunderstanding of the underground king. Why was it that every time he appeared, he would be treated as a hero? As for Saitama, this idiot who wanted to be a hero, he was always ignored and treated as a passerby cannon fodder. Just because of Yazai's handsome face. Alright, this was indeed an era where looks mattered. No matter which world it was, spiritual food was needed. The good-looking heroes were usually more popular than those weird heroes. Unfortunately, Yizai was afraid of the two Devourer sisters. If not, he could join the Hero Association and take the opportunity to debut, making a killing. He would not have to eat discounted bean sprouts with Saitama every day. Just like, Sweetheart Mask, who was ranked first among the A-level heroes, Yizai had long disliked him. He belittled the other heroes, as if they were useless, as if he had done a lot himself. Back to the main topic, the underground king looked at Yizai's thin arms and legs, and he was wearing pajamas. He was certain that Yi Zai was definitely a pretty boy who did not have the strength to truss a chicken. Perhaps he had just finished playing with a steel ball with some rich woman and did not have the time to change his clothes before he ran over to die. Towards a character like Yi Zai, the underground king expressed that he was someone who wanted to dominate the world. He really couldn't bring himself to make a move because doing so would be an insult to a king. Yi Zai was really considering how to deal with the underground king and his underlings. He saw the underground king shake his head and signal a few of his underlings to go forward and kill the pretty boy. 
a few pitch-black subterraneans, who were much smaller than the underground king, walked out amidst the clamor of their companions. Like the underground king, they looked at Yizai with their noses in the air. They felt that there was no need for them to attack a pretty boy like him together. Yizai could now tell that this group of subterraneans thought highly of him. He was originally worried that he was no match for the underground king. With his underlings, there was no need for him to fight. Now, the underground king had called out a group of underlings to fight with him. Yi Zai was rather happy. It was good to complete the first mission. However, the underground king's behavior of looking down on him made Yi Zai rather unhappy. Since he came back yesterday, he had been full of anger. In addition, he suffered an unexpected disaster last night. He was thrown onto the street by Saitama who was sleepwalking. Now, Yi Zai just needed a punching bag to vent his anger. Therefore, the subterraneans ran out. I can't have Asterisk King beat Saitama, but can't I kill you all? The irritable Yi Zai directly took out the demon blade Muramesa from the system space and chose to fight without any nonsense. The cement road was crushed by violence. Yi Zai's body shot out like a gust of wind. The lightning-like speed even made the pupils of the underground king, who didn't pay much attention to Yi Zai, shrink. The subterraneans, who were still circling around and playing rock-paper-scissors to decide who would attack and kill the pretty boy Yi Zai, didn't notice that Yi Zai suddenly disappeared. When they felt a strong storm blowing behind them, two subterraneans who couldn't react in time had their upper bodies separated from their bodies. In just a moment, the two subterraneans were cut in half by Yi Zai. The moment their upper bodies flew up, they even saw their lower bodies standing on the ground. Then, this moment became the last scene they saw in this world. When the other subterraneans saw that their companions were killed in an instant, they also attacked Yizai at the same time. They punched at Yizai's face in an attempt to avenge their compatriots. However, before their huge fists could touch Yizai in front of them, they seemed to have encountered a huge resistance and stopped in front of Yizai. No, instead of saying that their fists encountered a strong resistance, it was better to say that their bodies seemed to be bound by something. They couldn't move at all. They couldn't even take a small step forward. Then, the subterraneans only felt that the pressure from their bodies was getting stronger and stronger. It even made their bodies feel the pain of being torn apart. Then, in the next moment, the subterraneans who attacked Yizai let out a scream one after another under the horrified gaze of their companions. They were twisted into a fried dough twist by an invisible force. Their death was as miserable as it could be. The ability that Yi Zai used was naturally the superpower that had been strengthened by the Kaiatsu card. This was also the first time he used his superpower in actual combat. Of course, the effect was outstanding and didn't disappoint Yi Zai. Of course, Yi Zai's superpower was able to twist the underground monsters into fried dough twists. It wasn't because his superpower was comparable to Tatsumaki. In fact, although Yazai's current superpower was still alright, it was probably still a distance away from Fubuki, let alone comparing it to Tatsumaki. The reason why he could kill the underground monsters was entirely because these underground monsters were of average strength. Although the underground king was at the peak of the demon level, his lackeys were barely at the tiger level. Some of them were even at the wolf level. And Yazai's strength had already reached the low demon level. Even in the hero association, it wasn't a problem for him to be an A rank hero with his strength. Every level of strength was a chasm. It wasn't something that any Tom, Dick, and Harry could challenge those of a higher level. That was a treatment that only protagonists had. Clearly, these underground monsters weren't the chosen ones. They didn't have the halo of challenging those of a higher level. Therefore, they were easily killed by Yazai. Is it a superpower? It looks like he's quite a capable fellow. The underground king watched coldly as his lackeys were killed. His expression didn't waver at all. It was just a few lackeys. He had a lot of lackeys. The death of a few was nothing to him. Furthermore, although Yazai's achievement of instantly killing his lackeys seemed rather dazzling at first glance, it was actually nothing much. They were all scum that had just reached the tiger level. The underground king felt that apart from Yazai's sudden burst of speed and his superpower, that was a little impressive, there was nothing much about him. Although this gigolo's strength had exceeded his previous expectations, it wasn't enough to pose a threat to him. That was the underground king's judgment. 
Although a few of his lackeys had died, the underground king still had no intention of taking action personally. Instead, he gathered a large group of lackeys to surround and beat up Yazai. This time, the underground monsters that charged at Yazai weren't just a few, but dozens of them. The underground king looked at Yazai who was instantly swarmed by his lackeys until he couldn't see him. If he could kill all these underground monsters, the underground king would reluctantly acknowledge that Yazai had the qualifications to fight him. Yazai didn't panic at all when faced with so many underground monsters. After all, he had seen bigger scenes. He really didn't think much of a lineup of dozens. Furthermore, fighting against many was the Gale Sword Hero's specialty. The more there were, the happier he was. And the happier he was, the stronger he was. Yizai's figure was like the wind that passed through the gaps. He was extremely fast and pervasive. Although there were many underground monsters, they couldn't even catch a glimpse of Yizai's figure. How could the omnipresent and invisible wind be captured? The underground monsters seemed to have turned into young wind chasers. They raised their weapons like idiots and tried to attack Yizai, who was moving like the wind. However, the result was obvious. The subterranean monsters could only eat the dust behind Yazai's back. One by one, they fell into a pool of blood. Are you kidding me? Do you think I'll let you catch me? If you can see my taillights, you win. The dozens of underground monsters became the best training targets for Yazai. They constantly honed his wind swordsmanship and superpowers. As Yazai moved, he kept harvesting the heads of the underground monsters. He became more and more proficient in using the sword in his hand. The more he used the wind swordsmanship, the smoother it became. It even made Yazai feel that if he used the wind swordsmanship to a certain level in the future, would he be able to use the wind swordsmanship at will even if he obtained a card? Yazai's unscrupulous behavior finally angered the underground king who was watching the battle. Damn monkey! Are you showing off your martial arts in front of me, the underground king? The underground king looked at Yazai, who was moving gracefully, and suddenly felt a surge of anger. In the underground king's opinion, Yazai clearly had the ability to end the battle immediately, but he was using his subordinates as toys to show off his martial arts. This was simply the greatest insult to him, a ruler. Moreover, it had always been the monsters who teased humans like toys. Since when did their roles change? This made their great underground clan unable to raise their heads in the huge monster clan in the future. How could he, the underground king, continue to mingle in the monster circle in the future? The underground king casually threw away an underground monster who was blocking his way. Holding the four big swords, he planned to personally take action and teach Yazai a lesson. Yazai, who had been using the underground monsters as a touchstone to train himself, also noticed the underground king's movements. He quickly put away his relaxed attitude from before. After all, the underground king had the strength of a peak demon level. He was not a group of lackeys who could be used to train. If he was not careful, he would die on the streets. Yazai used his superpowers and stabbed the last underground monster who had besieged him into an electric pole. After that, he began to take a serious stance. You, a human, should feel honored. After all, your opponent is me, the underground king. Ordinary people, I will not easily. Seeing Yazai's serious and vigilant posture, the underground king laughed wildly as if he did not take him seriously at all. Just as the underground king was about to brag about himself, a black shadow suddenly jumped down from upstairs and kicked him in the face. Then, the underground king, who had been insufferably arrogant just a moment ago, died. Purple blood even splashed on Yazai's face, who was not far away. Yazai, who had planned to go all out, suddenly felt a strong sense of powerlessness. A king from the underground king? Let's fight. Needless to say, the person who came was a bald demon king from the monster's bane. Moreover, he had an oval face style in his serious state. Saitama was originally sleeping. He was dreaming of fighting with a powerful, underground man. The opponent was so strong that even Saitama, who had an oval face style, was injured by the opponent. One had to know that Saitama had always been able to kill a monster with one punch. The opponent was so strong that it evoked Saitama's desire to fight for a long time. Then, Saitama was woken up by the alarm clock. 
Then, he noticed the movement downstairs and realized that there were indeed underground monsters. Yazai had already started the fight. Then, Saitama heard the self-introduction of the underground king. A king from the underground king. The ordinary underground monsters in the dream were already so strong. Then, how strong would their king be? Saitama was instantly excited. He threw a flying kick at Leo. Bah, Saitama's flying kick instantly landed on the underground king's face. Yazai, where's the underground king? I've been looking for a powerhouse who can fight me for a long time. Saitama looked at Yazai with excitement. Ever since he broke through his own limiter, he had never met a creature who could be considered his opponent. Yazai looked at the underground king who had died with his eyes wide open and silently mourned for him. The poor underground king wasn't very strong among the weirdos, but he was still quite a figure among them. Yet, he died in such a pitiful way. Yazai, tell me, where's that powerhouse? Don't worry. Let me fight him first, and then it'll be your turn. Saitama thought that Yazai didn't want to give up his opponent because he also wanted to fight the other party. After all, every time Yazai met a weirdo, he liked to take a beating even though he wasn't as strong as the other party. In Saitama's eyes, this behavior was completely like a battle maniac who liked to challenge the strong. Of course, if Yazai knew that Saitama had always thought of him like this, he would definitely spit out salt soda water at him. Was it because he liked it? It was because the system forced him to do it. The powerhouse you're talking about is now under your feet. Yizai expressionlessly pointed at the pile of goo beneath Saitama's feet. The pitiful underground king should be deader than dead by the looks of it. You're saying that this is the strongest underground king? Saitama looked innocently at the broken limb under his feet. The oval-shaped face's style suddenly changed, turning into a messy three-faced face, which gradually turned gray and white. Clearly, the reality was different from what the bald man had imagined. This wasn't the evenly matched match in his dream. Yazai was already used to it. Even the vaccine man with the strength of a peak dragon level couldn't withstand a single punch from Saitama. The underground king with the strength of a peak demon level couldn't be any better. After taking a flying kick from Saitama, who was in an excited state, it was already good enough that his limbs could be seen. No, the boss is dead, but he still has a bunch of underlings. If I remember correctly, the strength of those underground freaks is not bad. The bald man didn't give up. In his dream, he had made the underground weirdos suffer many injuries and even caused their clothes to explode. After saying that, Saitama turned his gaze to the remaining underground monsters. The remaining underground monsters were planning to cheer for their boss. They had even written victory banners for their boss. But who would have thought that a baldy would fall from the sky and their boss would be turned into a pile of dung in an instant? And now, what made them feel even more like a disaster was that this terrifying baldy actually had his eyes on them. They were the underground monsters who had planned to come to the surface with the underground king and have a big fight. At this moment, they all ran out at the fastest speed they could muster since they were in their mother's womb. All of them rushed into the large hole that had appeared at the beginning. Even the flag with the victory slogan written on it was instantly changed into a small white flag and inserted at the entrance of the cave, directly announcing their unconditional surrender. Saitama was stunned when he saw the subterranean freak return home. It seemed that there was always a big difference between reality and dreams. Saitama, you bastard. Not only did you throw me out last night, but now you've ruined my mission. I'm going to kill you. The subterranean king was killed by Saitama, and the subterranean weirdo was scared away by Baldi. But Yazai exploded because Baldi was too much of a scammer. Now, new and old grudges were coming together. Yazai's anger from being thrown out on the street in the middle of the night had mostly dissipated after killing a large number of subterranean weirdos. But Yazai, who had just received the reward notification from the system, instantly realized that he had been scanned by Baldi again. Because among the rewards given by the system, only the first mission was completed. As for the other two, they had all failed. In other words, Yazai had only completed the mission of killing five subterranean weirdos and received a random reward. As for the other two missions, they had undoubtedly ended in failure. The third mission was to kill the subterranean king alone. Yazai felt that with his strength, the chances of success weren't too high, so he didn't have any regrets. 
but the second mission was only to assist in killing the subterranean king. This reward was completely free, but it had failed. This made Yazai furious. But Yazai couldn't blame the system for being unfair because he couldn't even touch a hair of the subterranean king, let alone assist him. If he really wanted to blame someone, he could only blame Baldi. He had acted so quickly that Yazai didn't even have time to react before the subterranean king was dead. Two random draw chances were kicked away by Saitama just like that. Yazai couldn't take it anymore. He grabbed Saitama's neck and shook it wildly. What the hell did you do? Would you die if you acted a little later? At this moment, Yazai even had the thought of moving away from Saitama and living alone. But after weighing the gains and losses, Yazai decisively decided to stay. After all, his life was more important than the reward. By the way, Yazai, why are you up so early today? Don't you usually laze in bed? After the two of them dealt with the subterranean king, they slowly walked back. Saitama continued to provoke Yazai's nerves. Who the hell do you think did this to you? You sleepwalked again last night and threw me out. You made me suffer the wind on the telephone pole for the whole night. Yazai said that if Baldi threw him out the next time he sleepwalked, he would report it to the supermarket and get someone to arrest Baldi. Maybe he could even get a handsome reward. Why must it be me sleepwalking? Maybe you sleepwalked and then used your superpower to float out and hang yourself on the telephone pole. Baldi firmly refused to admit his crime because he was afraid of Yazai. He used this as an excuse to deliberately reduce his food. Yazai was right. Last night, Baldi sold all of Yazai's collectible games and the money was officially taken over by Yazai. Although Yazai's strength wasn't as high as Baldi's, in their situation, whoever controlled the economic lifeline was the real boss. The current situation was obvious. If Baldi didn't want to be unable to afford bean sprouts, he had to avoid angering Yazai. What do you mean I hung myself on the telephone pole? Have you ever seen someone sleepwalking and floating with their superpower? However, Yazai didn't continue to argue with Saitama. Baldi's skin was as thick as a city wall. Even if the evidence was conclusive, he would probably deny it. Just like the back of the head of the Baldi wanted by the supermarket, Saitama also firmly said that the head was definitely not his. There were so many Baldi people. How could he be so sure that the person in the photo was him just based on the head? After all, Saitama was a very moral person. It must be some bald weirdo who pretended to be him and did such a thing. The next day, Yazai and Saitama were at home with nothing to do. Two salted fish who had lost their dreams were unemployed. Because Saitama had sold their games, they had lost their only means of entertainment. They could only watch TV to pass the time. The TV was reporting that a large number of mosquitoes had appeared near Z City recently. Everywhere they went, it was like a swarm of locusts. No matter what animal it was, once the wave of mosquitoes came, it would be sucked dry instantly. Yazai, do you think mosquitoes can be eaten? Don't they always say that no matter how small a mosquito's leg is, it's still meat? Hearing Saitama's words, Yazai couldn't help but feel a chill run down his spine. Yazai had heard about Yazai's menu. As long as it wasn't a humanoid monster, it was edible in Saitama's eyes. Sometimes, Yazai was worried that Saitama would bring unknown meat or strange kelp. Did he really snatch them from discount supermarkets? I don't know if mosquito meat can be eaten, but I feel like we'll be able to hook up with a rich man soon. Yazai remembered that mosquitoes had wreaked havoc in Z City, including the strongest mosquito in history, that Saitama couldn't kill no matter how hard he tried. But these weren't the main point. Mosquitoes wreaking havoc in Z City meant that the mosquito girl weirdo was coming. If the mosquito woman came, then the rich man would also come. That's right, the rich man Yazai was talking about was the famous fund warrior Genos. He was Saitama's disciple, no, Saitama's nanny. At this time, on a street far away from Saitama's house, an enchanting mosquito girl was confronting a young man. The young man had golden hair and a handsome face. But from his exposed arms and pupils, it was obvious that he wasn't a normal human. Why wasn't he a normal human? That was because a normal human's arms would reflect a metallic luster and a lot of data would appear in his pupils. Genos, a cyborg modified by Dr. Kusno. He's about the same age as Yazai. He's been searching for his enemy. 
what a handsome young man. Your blood must be unusually sweet. Mosquito Girl licked her sexy red lips and looked at Janos. The other party had been chasing her relentlessly since the beginning, so Mosquito Girl decided to get rid of this annoying gigolo first. Genos had a cold expression as he watched Mosquito Girl unfold the weapon on his arm, intending to eliminate Mosquito Girl. Currently, Genos did not have the late-stage, incendiary cannon. With such a powerful weapon, his strength was barely at the demon level. The Mosquito Girl, as a monster created by Dr. Genus, the House of Evolution, was a combination of a mosquito and a woman. She also had the strength of a demon. At first, Genos had the upper hand. After all, as a mechanically modified human, his entire body was hard. There were too few places for the Mosquito Girl to bite. The Mosquito Girl's mouthpart was inserted into Geno's body. What she sucked was not the sweet juice, but a large mouthful of oil. Using this advantage and the numerous weapons on his body, Genos managed to seriously injure Mosquito Girl. But he couldn't win against the other party's special ability. After gathering all the mosquitoes that were ravaging the city, Mosquito Girl, who was seriously injured by Genos, was fed back with the blood they absorbed. Not only did she recover from the serious injuries that Genos had inflicted on him, but her strength had also increased once again, reaching a level where she could instantly surpass Genos. After Mosquito Girl received the blood contributed by her henchmen, the situation was reversed instantly. Genos, who had been firmly in the upper hand, was now dismembered by Mosquito Girl with her bloody blade like a rag doll. Luckily, Genos was a mechanically modified human. If it were someone else, they would have died from bleeding due to such serious injuries. At the same time, this story also taught us the necessity of having henchmen. Sometimes, having more people was really useful. Just as Mosquito Girl lowered her body and planned to use her sharp arms to end Genos, who was lying on the ground, unable to move, two figures slowly walked over. Because of the sudden appearance of outsiders, the cautious Mosquito Girl temporarily stopped killing Genos and continued to fly into the air. Being able to fly in the air was her advantage and also made her safer. After all, not many humans could fly. Yazai, which one is the tycoon you mentioned? If we save him, do you think he will give us a generous reward? The people who came were naturally Yazai and Saitama. When the bald Saitama heard that a tycoon was in danger, he couldn't sit still. Yazai used to be a tycoon, and that period of time was the most comfortable period of their lives. Unfortunately, they were now poor like him. But now that a new tycoon had appeared, how could Saitama sit still? Whether or not their lives could be improved depended on their performance and whether or not they could satisfy the tycoon. The one lying on the ground is him. Look at his equipment. The money from a few screws can buy us a big meal. Yazai raised his head and indicated that Genos, who was lying on the ground, was the tycoon they were here to save. Run quickly. This mosquito monster is very strong. You are no match for him. Don't die for nothing. Genos was originally happy that reinforcements had arrived, but when he looked at Yazai and Saitama, he was instantly disappointed. He told them to leave quickly and not die for nothing. Genos's electronic eye had the function of analyzing combat power. Just now, he had used the computer to check Yazai and Saitama's combat power. The results were obvious. Yazai's ability was slightly weaker than his, not to mention the mosquito girl who could easily defeat him. As for Saitama, the data that Genos's electronic eye provided was a bunch of question marks. In the end, it was determined that it could not be analyzed. Of course, Genos did not think that Saitama's ability was so strong that it exceeded the computer's calculation limit and caused the computer to crash. He just thought that the Baldi's ability was weak to begin with, and because of his fierce battle with the Mosquito Girl, the computer might have been damaged. After all, Genos had never met someone whose ability exceeded the computer's calculation limit. Naturally, he would not think so. Eh, is this guy that strong? He looks very ordinary. Saitama was obviously stunned when he heard Genos's words. He looked at the mosquito girl who was floating in the air with her curves disapprovingly. She is very strong. But to you, it probably makes no difference. Yazai also looked at the mosquito girl who had both the looks and the figure. Moreover, Yizai and Genos were not lying. The current mosquito girl was indeed quite strong. She was originally at the low-level demon level, 
but after receiving a large amount of blood from mosquitoes, her strength had risen to the high-level demon level. Although there was still a gap between her and the underground king, she had already surpassed Genos and Yizai. Moreover, this mosquito girl was a rather bug-like existence. As long as she absorbed a large amount of blood, she could become stronger. Did that mean that theoretically, as long as she absorbed a large amount of blood, she could even surpass the dragon level? Yizai and Saitama were commenting on the mosquito girl, but they did not know that the mosquito girl was already on the verge of exploding. Not only was her meal interrupted, but these two guys who suddenly appeared were commenting on her as if no one else was around. Was this guy really that powerful? Did he really think that she, the mosquito girl, was made of mud? At first, the mosquito girl was worried that a powerhouse had come. However, after seeing Yi Zai and Saitama, she did not take them seriously at all. Yi Zai looked like a young man, and he was holding a long sword. At first glance, she could tell that he was the type who was good at close combat. She, who could fly, was not much of a threat. As for Saitama, the mosquito girl did not want to comment too much. He was wearing a ridiculous yellow skin-tight suit, red plastic gloves, and a sloppy face. No matter how she looked at it, this did not look like a powerhouse's style. Even if he wanted to cosplay as Superman, he should at least be more professional and change his ridiculous yellow leather jacket to blue ones, okay? Saitama frowned as she looked at the mosquito girl flying high in the sky with a large number of mosquitoes gathered around her. He wanted to kill her as soon as possible so that he could win the favor of the rich. However, he could not fly, so the situation was a little awkward. Yi Zai, you have to think of a way. If I don't take her down, how can I do it? In fact, even without Saitama's words, Yi Zai was already prepared to make a move. After all, he also had a mission. It would be a waste if he did not take the reward. Yi Zai's feet stomped violently on the cement ground. In the instant that the mosquito girl was stunned, he had already disappeared. Genos, who was lying on the ground, suddenly had a lot of data appear in his eyes. At that moment, his database showed that the man with the knife had experienced an explosive increase in all his data in a short period of time. Just like in the Dragon Ball world, Yazai, who had mastered the sky dancing technique, had a preliminary mastery of Qi. Normally, he would restrain his Qi, but once a battle broke out, he would erupt with the energy fluctuations that he should have. At this moment, Genos also received the real data from the computer. Yizai burst forth with data that shouldn't be possible given his strength. He suddenly appeared behind the mosquito girl. Even in Genos's electronic eyes, he could only analyze Yizai's exaggerated movement trajectory through the starting point and landing point to analyze how Yizai moved. The so-called martial arts. He seems to be an expert. If that's the case, there might be hope. Yi Zai's burst of speed gave Genos a glimmer of hope. Unfortunately, he was heavily injured and couldn't move. Otherwise, if he joined forces with Yi Zai, defeating the mosquito girl would definitely not be a problem. Yi Zai used the sky dancing technique in combination with the forward step slash to explode with amazing speed. He suddenly appeared behind the mosquito girl. The mosquito girl was also stunned. She didn't expect that she had misjudged him. This warrior actually had such amazing means. He actually managed to get close to her in an instant. Tornado slash, steel flash. The blade instantly flew out of the scabbard with a gust of wind. The sword energy wrapped in the wind blade could even cut through steel. As soon as the sword energy approached, the mosquito girl felt her skin being scraped painfully. She judged that if she were to take this attack, even the body of the weirdo would be cut in half. The mosquito girl controlled countless mosquitoes. A black mass formed a layer of black shield in front of her. Although a large number of her offspring would die even if she blocked the sword energy. However, the mosquito girl couldn't care less. It was unwise to go head to head with a warrior with the strength of a demon level. After all, this was not what she was good at. The sword energy with the wind blade slashed on the shield formed by the mosquitoes. In an instant, it shattered into a large number of small wind blades, crushing a large number of mosquitoes. However, Yi Zai's attack also dissipated. The mosquito girl was unharmed. Moreover, after successfully resisting Yi Zai's attack, the mosquito girl controlled a large number of mosquitoes to attack Yi Zai. 
Just by looking at the densely packed number of mosquitoes, one could imagine that if he was surrounded, he would definitely become a human jerk in an instant. However, even with the control of the mosquito girl, the mosquito's flying speed was still not fast. As soon as the flames on Yizai's body erupted, a large group of mosquitoes could only eat the dust behind him. The mosquito girl obviously didn't expect that a human could actually fly. Moreover, his speed was quite good. However, the gap in strength was there. In the beginning, Yizai took advantage of the mosquito girl's carelessness to make her suffer a little. However, after that, Yizai didn't even have a chance to get close to the mosquito girl. Every time he approached, a large group of mosquitoes would block his way. Because he still had to dodge the blood blades thrown by the mosquito girl and the sneak attacks of a large number of mosquitoes, Yi Zai could only maintain his high speed and constantly move in the sky. The mosquito girl's overall strength was actually not too strong. With Yi Zai's current strength, coupled with his superpower, there was actually a high chance of killing her. However, Saitama, who was on the ground, was obviously impatient. He thought that Yi Zai was taking too long. If this went on, if the big boss was not satisfied, would the reward given to them be greatly reduced? Yi Zai really wanted to kill the mosquito girl by himself. After all, the system still gave him a few missions as usual. Among them, there was also a mission to kill the mosquito girl by himself. Although the mosquito girl's strength was far less powerful than those monsters he had encountered before, the rewards were certainly not as good as before. However, to Yi Zai, it was still quite good. However, after considering that if Saitama didn't make a move, would Genos still make Saitama his master? After this question, Yizai decided to give up on killing the mosquito girl by himself and leave it to Saitama. Obviously, with Yizai's strength, it was impossible to move Yanos. He had to let Saitama do it. Compared to the little reward from the system, Yizai felt that it was more cost effective to be a free, full time babysitter with a long term meal ticket. After making up his mind, Yizai no longer hesitated. His body continued to fly at high speed, avoiding the various attacks of the mosquito girl. However, Yizai threw the Muramesa in his hand out. It was not that he wanted to abandon the sword, but he wanted to use his superpower to experience the thrill of the sword manipulation technique. Mosquito girl scoffed at the long sword thrown by Yizai. She easily swatted it away with her arm that was full of keratin. Mosquito Girl felt that Yazai had given up. Faced with a large number of servants, he couldn't even run for his life. How could he have the strength to fight with her? But what Mosquito Girl didn't expect was that Yazai's long sword that was swatted away didn't fall down. Instead, under the control of Yazai's superpower, it made a strange turn and directly pierced through the wings of Mosquito Girl Weirdo, making her lose the ability to fly. Mosquito Girl obviously didn't expect Yazai to know the sword manipulation technique. When her wings were pierced, she wanted to react, but it was obviously too late. Although Mosquito Girl was angry, she didn't panic at all. So what if she temporarily lost the advantage of flying in the air? That little brat playing with the sword was obviously no match for her. That mechanical lump was now lying on the ground, unable to move at all. The only one left was the sloppy bald man. Forgive Mosquito Girl for being blunt, but in her eyes, the bald man was a blood bag. Just by looking at his ridiculous outfit, Mosquito Girl was sure that the bald man must be first-rate cannon fodder. As for the problem of her wings, as long as she absorbed the blood of that little brat, she could completely recover. Maybe she could even become stronger. The stronger the expert's blood, the more effective it was for Mosquito Girl. In the beginning, she only looked for some animals to feed on, and gradually grew to this level. Mosquito Girl couldn't help but feel a little wet at the thought that as long as she sucked the blood of these people, her status in the House of Evolution might become even higher. Just as Mosquito Girl was planning to finish off Yazai, who was scurrying in the air, in one go, the bald man that she thought looked sloppy began to approach her. She would never have thought that the bald man was the real boss. Yazai and Genos were only considered little brothers in front of Saitama at this stage. Bald man, since you're in such a hurry to die, then this queen will fulfill your wish. Seeing Saitama walking towards her, Mosquito Girl felt that she should leave Yazai behind for the time being and kill this reckless bald man first. Although she felt that the taste of the blood of a bumpkin like the bald man was probably just passable. 
but at least it should be able to suppress her injuries. Because from the very beginning, Mosquito Girl had discovered that the injury on her wings did not seem to be self-healing at all. The ability of Demon Blade Muramesa was to prevent wounds from healing. It had to be said that this blade was very effective against monsters with abnormal physiques. Saitama didn't care about Mosquito Girl's nonsense at all. His eyes were shining as he looked at Mosquito Girl. Even the word bald, which Saitama had always considered a taboo, was selectively ignored by him. Although the form of Mosquito Girl was no longer on Saitama's edible menu. But now, as long as he killed the other party, the rich man that Yizai mentioned would definitely give him a sizable reward. You baldy, are you looking for death? Being stared at by the bald man, Mosquito Girl felt a chill run down her spine. She was the Mosquito Queen. Indeed, she had the looks and the figure. However, was this something that a mere baldy like him could touch? Mosquito Girl was furious. She didn't wait for Saitama to get close to her. She took the initiative to attack him, thinking that she could harvest his head. Her black arm reflected a metallic texture under the sunlight, like a sharp sickle. There was no doubt that such a weapon could dismember a body as easily as cutting tofu. Genos, who had lost both his arms, wanted to struggle to get up and save a fresh life, but he didn't have the strength to do so. Crack, but to Genos and Mosquito Girl's surprise, the scene of her head being separated from her body didn't happen. Mosquito Girl's metallic sickle arm was held by a hand wearing a red plastic glove. That's right, it was the kind of plastic glove that was on sale at the supermarket. It was expensive even at 100 yen. It blocked Mosquito Girl's sickle arm that could cut through steel. And no matter how hard Mosquito Girl tried, she couldn't pull her arm out. It was as if it was stuck. At this time, even a fool would know that this baldy wasn't an ordinary person at all. He was a strong man that she couldn't reach. Kacha. Mosquito Girl groaned in pain. Her arm that was held by Saitama was easily broken. Saitama tore it off and threw it aside casually. If he hadn't seen Mosquito Girl's arm before, it would have been enough to dismember her mechanical body. Genos would have thought that Saitama had broken crispy noodles. With her arm broken, Mosquito Girl's first thought was to run away as she experienced immense pain. This baldy wasn't someone she could deal with. Perhaps even the secret weapon of the House of Evolution might not be a match for this baldy. But Mosquito Girl, who had lost her ability to fly, had lost her last chance of escape. If she moved on the ground, she wouldn't be able to escape Saitama's clutches. Naturally, Saitama wouldn't let Mosquito Girl leave. After all, he had to satisfy the rich guy. With a few leaps, Saitama easily caught up with Mosquito Girl, who was running for her life. He appeared above her head in a flash and punched out. As Saitama punched out, Genos's eyes kept flashing warnings. Attention, attention, super high energy reaction detected. Boom! A huge crater instantly appeared on the map. Mosquito Girl lay at the bottom of the crater, her limbs separated from her body. She couldn't be more dead. Because of Mosquito Girl's death, the large number of mosquitoes that had been chasing Genos also lost control and fled in all directions. Saitama held Mosquito Girl's head, intending to bring it to Genos for a reward. After all, their living expenses would depend entirely on the rich guy's reward. Yazai stopped Saitama's actions and pulled him away. Asking for money directly like this was a bad idea. A steady stream flowed slowly was the way to go. He believed that Saitama's punch just now had completely shocked Genos. In a few days, Genos would probably pay a visit and kowtow to Saitama. From then on, he would willingly be Saitama's lackey. The fact was as Yazai expected, looking at Saitama and Yazai's leaving back figures. Genos stared closely at the rustic white cloak and the unperturbed face after defeating Mosquito Girl. He thought that this was probably what a true expert looked like. If he could get guidance from such an expert, would he be able to become even stronger? Genos, we haven't asked the rich guy for money yet. We saved his life. Even if he doesn't give us a reward, it wouldn't be too much to treat us to a meal, right? Saitama was quite displeased to be pulled away by Yazai. After all, he had worked very hard just now. Don't worry. In a few days, he will come to us. Yizai, didn't you say that the rich guy would come looking for us? 
It's been a day and he's nowhere to be seen. Saitama was eating fat otaku happy snacks while lying on his side and watching TV. Originally, fat otaku happy snacks was a luxury for them. However, thinking that Genos was about to come with a large sum of money, Yizai decided to be a little extravagant. Did you not leave an address for him? If you didn't, how would he know where we live? Saitama felt that they should have gone up to the rich guy instead of playing hard to get. Now, the rich guy had left and they had to eat discounted bean sprouts. Their lives would not improve at all. Yi Zai looked at Saitama in disgust. He was picking his nose and eating potato chips. He knew that Saitama was deliberately disgusting him so that he could monopolize fat otaku happy snacks. Would Genos get lost? Please, he was a high-tech product. With Saitama's obvious features and Z City's small population, Genos would only need to do a little research to find their house. Could it be that Saitama's strength wasn't strong enough yesterday, so Genos wasn't tempted? Just as Yi Zai was letting his imagination run wild, their doorbell rang. Hearing the sound, Yi Zai knew that the person was here. Yi Zai had lived in Saitama's house for a few years. There were not many people passing by, let alone visitors. Furthermore, there was no doubt that the person visiting at this time was Genos without a doubt. Yi Zai walked to the entrance and opened the door. What she saw was indeed Genos' handsome face. To be honest, Yi Zai had never been sure if the protagonist of the One Punch World was Saitama. Why was it that while everyone else was so good looking, his drawing style was so sloppy? Tatsumaki sacrificed his height in exchange for strength. Saitama became so strong. Was it not only his hair that was sacrificed? Was his face also sacrificed? I'm sorry to disturb you. May I know if Mr. Saitama lives here? Seeing Izai open the door, Genos knew that he did not come to the wrong house. However, out of courtesy, he still asked if Saitama lived with Izai. You're looking for Saitama. He is indeed at home now. Izai naturally knew the purpose of Genos' visit, so he quickly stepped aside. With Genos's arrival, they would not be in a financial crisis for the time being. Also, after the full-time babysitter came online, he would be able to slack off whenever he wanted and cultivate whenever he wanted. When he came to the living room and saw Saitama, Genos immediately sat down and expressed his intention of becoming Saitama's disciple and becoming stronger. I'm very sorry, I only came to visit today. Because my body was severely damaged yesterday, I've been repairing my body at the doctor's place. I took the liberty of coming here today to ask Saitama Sensei to accept me as your disciple. I, Genos, will definitely listen to Saitama Sensei's teachings. Originally, Saitama was rather excited when he saw Genos. Yazai wasn't lying. A tycoon had come knocking on his door. But after hearing Genos's purpose for coming here, Saitama's face fell. Because what he wanted was a huge reward, not a disciple. He and Yizai had already gone through a lot of hardships. If they had another mouth to feed, they might not even be able to afford discounted bean sprouts in the future. I don't accept disciples. Also, I don't know how to teach people. Saitama made up his mind not to accept Genos. At the same time, he looked at Yizai. His meaning was simple. What the hell are you doing? We're starving to death. Why are you bringing someone home? Then, what's the matter with Senior Yazai? Isn't he Saitama Sensei's disciple? Are the two of you? Don't worry. I don't discriminate against people with such hobbies. Besides, it's understandable that some powerhouses have weird hobbies. Yazai wanted to put in a few good words for Genos, but he was suddenly implicated. He immediately gave Genos a slap on the back of his head. Get lost. My sexual orientation is normal and I'm not his disciple. We're just two bad friends. Yazai suddenly remembered that behind Genos's perfect wife setting, there was actually a bit of a poisonous tongue attribute. Otherwise, he wouldn't have called people trash all the time. Anyway, that's the situation. So, Jainus. Gu. I can't accept you as my disciple. Despite Genos's sincere attitude, Saitama felt that they might really starve to death if they had another mouth to feed. Genos obviously wouldn't let it go so easily. Ever since he saw Saitama's heroic punch, Genos kept dreaming of Saitama's bald head under the sun. 
It was obviously not that easy to make him go home. He believed that his persistence would definitely move Saitama Sensei and make him accept him as his disciple. Just as Genos was pestering Saitama and Saitama was getting impatient, Yazai spoke up. Genos, why don't you take out your apprenticeship gift and let Saitama take a look? Maybe he'll be moved by your sincerity. Dot. Yazai looked at the two of them who were arguing and reminded Genos. Yazai knew very well what the bald man was hesitating about. Genos was also a simple minded person. He thought that a powerhouse like Saitama wouldn't care much about things like money, so he didn't let Saitama see his sincerity. When Genos took out his apprenticeship gift and placed it on the table, Yazai clearly saw that Saitama's eyes were glued to it. There were a few bundles of brand new cash. Even if the three of them ate and drank to their heart's content, it would be enough to squander for a long time. These were all given to me by some of the people who I saved when I was fighting the monsters. I don't really need these things. I know that Sensei Saitama seems to be a little tight on money, so I brought them over. As for how Genos knew that Saitama and Yazai were tight on money, it was entirely because he hacked into the nearby surveillance system to find their whereabouts. He found that Saitama and Yazai often loitered around various discount supermarkets to sell promotional products. Saitama looked at Genos's strong sincerity and was a little hesitant. Needless to say, the bald man was already moved. Looking at Saitama's struggling expression, Yazai was clearly stunned for a moment. Based on his understanding of Saitama, after seeing Genos's apprenticeship gift, Saitama should have accepted him without a second thought. Yazai quietly walked to Saitama's side and used his arm to pull his head to the side. He whispered, What the hell are you doing? We're almost out of food now. Someone is giving us money. What are you hesitating for? Isn't it just an apprenticeship? Saitama looked at the large bundles of cash and was naturally envious. Hence, he whispered to Yazai, I have no problem taking in disciples, but I don't know how to teach. Saitama still had some conscience. After taking so much money from him, he naturally had to teach him well. However, he knew very well how he became stronger, and so did Yazai. Yazai had also completed the training that he had done, but he was the only one who became stronger. It could be seen that his special training method was probably only effective on him. Apart from the special training method, was there anything else Saitama could teach Genos? No, there was nothing at all. What if Genos realized that he had been deceived after taking the money and wanted it back? That was the reason why Saitama was worried. Based on his and Yazai's character, they would definitely not keep the money for long. Why do you care so much? I'm still hoping to get the money to redeem my collection. Dot. Yazai obviously knew that Saitama could not teach Genos anything. After all, the two of them were not on the same path. Saitama relied on his abnormal physique and had almost no martial arts foundation. On the other hand, Genos was nicknamed the Money Warrior, which was also referred to as the Pay to Win Player. The improvement of his combat strength was completely dependent on his equipment. However, even though the two of them were on completely different paths, they still became master and disciple in the original work. Yazai had been looking forward to the stars and the moon. It was not easy for him to get Genos, the full-time nanny. How could he give up just like that? Saitama and Yazai had their arms around each other's shoulders as they whispered to each other, completely ignoring Genos who was sitting in front of them. As for other things that they did not know, Genos could still hear them clearly even though they were whispering. As he was a mechanically modified human, his body structure was already different from ordinary people, so his hearing was exceptionally sensitive. Master Saitama, please tell me the secret manual to become stronger. Even if I can't become stronger through this method, I won't blame you for it. Geno sat down on the ground again and begged Saitama sincerely. To him, money was just some waste paper. It was a great deal to exchange it for a secret manual that could help him become stronger. Upon hearing Genos's words, Saitama and Yazai looked at each other. In the end, Yazai said, look, he said so himself. Hearing that he wouldn't be held accountable after the incident, Baldi's attitude immediately changed 180 degrees. His hands swiftly collected the few bundles of cash on the table. He was deeply afraid that Genos would go back on his word and take the money back. Genos, do you really want to know how I became so strong? The process will be very difficult. 
And the price of becoming stronger is also quite high. Are you really prepared for it? Yazai rolled his eyes when he heard Saitama's words. If he didn't know better, he would think that Saitama's secret to becoming stronger was simply an inhuman training method. But those who knew would definitely think, are you f asterisk king kidding me? Yizai, who knew the inside story, rolled his eyes while Genos, who did not know the reason, focused his eyes. Like a serious primary school student, he sat upright and took out a ballpoint pen and a small notebook, ready to take notes at any time. Saitama was quite satisfied with Genos's serious attitude, and a serious expression appeared on his face as well. Genos, you have to know that this is the hellish special training that I created. If it were an ordinary person, I wouldn't have told him. In order to make Genos feel that he could recoup the price, Baldi was giving it his all. Every day, 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, 10 kilometers of running, no air conditioning in winter or summer, and a banana in the morning. As long as you can persevere for three years, you will realize that you have become stronger, but you will also become bald. Saitama touched his big bald head, feeling like crying. That's right, the price of becoming stronger was so great. Saitama's serious expression as he spoke of his, hellish special training stunned Genos. Genos's expression also showed what an artistic performance was like in a short period of time. First, it was a serious expression, then it was a look of confusion and astonishment, and finally, it was a look of anger. He felt that Saitama was teasing him because this seemed like a rather ordinary training method. Saitama, I'm serious. Can you tell me the real reason why you became stronger? Genos felt that with this kind of training intensity, even if he trained for another 100 years, he would not become as strong as Saitama. I'm not lying to you. I became stronger through this special training. If you don't believe me, you can ask Yazai. He has always been living with me. When Genos heard that, he looked at Yazai, who had his arms crossed in front of his chest. Yazai nodded helplessly and said, Baldi didn't lie to you. A few years ago, he was weaker than me and was chased by a tiger-level monster. In the end, I saved him. However, I also went through the, hellish special training that Saitama mentioned, but he was the only one who became stronger. Therefore, you can think that this might be a special training method that only works on Saitama. However, after hearing Yazai's confirmation, Genos did not think so. He felt that there must be something he didn't know about in Saitama Sensei's, how to become stronger. They felt that it was ordinary because they had yet to discover the deeper secrets. Looking at Genos who had fallen into a trance, Yazai knew that this child was hopeless. He would never return from becoming Saitama's brainless fan. Saitama, can I stay? If I can observe Saitama's daily life at a close distance, I might be able to find out the reason why Saitama became so strong. Genos analyzed Saitama's strengthening secret for a long time. In the end, he could not find anything and finally made this decision. Ha, you want to stay. But this room is already very cramped for two people. If there are three people living here. There was no problem in taking in a disciple. After all, Genos was very sincere. However, Saitama was hesitant if he wanted to stay for a long time. His and Yazai's expenses were already very high. If Genos was added, wouldn't the expenses be even higher? No, Genos is a robot. He doesn't need to eat, right? Does he need to drink engine oil? I know that Genos eats food. I'm just complaining. No, engine oil is more expensive. Many thoughts flashed through Saitama's mind in a short period of time. Then, he concluded that he could not let Geno stay. That's not a problem at all. I can rent the room next door and break through the walls on both sides. Regarding the rejection in Saitama's words, Genos was completely unaware of it and proposed a solution. Of course, Yazai agreed wholeheartedly to Geno's decision to stay. Genos was a master of housekeeping. He would not have to eat food cooked by Saitama in the future. However, Saitama obviously did not know Genos well. He thought that he was another lazy bum like Yazai and was about to refuse. Just then, the glass behind Saitama suddenly shattered, and a huge mantis broke through the window. It turned out that Dr. Genus from the House of Evolution had noticed Saitama's existence after dealing with the mosquito girl yesterday. The first time he saw Saitama's superhuman physique, Genus felt that if he used Saitama as an experiment, he would be able to create a new monster. 
he would definitely be able to create a creature stronger than the number one genetically modified monster in the House of Evolution. Genus quickly found Saitama's residence and sent out most of the House of Evolution's combat power to capture Saitama. Before the Mercury Mantis could introduce himself, Saitama elbowed it into a paste. Look at what you've done, you bastard. Why didn't you come through the door if you wanted to enter? He even broke the glass. How much money did he have to spend to do that? Saitama angrily complained to the Mercury Mantis on the ground, whose head had been blown up. However, it was obvious that the Mercury Mantis could no longer hear him. Although he had just received a sizable apprenticeship fee, he could not afford to go through so much trouble. Saitama decided to ask for compensation, but he had hit the Mercury Mantis too hard. Now, the Mercury Mantis could not be more dead. Sensei Saitama, there are other monsters downstairs. Two of them have stronger energy reactions than the Mosquito Girl yesterday. Hearing Genosa's words, Saitama immediately perked up. There were other people downstairs. He could ask them for compensation for the glass. Yazai looked down and saw a sea of animal monsters. It would not be a problem to open a zoo. They were all genetically modified monsters from the House of Evolution. One of them looked like a huge lion and was called the Beast King. He was the second in command of the House of Evolution. There was also an armored chimpanzee called the Armored Gorilla. He was the third in command of the House of Evolution. The strength of the Beast King was probably above average in the Demon level, and the Armored Gorilla was probably average in the Demon level. He was much stronger than Mosquito Girl who hadn't changed at all. It seemed that, House of Evolution, had invested a lot in capturing Saitama. When Saitama saw the main character, a crow jumped down from the plane and instantly killed two of the Beast King's underlings. The two animal monsters that were walking on two legs instantly fell upside down. Half of their bodies were inserted into the road. It was obvious that they were not going to survive. Originally, Yi Zai also wanted to join in the fun. However, the strange thing was that this time, the system actually didn't give him a mission. This made him completely give up the idea of making a move. What a joke. After all, the other party was an expert above the middle to upper ghost level. Yi Zai didn't want to cause trouble if there was no benefit to it. He just wanted to be a pretty boy and watch Saitama show off. The Beast King was walking on two legs with a large number of chains on his body, making clanking sounds as he walked. However, his lion-like face and strong limbs proved that he was the King of Beasts. The Beast King was quite calm that his two underlings were killed by Saitama instantly. After all, these underlings were noobs. Except for the armored gorilla, there was nothing interesting about the others who came with him. At the same time, the Beast King was also complaining about his boss in his heart. How could he find himself such bad lackeys? It was good that they were killed instantly. Otherwise, having underlings like Frog and Mantis around him would really damage his image as the King of Beasts. Are you the bald guy who defeated Mosquito Girl? Our boss wants to see you. Come with us. The Beast King looked at Saitama with disdain, as if he didn't care about the bald guy at all. So what if he defeated Mosquito Girl? Although Mosquito Girl was ranked high in the House of Evolution, that was all there was to it. Moreover, when the Beast King saw Saitama the bald guy, he thought that Saitama was lucky to have defeated Mosquito Girl. After all, the bald guy didn't look like a strong person at all. Instead, the guy next to him with a green head floating in the air with a knife, or Genos with a metallic luster all over his body, looked more like the strong people they were looking for. It had to be said that many monsters were deceived by the bald guy's deceptive face. Others were pretending to be weak, but Saitama didn't need to. His sloppy drawing style, coupled with his tacky outfit, made the weirdos think that he was a pig just by standing there. What's the House of Evolution? Is it that supermarket? Do you know it, Yazai? When Saitama heard the Beast King say where he was from, he felt that the other party had come prepared and was targeting him. Saitama couldn't help but think of the back of his head when he was wanted a while ago. He couldn't help but feel guilty. Idiot, didn't you hear that he's talking about Mosquito Girl who was killed by you yesterday? He's obviously here for revenge, okay? Yazai was speechless at Saitama's sometimes strange way of thinking, but sometimes he was quite shrewd. What? 
So you're in cahoots with that strange mosquito yesterday. Your people just broke the glass of my house. Give me one million yen, and I'll let you go. Saitama was relieved when he heard that the supermarket wasn't here to catch him. He took the opportunity to demand a large sum of compensation. Ha, let us go. Are you kidding me, bald guy? And you want us to pay? You're really looking for death. The Beast King was obviously stunned when he heard Saitama's words. He was being blackmailed. He was the lion, but now he was being blackmailed by a ridiculous bald guy. If Dr. Genus hadn't said that he needed to bring the bald guy back alive, the Beast King was sure that he would have torn the bald guy into four pieces long ago. The Beast King had only intended to break Saitama's limbs, but Saitama's mouth was too smelly. The Beast King decided to torture the bald guy later so that he could barely keep him alive. Similarly, the Beast King had reached the limit of his patience with Saitama, and Saitama couldn't stand the Beast King anymore. Since the beginning, the Beast King had used Saitama's taboo word, bald guy, countless times. If Saitama hadn't wanted to get some compensation, he wouldn't have tolerated the Beast King for so long. But now Saitama could see that this big poodle obviously didn't want money. And he had used the word bald guy so many times. Thinking of this, Saitama clenched his fists. Seeing Saitama's clenched fists, Yazai couldn't help but mourn for this huge poodle. Why would the House of Evolution mess with Baldi for no reason? It would probably become a House of Degeneration soon. The Beast King was too scared to speak when he saw the bald guy. In fact, he was completely ignoring him. He was going to show the bald guy his profound meaning. Lion slash flow. The name of the move was domineering, and it looked pretty awesome. However, the Beast King's sharp claws couldn't even scratch Saitama's skin. Logically speaking, if it was Yazai or Genos who took this move, it wouldn't have been so easy. But if the opponent was Saitama, the most he could do was scratch an itch. Because Saitama took his profound meaning without batting an eyelid, the Beast King's face turned green with fright. He probably didn't expect the bald guy to be so strong. He was going to go all out and fight the bald guy to the death. But now, he couldn't care less about the bald guy's life. Because the bald guy was much stronger than he had imagined. But it turned out that the Beast King was overthinking. So what if he risked his life? The result didn't change anything. Baldi yawned and used his continuous normal punch, instantly turning the Beast King into minced meat. Seeing the miserable state of the Beast King, Yazai shook his head. The Beast King died in a dignified manner. Saitama had punched a demon level monster so many times. At least, Yazai had seen many dragon level monsters killed by Saitama with one punch. From the looks of it, the Beast King was a decent person on the list of monsters that Saitama had killed. But Saitama's martial arts foundation wasn't that great. Waving his fists carelessly or punching with all his might, the monster was instantly reduced to smithereens. The surrounding people could not help but feel that this monster was very weak. On the other side, the funding warrior, Genos, and the armored gorilla were fighting fiercely. The cement ground was full of deep holes, and the trees planted on both sides of the road had fallen. There was a reason why Genos was called the funding warrior. Look at the gorgeous battle special effects. All kinds of laser weapons, explosion special effects, and the crew's funding were burning. Compared to Saitama who defeated his opponent with a single punch, Genos's battle looked more like a battle between the strong. The two sides went back and forth, and from time to time, a building would be blown up. It fully demonstrated the meaning of a fierce battle. The armored gorilla was originally stronger than the mosquito girl, and Genos was no match. But Geno said that because of the malfunction last time. He once again topped up a lot of money, and the equipment on his body was also upgraded. All of them were replaced with tycoon gold. In short, I am no longer the same. I have recharged, so I have become stronger. After a series of exchanges, Genos finally succeeded in breaking through the armored gorilla's armor and defeated it. Throughout the entire drama, this seemed to be the only time Genos defeated his opponent. After that, Genos met all sorts of strange monsters and was beaten up in various ways. Yi Zai guessed that it was probably because of his encounter with Saitama. It was simple because Saitama had squandered all of Genos' money. How could a funding warrior become stronger without money? 
If he didn't recharge, wouldn't it be natural for him to be beaten? Back to the topic, after Genos defeated the armored gorilla, he was not in a hurry to take his life. Instead, he asked about his background. The other party was obviously targeting Saitama. Genos felt that he had to clarify the matter and then deal with the other party. He could take the opportunity to gain Saitama's favorability. At least, whether he could defeat the mastermind was not within his consideration. Geno said that if he could not defeat the other party, he could recharge. As long as the funding warrior dared to recharge, he could even pierce through the planet. On the other hand, after Saitama's anger, he began to regret. The other party was from an organization. Even if he had no money, it did not mean that his boss had no money either. But because he was called Baldi, he went a little overboard. He did not know if the other party could be saved. Saitama looked at the beast king that had turned into minced meat. Well, this level of minced meat could be used to make dumplings. Obviously, the other party was not going to survive. Yazai, why didn't you stop me just now? Otherwise, I would have had the money to redeem your game. Baldi decisively pushed the responsibility to Yazai. His purpose was self-evident. He wanted to skip the whole, redeeming the game, thing. Don't you have any idea how strong you are? If I had stopped you, I might have ended up like that pile of minced meat. It would have been a double kill. Yazai looked at Baldi angrily. He said that when he was strong enough, he would teach Baldi a lesson. What do we do now? How do we find their boss? Although he had received a large sum of money today, Saitama was still not satisfied. Both of them were unemployed, and Genos didn't look like he had a job either. Saitama felt that it was necessary to find that old thing called the House of Evolution and ask for compensation. They could use it to supplement their family. After all, the other party controlled a bunch of weirdos. It was obvious that they were not good people. Therefore, Saitama had no qualms about extorting them. Isn't there another one on Genos's side? Let's just go and ask. Just now, Yazai received another mission from the system. The missions were all about the House of Evolution. Mission 1, Destroy the House of Evolution. The reward will be randomly drawn. Mission 2, Assist Saitama and Genos in killing the secret weapon of the House of Evolution, the Azura Rhinoceros Beetle. The reward will be randomly drawn. Mission 3, Kill the Azura Kabuto alone. The reward will be randomly drawn three times. As usual, the rewards that Yizai was able to complete could only be described as shabby. The rewards that Yizai could not complete were so rich that it made him drool. However, they were the type that could only be looked at and could not be obtained. However, for Mission 1 and Mission 2, Yizai could do the same as usual. It was normal for him to be shabby since it was a reward that could be obtained just by slacking off. It could be said that there were pros and cons to working with Saitama. Although his life was guaranteed, every time there was a mission, Yazai's rewards would be greatly reduced because of Saitama's strength. For example, when Yazai went to the One Piece world, the opponents he encountered were nothing compared to the one in the One Punch world. However, the rewards were much more than now. In the end, it was because Yazai and Saitama were slacking. However, Yazai did not regret it because the combat power of the One Punch world was too high. Before he grew up, any random, dragon-level, monster would be able to smash him into smithereens. Although the rewards were less now, at least his life was guaranteed. In short, growing up was the way to go.